and we are live. What's up, everyone? How's everyone doing tonight? We're finally ready to go. Tonight's topic is why should I be a Muslim? Do you have a reason why I should be a Muslim? Jump up and uh, jump into the queue. If you can't jump into the queue, you could jump into the Discord, right? If you don't have enough followers, and you jump into the waiting room, and we'll bring you up. Uh, just so everybody knows as well, this is being recorded on YouTube. It's live on there. So if you want to be part of the conversation on YouTube, link is in the bio. Jump over there. Make sure you hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Do all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. That's all for my announcements today. What's up, Ash? What's up, Jester? Also, everybody on YouTube, if you're not hitting the like button, what is wrong with you? Do you, do you lack brain cells? Just click the thing. Doesn't hurt. Oh. Hmm? Do you want me in the frame? You can be in the frame if you want. It's up to you. It is up to you. Okay. I'm not going to fit. Huh? I'm not going to fit, so I just got to figure out if I'm all the way in that way or not. Well, yeah, I guess you can come to this side, but when the chat starts coming up, it might cover you up a little bit. You can try that side if you want. Hey, you got no YouTube notification that I was live? That's so weird. Hello, Shannon. You were not here on Monday. We missed you. We missed you. Hello. Hey, how are you? How have you been? Good. Just real quick, how old are you? I'm 22. All right, bro. Go ahead. I think you should be a Muslim because it's the right faith to be, bro. Okay, why do you think it's the right faith? Because I don't believe in Trinity and I believe it's only one God. Okay, that just that just tells me what you believe. Why does that mean it's correct? Because I think it... It, this creation of, of this world, it, 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 it is in God's hands, bro, not in the Jesus hand. And Jesus is not a God. Jesus is a prophet. Okay, that's fine. Even if Jesus is not a God, right? Even if I can agree to that, why should I be a Muslim? I think it's a right, right faith, bro. Okay, why? Why? Yeah, why? Bro, is the right faith? <laughs> but how do you know? Because how can some uh, human be God? But again, how? even even if I grant you that Jesus is not God, Right? Christianity yeah. isn't true. How does that mean that Islam is true? Because the last prophet told us, Muhammad. Well, how do I know Muhammad's a prophet? Yeah. And the Quran is the, uh, the book. But, okay, you're making a lot of book. claims, right? Like, how do I know Muhammad's a prophet? How do I know the Quran's a holy book? How do I know Islam is true? Why should I be a Muslim? Because because the prophet didn't know uh, to write, bro, and he write the perfect and the holy book. Well, the problem with that is the evidence is to the contrary, right? If you say he doesn't know how to write and then he wrote something, the evidence tells me he knows how, knows how to write. He didn't know. How do you know? If, some, if no, somebody claims they don't know how, how to write, but then they write something, how do you know they didn't know how to write? Um, bro, I think that's true because the last, uh, you, you saw that Barnabas gospel in they found in Turkey, bro. Did I find what? Uh, did you saw that uh, gospel of Barnabas they found in Turkey? You mean the one that was written 500 years after Barnabas died? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about it? Uh, they write 
that Jesus is not God, but okay. Only. But here's the thing: I've already granted you that. If I grant you that Jesus is not God, and I fully say, okay, Jesus isn't God, which is not what I believe. I'm just granting it for sake of conversation. Why does that mean I should be a Muslim? I don't know, bro. It's the right, right, right path, bro. But how do you know? So far, the only thing I've gotten from you is trust me, bro. Yeah, I don't know either how to convince you. I'm not here to convince you. I'm, I'm here like, like you, bro, to tell you that this is the right way, bro. But how do you know, bro? Like that's the thing. You're telling me it's the right way. Why should I trust you? Like it's just you saying be Muslim. Okay. Well, I'm gonna use the same logic on you. Be a Christian. Mm, it's not the same logic, bro. It is. No, bro, because you, uh, that faith has a trinity and it's shared to, to, to believe in someone but God. And That's they begging believe the question. You're presupposing Islam is true to say that Christianity is false. Right? You're begging it's the question. It's a faith, bro, but... but I think it 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 got misunderstood when when they think the the god is a prophet. We we also okay, okay, but again, you're just begging the question. You're saying I'm right, so therefore Christianity's wrong. How do you know you're right? I told you the 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 gospel already uh, told that the prophet he was a prophet. You know, Esau was a prophet. It was not a god. Okay. Even if I grant you that, why should I be a Muslim? You should be a Muslim because the... If the you say it's because it's right, I'm going to kick you. Give me an actual reason. No, no. No, no. This is the reason I believe. I, okay. I not have to convince you, bro. I'm just telling you, bro, that we think it's the right... Not think we believe and it is, but uh, the Christianity misunderstood it when they uh, do shirk. They they believe in 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 prophet like it's to believe only in do you God, guys, bro. Do you guys like min the, do you guys witness or do you, wait? What is it? You call it giving um giving dawah, right? Do you guys give dawah to to atheists? What what do you mean? Do you guys Muslim ever Islam. like try to convince atheists that Islam is true? Mm, I have been with atheists and friends, but I don't like to convince them in a bad way, bro. I just have to tell you and you have to accept it for yourself, bro, like you. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying but, to, to tell you the way. But why, why are you up here if you're not trying to convince me? The question is, why should I be a Muslim? Because I'm not you, atheists. Don't, I don't know. Atheists are too too hard to to convince if they don't believe some. Uh, so this it, was created, this life was created from somebody. It's hard. So so basically, what you're saying is you let Christians do all the hard work of convincing people that God exists, and then you come in and say, "Well, not that God, this God." I don't understand this. Well, because Christians are the ones that witness to atheists, right? We're the ones that have like a lot of arguments on God's existence. We approach them. We try to convince them that God is true and God is real and that you should follow them. And then when they become Christian, you guys come in and say, well, no, that's the wrong God. Follow this God. So you let us do all the hard work. It's not about that, bro. It's good to believe in God firstly. But, but, but why would you like convince me to believe in, but don't pretend I'm not a Christian. Why should I believe yeah. in Allah and the prophet Muhammad? Bro, because that faith brought all the good and the right way, bro. Not killing woman, praying all, all good things, bro. Sec secular humanism also argues for not killing humans or women, sorry. And they, actually, and they actually go a step further because they say that women are equal uh, in intelligence, where Islam says a woman's uh, testimony is about half the value of a man's testimony.
No, bro. The the Islam too says, bro, that uh, woman should be right as man and should be equal. And okay, can you show me that in a uh, verse in the Quran? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm not uh, competent because I don't know all all of the Quran. Okay. So how do you know then that's what it says? If I heard that. So, okay. So, so why are you a Muslim? I'm a Muslim, bro, because I feel it. I feel that this this uh, is the right way, bro. This is the right faith. Have you ever heard the and saying? I, have you ever heard the saying? Facts don't care about your feelings. Facts. Yeah. How? <laughs> You have so many facts in this life, bro, to believe that you will be in the day of judgment and in another another life, bro. But what I'm saying is you're just saying that you're a Muslim because it feels good. That it feels good. Yeah. I I am a Muslim because I believe in Allah and I believe in my in it's one God, bro. Because this is the way, bro. It's well, how, one God. How do you know there's not multiple gods? I know because my prophet told so. Okay, why? How do you know your prophet's a prophet? I know because uh, my prophet f fought for this religion against these people who sold uh, idols as gods. Okay, so you're you know, begging, you're begging the question, right? So how do you know he's a prophet? Because of the Quran, bro. What about the Quran? It's a holy book, and how do you know it's a holy, holy book? Because that's preserved, bro. That's a holy book that is preserved. Okay, but, uh, but Harry not, Potter is not perfectly the, preserved, not so not and so are my pickles. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I'm not disrespecting your your faith, bro. But there are too many Bibles: Bible of Matthew, Bible. Of... Okay, cool. I'll grant you all that. There's too many Bibles: Bible, Matthew, Bible. This Christianity is false. Why should I be a Muslim? Because we only have one book. Okay. And Harry one Potter's God. only got. Well, no, they got several books. But you get my point. What what is that? Why why is that relevant? Like, okay, you have one book. That that's phenomenal. It's phenomenal, bro. But like that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Like, what does that mean? How does that prove anything? Like, the, the, here's bro. the th here's the thing, BB. The only arguments that you have to prove Islam is comparing it to Christianity and saying, well, Christianity has several books, we have one book, so therefore we're better, right? Well, okay, what if I grant you that Christianity is completely false? Then how do you prove to me that Islam is true? There are so many miracles that. In the Quran, bro, and the science now is is seeing that the Quran is right from two thousand, three thousand years ago. It's right, bro. Okay, like what? In, even in the stores, bro, the the Tariq store, bro. You, you have you like, seen that? Like what miracle? What miracle is right? What miracle is in the Quran? Don't Google it. I'm not googling. I'm just talking to you. I'm not. I'm not convincing. You. I. Easy, I'm going easy, bro. The the store. Did you see the store that it's mentioned in the Quran? And now they see the pulsing store, the the Tariq store. No, I never seen that in the Quran, no. I have heard of it. Have you that, read it yourself? No. Okay, then how do you know it's true? I know it's true because it's mentioned somewhere in the Quran that that store it's mansion i but know how, it's mansion. how do you know there's a pulsing star in the quran talking at all if you've never read it yourself because somebody told you man what i'm trying yes. to, what i'm trying to tell you here bb is that the only reason you are a muslim is because somebody told you to be and you said okay but i i believe in this bro i know you believe in it but i'm telling you you don't have a good reason to believe in it no, I have a good reason, bro. Like what? What? What's your good reason? 
but I know it for myself, bro. I my reason for for you doesn't count, bro. You know. What is your reason? Why are you a Muslim? I know they is Allah up there and he 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 helps everybody bro okay so yeah you, you you believe in a god but why Islam because I think it's the best religion and the best way but you don't have a reason why you think it's the best religion and the best way in all honesty, man, what I think is that you live in this culture and you've you've just in it and therefore you just think it's right and it's true and then you're living in it. And what I, I encourage you to do, man, is to break your faith apart, understand it, figure out why you should be a Muslim. And then when you figure out why you should be a Muslim, maybe look around you and say, well, why this? Why that? Why are people Christian? Why are people Hindu? I, I don't care what religion you look at. If you truly seek God, I think he will bring you to the truth. But at this point, man, I don't think you've actually done that. I'm Tim. I think I'm okay with my faith, bro. I think this is the right way to believe in this and to die like Muslim. It's but what the if best. you're wrong? It's okay to be even if even if I I know if somebody told me I'm wrong uh, exactly with facts I'm wrong. I still believe in this in this faith. So, so you'd say that no matter what anybody presents to you, no yes. matter what the data shows, you, no matter how true it is, you would never leave Islam. Yes, yes. Do you, yes. you don't see yeah. a problem with that? No, bro. Because I, for for myself, I know this is the right way, bro. I, and it's it. I know you. I can't convince somebody, and it, it's very bad way to convince somebody in a bad way to come to my faith and that's what i told you i don't want to convince you because you have to convince people in a, in the, in the right way in the good way to to my to my faith not so not so if you stood before god oh. and god said islam is false come follow me and leave islam behind what would you do bro i don't think that would happen. I'm not asking if you think it would happen. I'm saying if it did happen, what would you do? I still wouldn't. Okay. Wouldn't leave. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your time and appreciate the conversation, but I'm going to jump to the next person. God bless you and okay. have yourself a great night. God bless you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bro literally just said, and pray for him, bro. He literally just said that God himself told him Islam was false. He would. He wouldn't leave it. Well, he might be caught up in his emotions. Maybe, but I'm. I'm just saying the man needs prayer. Legit, and I'm not saying that condescendingly. Like, oh, look, look at this idiot. I mean, like, legit, pray for him, because that's that's wild, bro. That's wild. <sighs> All right, guys, uh, just a quick reminder, this is being recorded on YouTube. Uh, if you want to join that conversation or be part of like a better experience, you guys on YouTube know you're having a better time over here. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. Um, links in the bio so you can jump in on YouTube and watch the live there. Uh, make sure that, hey, if you're watching on YouTube, I noticed last time I have way more viewers watching than I had likes. That's unacceptable. If you are watching this and you don't have time to just click that little thumb, that, I'm not asking for your wallet. I'm not asking for nothing, but just a little clicky, little click arena, little look at the thumb and <laughs> click it. That's all I need. Make sure you like the live. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Hi, man. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, just real quick, how old are you? I'm 18. Uh, 18? Yeah. What's What's the TikTok rules? Is it 19 or 18? I think it's like I don't know, bro. But All right, go ahead. I just had a, I just had a question for you. Now, I live in Malta. I don't know if you ever heard of Malta. It's a European country. Right now, it's quarter to three in the morning. Okay. And uh, very Christian country. I was brought up in a Christian family. I have Christian beliefs. But whilst I, I, I've been watching your streams, bro, for the past three days, and I always wanted to join and ask you this question. 
I saw your um, description saying you were an atheist. Mm -hmm. What made you believe in Christ? I had a personal experience. So I had something that was considered miraculous. If you really want to know like my whole story, you can head to my YouTube and my testimony is like. Okay, I'll, I'll for sure go watch yeah. that. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's the long short of it is I just had an interaction. Okay, and you know, lately I've been also watching a lot of debates of atheists, and man, I just, oh, 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 I always oh, 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 have that. I gotta address this in the comment. Big mid steel hiding from Dan. You were the last last time you came in, when Dad made a response to me, I made a response to him. I'm going to make a response to Dan again. Unfortunately, I have a job and I have a life. It takes time. Just bear with me. I'll get to old Dan the scholar soon enough. A job and a life and a life. Yes. Anyway, sorry, bro. Go ahead. Don't worry, bro. I just wanted to ask you that question. I'll for sure go watch the video. Obviously, I'm a proud Christian, as most people in the world. And I just wanted to thank you, bro, for trying to, trying to spread the gospel, bro. You're doing a good job. And I, and I like, I hope, the, I wish the best for you, bro. All right. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. God bless and thank you for watching. Thank you so much, bro. Have a nice evening. You too, man. Bye. Five feet tall, I cry too. I, I'm I'm like four foot five. Get it right. She's like six seven. This makes for a very awkward relationship. Mm -hmm. Hello, how are you? Oh, I didn't mean to join. Sorry, bro. Ah, oh, you're good. God bless. Let's see you later. Sorry. It's always it's always it's always uh. That happens. You're like, yeah. That'd be awkward. It happened to me once, and I'll never forget it because I was in a, in a I don't identify as myself type of live, listening to their arguments, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. oh. the the person in the live, yeah, I got it. yeah, you got it, you figured it out, and so it was very awkward because I think they knew who I was, and so then I told them I accidentally clicked. They're like, "That's weird," and then kicked me out. Hello, how are you? Nia, how are you? Sorry, that's just done the same thing you were talking about. It just connected me, but I didn't request. Oh, all right, sorry. God bless. <laughs> sorry. Victim's doing you dirty. It is. You just connected me. Also, guys, if you don't have enough followers, you want to join the conversation, jump in the Discord. Link's in the bio. Just hop in the waiting room, and I'll pull you up. I didn't click your name. How'd you get back up here? I don't know. What is going on with TikTok? Hello, how are you? Curtis, uh, hello? 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 Curtis B. B something. Amaya has a little coffee cup. Oh, it doesn't need to. Yeah. Okay. God bless. That's it. No one else left in the queue. Everybody in the queue just accidentally <laughs> clicked the button. No, no one's there. All right, guys. If you want to have a conversation, you want to convince me on why I should be a Muslim, you don't have enough followers to click the queue. Don't hang out in the comments, right? Don't be scared. You can come up, you can jump up in the Discord, link is in the bio, you can have a conversation there. If you want to watch this live in better quality up on your big screen TV, you can do that on YouTube, link is in the bio for that as well. For anybody that is watching, is a part of this, watches it often. If you want to support me, you guys can support me on Patreon, link's also in the bio for that. By supporting me on Patreon, it means that I can do these lives. If I don't have the support there, I can't do this. You know, I've got bills to pay, mouths to feed, ain't nothing in this world for free. All links are in bio. Sorry I missed your live Monday. No, you're good, Shannon. Thank you for the five bucks. Appreciate you. You didn't have to do that. You do too much work. So, Who is Dan McClellan? He is a scholar on TikTok uh, that says a lot of things about Christianity, and him and I are having a little back and forth right now. Mm-hmm. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, just... 21, 2002 for the age. Sorry? Yeah. 21, 2002. All right, bro, go ahead. All right. Um, it, you, I know you're, you're accepting Muslims right now. Do you have like a, a couple of seconds for... Sure. Yeah, you've been Christian? up a couple of times, so you're good. So I, I was just in an argument with one... Uh, there was somebody else before my own live. I was in a conversation with them. 
and we were arguing about like the you know universe being eternal and all this stuff and i asked them what their proof was for the universe being eternal and they said uh something like energy can't be created or destroyed i'm probably misquoting them so hard right now no they're, uh, they're not they're not wrong energy can't be created or destroyed but that's presupposing naturalism right obviously we well, cannot create or destroy energy but the question is right. how do they deal with the problem with the infinite regression if the universe is eternal so the consensus is this, uh, that the universe had a beginning, right? What that was, people don't know. But pretty much everybody in that sort of academia says, yep, yep, we had a beginning. It, it all started at one point. And we know this because we can look at the red light shift. And when we look at the red light shift, we can see it pulling apart, which means things are moving away from each other. And if we just do the mathematics in reverse, we could see it all pulling together and all coming back to one fine point. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. He he just said that one thing and I just got stomped so quickly and it, it was crazy to me how a sentence that simple can stomp me so bad. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. You you never heard it before. That, you're, you're good, bro. We've all been there. Yeah, right. That That's all I wanted to, to come up here to talk about. God bless you. Hope bless you have a good day. You. Peace. I hate it when it happens. When somebody like says a sentence and you just don't know what to say and you're just like, how do I answer that? Hello, how are Hello. you? Hi, how are you, man? Good, man. Uh, just real quick, how old are you? Abby out here just uh, chewing yeah. in my ear. Sorry. What's, sorry, how old are you? Uh, 18. All right, go ahead, bro. Um, so why should uh, I be Muslim? Okay. Uh, I got a question. Mm -hmm. Who's going to judge you on the judgment day? I don't know. Are you a Christian? I am a Christian. So how you don't know? Well, because I'm presupposing, right? Just why, or sorry, well, presupposing not the word here. Because I'm just asking the question, why should I be a Muslim? Not why should I not be a Christian? That's not the question here. Well, well so, the thing so is let, about let me, let me just Let me just grant you this. Let's just say I'm not a Christian. Why should I be a Muslim? That's a hard one. Because uh, most atheists, like most atheists, even they just want proof of God. Like I can't, I can't give you proof. Like, can, okay, let's say I'm atheist. As a Christian, would you be able to give me evidence that Christianity is real? Yep. Of course not. No, I can. Okay, show me. Yeah. So, do you believe in God? No. Let's say if I don't believe in God. Right. So I'm showing you. So if we're gonna play this out, let's play it out. Do you believe in God? Huh? If we're gonna play it out, let's play it out. Do you believe in God? No. Okay. Why don't you believe in God? Because I don't see him. I don't. I don't. I don't have proof of him. Okay. So if you don't see things, does that automatically mean that they're not true? So like, do you have well, to see no everything? There's, there's no proof of it. Okay. So how do you? I can. But I can just say. I can just say Jesus was a made up, made up man. He was not real. The the Bible was made by a man, by people. People wrote okay, the well, Bible. you're, you're, jump, you're jumping that, all uh, over the place now, man. The question first was, do you believe in God, I, not I, Jesus? I I'm sorry. Christianity is about faith, right? So you you wanted me to play this out. Hold on, hold on. You hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. You wanted me to play this out and show you evidence just God exists, right? Now you're jumping all over the place. Christianity is about faith. Uh, what Jesus is not even a person, right? Like all that kind of stuff. Like we're not even at Jesus. We're not even at Christianity or a religion. We're just at the concept of God in the first place, right? So, okay, go ahead. Do you only believe in things that you see? Uh, no. No, okay, so then we know that there's things that you hold to be true if you don't see it or not. So what do you consider evidence? Uh... I don't know, to be honest. Okay, so what, how do you come to true conclusion? So you're Muslim. How are you convinced that Islam is true? Um, we believe a God is a God. Is uh, like we believe somebody created us, and that's one person. Okay, so you just you just believe God because God, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go back to pretending that, that you're you're an atheist, right? What do you think an atheist would say here? Why do you believe that there is no God? Well, you say that there's no evidence, but I ask you what? Uh, hold, hold on. Then I ask you. What do you consider evidence? And you say, I don't know. 
So how do you know there's no evidence for God if you don't even know what evidence is? Faith. Just like Christianity. So you just Believe have faith. faith that there's no God. Well, as a, as a, I, are you talking about as me as a Muslim or as, as a as Christian? As an atheist. We're playing the atheist game, right? You're an atheist. So you just have faith that there's no God. Well, like for me, for example, atheists just don't have a clue. Just They just don't believe anything. I don't believe right, as so, an atheist. So here's the thing. The question you I asked me, someone, Deke, Deke, the question you asked me is, can I prove to an atheist that there is God, right? And then you said, do it as if I was the atheist. I'm trying to do that, but we're kind of jumping all over the place, right? Okay, go ahead. So you as the atheist said, you're not convinced of what evidence is. You don't know what evidence is or what you consider evidence. But then you okay. say there's no evidence for God. So how do you know there's no evidence for God if you don't know what evidence is? Okay, can you, as a, as a Christian, can you convert me to as an atheist if I'm atheist right now? I'm trying to, but you keep not engaging in the conversation. Go ahead, no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I've asked you the same, I've asked you the question four times. I'm not going to ask it again. What was your question? I'm not going to ask it again. You didn't ask me anything. I did. You said, yeah, you talk about evidence. All right, God bless, man. Uh, when you're ready to come back and have a real conversation, jump back up. You Appreciate don't, you. You don't add up, man. I literally asked him the question four times. He, he did not want to have a conversation. He just was waiting for a chance to prove to me that Christianity wasn't true. It is what it is. I should have asked if he was driving because you can't be driving on TikTok. They got to be paid actors. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know, bro. All right, guys, smash the like button. Also, if you're watching this, you're not smashing the like, but like button. What the heck? Why do you run away to prove Christianity? I didn't. Do you, Yusuf, do you have enough followers? You can hop up into the queue. You can also hop up into the live on Discord. Uh, jump into the waiting room and I'll pull you up. Don't hide out in the comments and just throw sly comments. Hop up. Appreciate it, Dean. Yeah, everybody on YouTube, make sure you like the live. Everybody on TikTok, be smashing the like button. Let's get this up to, what are we doing at 10,000 likes? What are we doing? We've been here for 30 minutes and we're only at 10,000 likes. Let's get that going. Let's get it going. Thank you, Shannon. You're the goat. What's going on here? I can't. I'm with my cousins. You can't hit the like button? Get that tappity tap, bro. Get it, Corey. Why did Islam prevent uh, degeneracy in the East, but Christianity didn't in the West? I'm not too sure. Maybe you should mention uh, the Discord in the TikTok temp late. Oh, that's not a good. That's that's a good idea, actually. Uh, let's do that. I got to pin the comment. That's the worst part is I got to pin it. And I can't do it because the freaking heart emoji is always in the way of the pin. That, that's the most frustrating thing to me. Why do they put that there? I literally can't. S somebody smash comment so I can click it because it's right on the heart emoji. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Frustrating. <sighs> Cheesed. Everybody likes seeing it when I get angry. It's like people's favorite thing to do is watch me get angry. It's always buggy for you. You're good, bro. Appreciate you, though. It's a you thing? Probably. Hi, baby. What does this guy want? What's up, bro? What do you want? <laughs> what do I want? Why do I have to want something to just talk to you? Because I'm not likable. Why else would you want to talk to him? <laughs> the only people who want to talk to me are people who want something. I'm not a likable person. Nobody wants to engage me in just cordial conversation. People don't come right. to me. I'm 
to You're, be... All right, you got me. You got me. You're right. I want something. I, I want to promote the debate between Than and Matt Dillahunty. See, I called it. I knew it. <laughs> I've come up here plenty of times and not wanted anything. Yeah, you always want something. <clears throat> yeah. No, can, can I can I promote a second? I I just got off of Danny's live and he let me promote to like 500 viewers. Only because what do you, do you have to throw shade at me like that? Coming in here saying I was on Danny's live and I promoted it to 500 viewers over on Danny's live. What are you saying, bro? What are you saying? <laughs> I wasn't saying, what are you saying it like that. What are you, what are you going to throw sly at me like that? Point. Yeah, I was just stating a matter of the... I mean, he let me do it to 500 people. Why wouldn't you let me do it to your 200? Why would you do that? That's not what I'm That's saying. That's exactly what you're saying. It's not how, what I'm how saying. How are you going to do me like that, bro? It's not what I'm saying. And Danny been doing you, this less than me. It that way. Danny been doing... You hurt me right with my feelings, bro. <laughs> I, I need I'm, me some I'm Jesus. So sorry. All right, go ahead. Go ahead and promote your exploring reality versus Matt Dinkahunty. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, check it out. If you're in the chat, and one, I want to talk to the people that live near Florida. So if you're in Florida or near Tampa, Florida, I'm going to invite you out. We're going to have a debate at my church. So I'm one of the pastors at the church, and we're going to have a debate on He's stage. With an... What? He's not a pastor. Keep going. I am a pastor. I your your wife doesn't even know me, and she's like, "Wow." <laughs> I don't need to know you. I just need to know him. Yeah. So um, he's a youth pastor. It's not the same thing. I can. I have my credentials. What? Like that's all you need to be a pastor. I can marry you, and I can bury. Why are you, you marrying and burying children? I'm not. Well, you're I a youth can pastor. I can marry adults. It's like calling a nurse a doctor. <laughs> I'm calling him. No, that is not the case. <laughs> that is not the case. You don't. You go through all the school. The only distinction. That's not funny, dude. It's not true. <laughs> That one caught me off left field. Uh, somebody in the chat said it. I think it was Jordan. Woo. It was Jordan. That's uh, not. That's not. That's not the case. <laughs> now, anyway, so <laughs> I am one of the pastors at the church, and uh, if you're if you live near Tampa, Crosswind Church, we're having a debate on the resurrection with atheist activist Matt Dillahunty, known for the atheist experience, um, and Than Christopoulos from Exploring Reality. I will be the moderator for the debate. The topic will be the resurrection, and there will be a Q&A afterwards where you can ask questions to either uh, either debaters. Yeah, uh, and, but And to back them up, you guys should watch that debate, like straight up. I, I talked to Than a little bit about like what he's going to go over. Like, uh, Matt's, Matt's cooked. It's done. It's over with. This is the end of the Dillahunty era. It, it, <laughs> we're going to see Matt's head on a pike after this one, guaranteed. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna be good. I'm gonna remain impartial um, to the best of my ability because uh, I want to be fair. I want to be fair to both debaters. What are you talking um, about? I'll You're talk a Christian. smack. I'll talk smack after though. I, I'm I'm trying to remain impartial oh, in right regards now, in the promoting. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to. So, I'm not I'm not on this thing. So I don't. I, Matt's going down, bro. Going down yeah. like Donkey Kong. So if you're in Florida. Uh, show up to the church. I would love to meet you. Love to see you uh, there and present. But if not, if you live somewhere else in the country or in oh Canada, uh, in that case, you can watch online. If you actually click my profile right now, there's a link in my bio. It takes you to our YouTube channel where the debate is going to be live. You hit the bell, you're going to get a notification and a reminder when the debate goes live, and you'll be able to watch from the comfort of your bathtub, um, from your recliner, from your significant other's lap. I don't care. Um, so, yeah. Well, I was telling us everything but when. <laughs> I told you when. I didn't hear when either. Friday. Is this Friday? Friday. At the church that he's a totally good, a pastor at. Good Friday. It is It is good. Instead of a service, we're having a debate. I'll probably watch it later, man, because honestly, on Good Friday, I'm going to be giving my time to the Lord. <clears throat> we are too, just in a different way. But in, impartial. 
Are you sticking around? I got people in the queue. Yeah, I'll stick around for a second. All right. Do I get to talk? You can you can talk if you admit that you're equivalent to a nurse. I'm not equivalent to a nurse, dog. <laughs> like this reason the reason I keep going down this one is because it's the one thing I know actually bugs you when I pick on you. Everything I've picked on you about is just like duck like water off a duck's back. But this one thing I could tell like it bugs you. So I'm just it's like, like I've done the schooling. Like I put the work in. And then it's just but it's like, like well, it's like going to community perfect. college versus university. Oh my word, that's not true. It's not. <laughs> it's like it's like your you GID have, versus your high school you're, diploma. You have to have the same okay, so I, I I think that's kind of um kind of fair, but it's depending on the pastor. So there's three levels, okay? And I'll I'll go over them super quick. There's, there's credentials. No such thing as super quick with you. Yeah, there is credentials, licensing, ordination. Those are the three levels. I have my credentials done. I have taken my licensing test and I'm waiting on results. And on my ordination, that's the last level. Ordination is where um, you've gone through all of the schooling. It's equivalent to like the, the highest level at, of seminary to an it extent. It doesn't sound like anybody holy is laying hands on you though. I'm just saying. My wife's holy. <laughs> oh man okay <clears throat> hello how are you hey i'm doing good man okay, just real quick um, how old are you? Just 35 all right 35 you got a young voice for 35 bro <laughs> no i'm 35 for real I, I believe you go ahead but um I was wondering, could we pick up where you left off with the one guy who wasn't listening? Um, you asked him, how do you, uh, how do you prove, um, what, what are the methods of proof that you, you would use to prove something exists? Sure. Are you, what, are you Muslim? Are you atheist? What are you? <laughs> well, let, let's pretend I'm an atheist. I just wanted I, I to see your logic sort of. Um, how, I want to know what you are first. Before, so I want to start on like a good foot. Like I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Okay. I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Okay. I just wanted to sort of see. Um, kind of your logic behind it. So, so let's say that, um, how do you, how do you know, um, I guess by observation, by sound and by, and by, uh, you know, taste, touch, maybe, maybe your five senses. So through the five senses. Okay. Do you believe atoms are real? Yeah. Okay. Why do you believe atoms are real? Uh, smarter people told me they are. <laughs> so, okay. Appeal to authority then. So if we want to go to that point, then I can tell you that there are many scholars, many intelligent people that said Jesus Christ is real, that he died and resurrected off the cross. Right. Right. Yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah. Which is not like, not even fallacious, like that people have actually done that, but that is a fallacious argument by nature because it's an appeal to authority. Right. So it, okay, it if you're just going off, like what smarter people have told you, Fine, I can show you smart people that tell you that Jesus Christ is God. Yep, yep, yep. No, I get that. I get that. Um, huh, that's that's a good point. And I don't know. I, don't, I yeah, I don't know if you could. Um, I, I don't know if you could argue for athe atheism. To be honest with you, like logically. Anyway, I, I, I'll, I'll drop it here, man. I'll let you bring someone else up. No, you're good, man. And I don't think I don't think you can either. Best people that can do is they can argue for skepticism. Right? They could say, yeah, oh, I'm yeah, not yeah. convinced because of X, Y, and Z, which is fine. But the problem is I can be not convinced of anything. Like my walls are black. I can say, oh, I'm not convinced of it because I can see it doesn't mean it's actually true. Like there's, there's no level to skepticism. So it's kind of like a brick wall. Argument. Yeah. I, and I've seen um, debates with like Matt Delahunty and stuff. And, and I just, I don't, a lot of the atheist arguments and positions, I don't, I don't see how they, they, they hold water. They're not a hundred percent tight, airtight, you know, it's just. Wait I don't know how they can be the so debate. convinced. Wait till you see yeah. the debate that Matt's having this Friday with Dan Christopherson. Yeah. What well, if you say his okay. whole freaking name, it's impossible to say. But <laughs> that is this Friday at this man who's definitely 100% a pastor at his church. <laughs> and he's got a link in his bio of Matt going against Stan. So. Awesome, man. Yo, God bless you guys, man. I'm going to watch that 100%. And uh, yeah, keep it up, man. All right, man. God bless. Have a good night. Yep. How am I the how am I the worst? This man's literally up here claiming to be a pastor. 
I'm about to debate you on this at this point. <laughs> uh, hello, how are you? Uh, I'm good, how are you? Good, just real quick, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19. All right, go ahead. Uh, I'm a Muslim. I have a few questions about the Trinity. Can I ask you? No, you can. You can know the conversation tonight is why should I be a Muslim, not uh, not what the Trinity is or Christianity. Okay, uh, I'll leave then. Thank you for your time. Yeah. All right, God bless. Uh, Dean the Christian Bean. What's up, Dean? Dean. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up? How's it going? Good. Good, man. What's up? Or how, how's it going with you? Uh, I'm doing really good, actually. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I wanted to talk about um, John 14, 16. John 14, 16. Uh, so it says, And I will pray... Uh, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Okay. Uh, so Muslims, or my Muslim friends, told me that this was supposed to be Muhammad who was supposed to be given to us. And I just had no okay. response. So all, all we have to do, all we have to do is read the next sentence, right? Really? Yeah, so go go ahead and do that for me. Uh, even oh, okay. So even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it's it's seen him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for the dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So I'm reading the King James version. Yeah, so you you can keep reading because this whole thing is just it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Jordan says read verse twenty six. So let's go do that. Uh, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have told you. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. That's, well, I mean, that's all I those verses are corrupted, um, so you can't really use them. Obviously. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that, that, that's it, bro. But, like, that's the thing. And yeah. 99.999% of the time when a Muslim brings you an argument, just read the chapter. They're like, look at this verse. Oh, yeah. Go to the beginning of the chapter, read to the end of the chapter, and then you'll know what that verse means. Um. Okay, uh, wait. So another thing that, the, that my Muslim friends were talking about were how they were just like, kind of disproving the resurrection by just saying uh, someone else was on the cross. So it was like they deceived us. Okay. Well, I could just give the same argument. Muhammad didn't actually receive a message from the angel Gabriel because it was just someone in a cloak that was pretending to be an angel. And I know this because uh, God told me. Right. I mean, like, you, like okay. they can make any claim they want. They want you you got to back it up. Like, that's the thing about claims. I can invent any story I want. Dan McClellan likes to say, ginning up the argument, right? You can gin up any argument that you want, but you actually have to have some data to back it up. They could say, okay, someone is made to look like a Jesus, but it wasn't Jesus. Okay, well, how do you know that? Oh, Muhammad told me. Okay, well, that's begging the question because you're already presupposing everything that Muhammad said is true. So you're starting on the basis that he's already correct. So therefore, everything he says is true and everything else to the outside of it is false. Right. Um, okay, so uh, another verse that they gave me. I'm going to read the, well, what's the, the, verse? the second. It's uh, Deuteronomy, I think, 18, 15 to 18. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 18? Yeah, I think it's that one. Uh, the Lord your God will raise up to you a prophet like me from among your brothers. You will listen to him. This is what's asked for you, the Lord, your God of Herob, on that day of the assembly when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God or see the great 
great fire anymore, so they will not die. Then the Lord said to me, they have spoken well. I raise up for them a prophet like you among your brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell him everything I command him. And I will hold accountable anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But if any prophet dares to speak a message in my name that I've not commanded him to speak in the name of God's and the prophet will put him to death. All right. So how do they know that? Who would they say this is? Uh, Muhammad. Okay. How do they know that? I have no clue. Okay. So first of all, Muhammad comes from uh, the tribe of Ishmael, right? Not the tribe of Isaac, right? And who is God speaking to in Deuteronomy 18? Um, Probably Moses or? Well, to Israel, right? So this, oh, okay. this would be directed towards Israel. Israel is the tribe of Isaac, right? Not Ishmael. So Muhammad doesn't come okay. from one like them. Right. What is the Lord? He says, the Lord God will raise you up a prophet like me from among your brothers. So this is Moses speaking. Sorry. Uh, like me from among your brothers, you must listen to them. Now he says, like me. Okay. So what happened to Moses? Right. He, he had some issues. Uh, he ended up fleeing off to Egypt, uh, baby in the water, all these types of things. When we look at Jesus, well, what happened to Jesus? He had some issues as a baby, ended up fleeing off to Egypt and you know, prophet. You see correlation between the two. I don't remember every right. correlation in my head right now. So what Moses is, who Moses is talking about that, here. That's interesting. Jesus. Yeah. Um, Because Moses was in the desert for 40 years and Jesus, Jesus fasted for 40 days. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Okay. Well, I think that's all I had to uh, say. So when you talk to your Muslim friends, bro, get them to back up their claims. Like they could say, well, this is talking about Muhammad. Just simply ask them, how do you know this is about Muhammad? Great. Oh, yeah. All right, bro. Was there anything else? Don't think so. God bless. God bless, man. Peace. Peace. Thoughts, John? Same. Dumb arguments. New day. It's on repeat. Hello, how are you? How you doing? Good, man. Just real quick, how old are you? Uh, I'm over 35. All right, go ahead. Now I'm saying Islam is the spirit of Antichrist. It's the opposite of the laws of God. Okay. Yes. All right, man. Well, is there anything else? Are you Christian? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Why well, should... I be mean, okay. Is this more for is okay? All right. God bless you, man of God. All right, man. God bless. <laughs> Have a good day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, what God? Yo, yeah, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I I know this is a Muslim live, but I was curious. Like, can you disprove pantheism? Pantheism? Like the belief that everything is God. Belief. Is pantheism the belief that everything is God? Pantheism, pantheism is that the universe, like energy itself, is God type thing. Okay, so does God have a mind in this scenario? Uh, I have no clue. Yes and no. So, as I understand pantheism, pantheism, like you would say, you are you are a mind, right? I think, therefore, I am. Uh -huh. And so you're made out of the same energy that the universe is made out of. And so that energy and the universe and your consciousness, and I think therefore I am, it's all, it's all interconnected. So it's like a yes and a no. So Jordan understands pantheism better than me. So I, or John does. No, oh, I said you're Jordan. John understands pantheism better than I do. So why don't you answer the question? Disprove pantheism. Yeah, so... I guess I mean, what do you mean when you say disprove pantheism? Like, like what's if, the evidence against it? Like using philosophical reason? I, I, yeah, I just think that's the wrong question. I, I'm, I more would be interested in asking what's the evidence for it. And so, so it's not, it's not my job. Um, like, if I make a claim and I say I think Christianity is true or I believe Christianity is true, the burden's going to rest on me in order to substantiate that claim. For pantheism um 
like if I already believe Christianity is true, then metaphysically the commitments that I have, um, they're all like, they're already going to be, uh, like leaning toward Christianity. And so I don't have to prove why all of these other things are false. I just have to prove why mine's true. And so in pantheism, if someone comes up to me and they're a pantheist, I'm going to say, okay, uh, justify your position on why you think this is the case. And I mean, then, then we go from there, but. Yeah, it's a really good point. I, it's a really good way of thinking. Um, yeah, besides that, um, John, what's like, what's like the criteria for going to heaven? Cause I hear like lukewarms won't go to heaven or you can only go to heaven for this and that. Like what's the standard to get? You, you have to be for? absolutely perfect. Have zero flaws. Never commit a sin. Never do anything wrong. That's the standard to go to heaven. Right. But because it was paid off by Jesus. Because your debt was paid by Jesus, that if you trust in him and maintain your relationship with him by following his commandments and being baptized, you will be saved. Right. Okay. Thank you. And, and, and also, I would, I would just add, like, the righteousness of God in his judgment as well. That God is going to judge fairly and God is going to judge righteously. Right. So there is a way to guarantee, like, salvation. I wouldn't say there's a way to guarantee it. I, I don't like the word guarantee. No. I'd say there's a way to have a trust and faith in your salvation that you will come to it. Right. And that's by trusting in Jesus and following his commandments. Yeah, you can have, right. you can have confidence and you can have faith and you can have peace. Uh, in the assurance of your salvation. That's why the Bible says that you can approach the throne of grace with confidence. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. All right, man. Anything else? Right. Um, hmm. Well, can, can I just clarify? Um, Do you have someone who's a pantheist that you're talking to and you're wondering? Like, is I it. Was on, I, was yeah, on a li I was listening to live last night. Um, with um, Q Top, which I know is a very interesting figure in the TikTok Christianity. Um, but yeah, basically, he was just like, I really wanted to understand. He didn't really, the guy was, his argument was just basically just being an asshole. So I don't know. Um, I just really wanted to. Wait, who? Q Top? No, not Q Top, but Q Top. Oh. Q -top. I, I can't like I just like he's he's smart but I don't like I don't like a lot of things he argues like the flat earth I disagree with. Like, I Wait, you talk flat earth? Like younger. Does that shock yeah, he's, you? He's, he's flat earth or young earth? He's both. He's both. You could he, he he was thinking about making a course like about proving that the earth is flat instead of proving that God was real, but his fans told him to make a course about how God was real instead. But yeah, that's besides. Um, yeah, but like, how do you know? Like, is there like an amount of sin that like makes you un like uneligible for salvation? Any of it. Sin. So sin isn't quantitative. Um, it's not like it, it's not like something that stacks. Um, I think when sin is the biggest problem is when your heart has grown hard toward God and you no longer desire repentance. So as long as you have, as long as you have conviction and like the Holy Spirit is drawing you back to God, um, that's usually a good sign that you're, you're, you're living out your walk and, and you just, I mean, you're trying to live holy as Christ is holy and trying to live righteously. But I, I when actually disagree with John on this one, so. Yeah, we can talk. So when conviction stops, though, um, I, I think you've got a problem. So I, I don't fully disagree. I think he's like a lot on it. But I'd say ultimately, if you commit a mortal sin and then you don't turn from it and you don't repent, you're not saved. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. And, and that, that's, you... that's it. So it's not like one, two or quantifiable. If you commit a mortal sin, you're done. And you have to repent and turn from it and, and seek forgiveness. And, and we can get into other things, but that, that's the start of that one. So just out, just for my own clarification, what do you mean by mortal sin? So like murder, uh, adultery, um, theft, like anything that's like a conscientious thing that would be going against something. For example, the Ten Commandments. Okay.
Gotcha. Yeah, saying Excellent. saying the F word wouldn't be a mortal sin. It'd be like a menial yeah. sin. No, I yeah, I don't have a problem. So un any unrepentant sin um is this where you're gonna have problems. Un unrepentant and lack of conviction toward your actions to where you continue to do the same things, then that's that's problematic for me. And repentance repentance doesn't mean, oh I know it's bad. Repentance means I'm changing my mind, I'm not doing this anymore. Yep, it's a one eighty. Yeah. Right. Um wait John, do you believe in the philos or I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like where the belief is or do you believe like the spirit derives from the son and the father, or do you think that it only derives from the father? I I don't care. Oh, you don't. Okay. Like that's one of those but arguments said, where like it could be one way or the other, and I don't really care. Like if the if the son springs forth from the father, and then the Holy Spirit springs forth from the son, I'm fine. If both the the son and the Holy Spirit spring forth from the father, I'm also fine. There might be philosophical problems with one and philosophical problems with the other. I just, I, I really don't care which one is true I, to look at it enough. Maybe one day I will, but right now I don't. Yeah. I mean, uh, so you believe in mortal and venial sins then, right? Yeah. That's like, okay. Well, um, I don't know if the chat knows what that signifies, but all right. Well, have a nice night, both of y'all. All right. God bless. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something to you. I forgot what it was. You're so handsome. Look at you. Look at it. So handsome. I told her, I said, hey, hit me with that 1960s Batman symbol. Hey, hit me, hit me with that Rebel Alliance Star Wars. No. <laughs> I need better friends. Hello, how are you? Hi, thanks. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Just real quick, how old are you? I am uh, 35. All right. What's up? Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's up uh, with you? Why should I be Muslim? Yeah, why should I be a Muslim? Yeah. <laughs> Good question, right? Or not? Yeah. Okay. I have a, yeah, I have a question. So like, does God speaks to himself? Does God speak <laughs> to himself? I don't know. You, you tell me. Well, I'm asking you, you, you know, the Bible a little bit or not? I, I know I've read it. I will say that. You're Christian. I am a Christian. Okay. So you don't know the Bible, uh, in its whole complete or you know just some verses of it i know the bible oh, you know the bible yeah okay so god speaks to himself okay so possible? Here, here's what we'll do i will grant you every argument that you have against the bible and i will say that the bible is false and jesus is not god now my question for you is why should i be a muslim uh because the islam is the truth bro how do you know it's the truth how oh, I know it's the truth. Yeah, it's uh, it's obvious, you know. So uh, everything is clear. How is it obvious? It's not obvious to me. Why not? <laughs> Why should it be? <laughs> There's nothing obvious. All I all I've heard so far yeah. is that. There's a guy who had this revelation from God 600 years ago, and I'm supposed to believe it's true. Exactly. So. Uh, isn't that the same as you believe in, in, in Christ, in Jesus Christ? Nope, not even close. It's not the same? No. Why not? Because with Je Jesus, I have multiple eyewitness attestation to his death and resurrection. Who are those uh, witnesses? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, Paul, uh, Peter, uh, J uh, Tacitus, Josephus. So we can go back all to those, uh, you know, to those eyewitnesses. Yeah, so I can grant you, let's say all the eyewitnesses are lying. Why should I be a Muslim? So this, you say they're lying or what, what do you say? Well, what I'm, what I'm trying to get you to do is actually make a case for why I should be a Muslim instead of just spending your time trying to disprove Christianity. 
Yeah, but what? I, I granted <laughs> Christianity is false. Because okay, you, I am no you, longer you, a Christian. You, now, why should I? We're be trying to we're trying to uh, have a conversation, so we're getting there, you know. So, if you have a little bit patience. But I've granted but you, you don't all your arguments. Patience? I've granted all I'm your arguments. I've granted all your so arguments. So when I start about your belief, you, you don't you don't get patience. Okay, but I grant you your arguments. Christianity is false. Why should I be a Muslim? Okay, okay. So uh, did you did you look into other religions? Why why are you talking about uh, Islam now? I have looked into other religions. Yes. Okay, and and your your so so you 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 stopped at Islam. I need to know why. You know so. So maybe I can understand why, why you don't believe in it or it doesn't make sense or because you said a guy, uh, he came uh, uh, like uh, 600 years after after Jesus. No, no, and that's not what I said. I said a guy who came like 600 years ago, which was wrong. It's 1500 years ago. That six, was my bad. It is not 600 years ago, right? It is yeah, 600 yeah, that, that years after bad. Jesus. I, I got my numbers mixed up. So okay. a guy that came okay. 1500 okay. years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, wrote a book by himself mm -hmm. in a cave. And I'm supposed he to didn't read. wrote the book himself. That's that's number one. Uh, but I don't know where you get your information from. Okay, so who wrote the book then? Who wrote the book, or whose words are uh, are in those book? Well, who what wrote do you it? mean? Who wrote it? Well, eventually, people, okay. you know. Okay. So, so but why, Muhammad didn't why wrote it. Why should I trust those people? Uh, well, I don't know if you have. Have you ever read the Quran? I've read some of it. I haven't read the whole thing. Just some. Just some. You just read some of it, yeah. not the whole Quran. Correct. Okay, but th did you read it with an open mind also? So neutral, the, not... Define an, uh, define an open mind. Because if what you mean by open mind means I want to be a Muslim, then no. No, no, not, not, that's not what I mean. We do, I mean, if you're searching for, for the truth, you know, you're going to look very neutral to everything you know so i'm not hearing you're gonna an, I'm read hearing everything an and for muslim i'm hearing a psychoanalysis right now you're not actually giving me an argument you're psychoanalyzing me to see if i'm somebody that is like open to new information i just want to hear an argument for why i should be muslim yeah well I, i'm coming to it so if you have read the, the quran you would you would see what's all in it and what's all about it and then i think uh maybe you would change your mind Okay, well, I've met many Christians that have read the entire Quran. Have you read the Quran, John? Uh, not not the whole Quran, but uh, I also well, no, uh, read I was some asking of it. brought by blood. Brought by blood. Have you read the Quran? Oh, I'm sorry. Only brought by blood. Bought by blood. Sorry. Man, that hurts. Um, I've read most of it. Okay, I know but... Jordan. My friend Jordan in the chat has read the entire Quran, and he's still a Christian. So. Why, why read, why reading it? Why is that going to change anything? Uh, well, uh, le okay. L let me give you like an example, you know, so, um, you, you, you will have a, a lot of stories in, in the Quran, you know, so, uh, they talking about the same prophets of, of Christianity, Judaism, you know, so there is a comparison in it and, uh, some things what's not clear in, in like in the bible it is very clear in in the quran and but we, uh, we just we just said that christianity is false so we can't I'm use sorry? we can't use christianity to prove islam because we've convinced we've been proven that christianity okay, is okay that's what you said okay i i didn't say christianity is false you know so okay, but so do you think christianity some, is some, true some elements in it we don't believe in it so like like the Bible is corrupted. That's what we think. We Muslims. Okay. So how do you know it's corrupted? Uh, it, it says in the Quran. So we believe in the Quran and everything. Okay, what's so in the Quran? Begging, that's begging the question, and it's circular. So you're presupposing that the Quran is true to be able to be proved to to show that other proofs in the world prove it's true. So if the Quran says this thing is true and this thing proves the Quran, well, therefore you understand how that's working, right? So again, mm -hmm. why should I be Muslim? Yeah, I I don't know what 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 kind of answer you expecting, you know. So a logical one. What, what you need like a proof or something? That's what you need. That's what you want to see. I no, think. I, I just want a logical answer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you have read the Quran, you would see like. But you have. For example, for example, one moment. For example, like scientific things, okay, what, like, like uh, what have just recently been discovered. So. It says something about uh, the truthness of the book. But like what? Like what? 
like uh, you have so many examples bro okay show me one uh okay uh like you have uh it's talking about two seas who are uh separate of each other no it doesn't and they so don't mix so, so what the quran talks about it says that there's fresh water and salt water that don't mix together that doesn't exist There's no body of water that does that. There's two salt water bodies that don't fully mix together, but eventually they do mix together, but they crash against each other. And because of the density, they don't fully cross, but there is no It doesn't fresh matter, but and salt water that don't mix together. okay, but it doesn't matter, you know, it, it's, it It does says matter because about you said something it's a scientific what, proof. The Quran okay, got that wrong. okay, without that, the biggest, like the biggest one is like, uh, how, how, yeah, how uh, birds is, is in the cycle, you know, the cycle of birds, you know, it mentions in the, in the Quran. Okay, what verse? I'm sorry? What verse? It's, it's talking about the birth of like how it starts, you know, and uh, how the, 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 the stages of it, it's talking about it. Well, what, what chapter and verse in the Quran? I want to read it. Uh, okay, I have, I have to look about it. Look, one moment. <clears throat> because you have, I think, different verses about it, but it, eventually it talks about it. One moment. Uh -huh. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate how good pizza is? Thin crust or thick? Depends on the mood. If it's thin, it has to be crunchy. Yeah, Amen. you don't want floppy thin crust pizza. It's got to have that no, snap not... to it. Snappy. Like there, was flops. A... I hate when it flops. there was a place in Florida called The Crust. Yeah, my gosh. Thin and, thin and crispy crust. Mm -hmm. if, if it's fluffy, it's got to have cheese inside of it. Uh, stuffed crushes. You ever done like the sauce on top of the cheese? Um, I want to try that. Maybe accidentally. No. I don't know. <laughs> did you find? I'm verse? sure. It, did you, did yeah, you find I'm the sure chapter and verse, bro? I'm uh, sure. It, yeah, one, one more because you have different verses. What I gonna have a good one for you? <sighs> Can we not? I'm trying to diet. Listen, some pizza with some. with some what do you call it uh cheesy bread the garlic cheesy bread on the side yeah. like maybe a chocolate chip cookie at the end and a little bit of pop oof oof oh and you gotta have the garlic dis dipping sauce oh yeah, Dip yeah. no no donair sauce what's donair oh it's so good donair so, mm, so good what what is it what does it taste like it tastes like it's its own special thing bro it's a canadian thing isn't it i guess so it must be that's what i'm learning right now i think it's actually like an atlantic thing Donair sauce is where it's at, bro. Donair. I'm sorry taking so much time. I'm sorry. It's fine. We're just hungry. <laughs> I'm not hungry. No, I already have no. my pizza. I'm just you, you can eat. You can eat. No problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm fantasizing about what I have for dinner. Yeah, it must be a Canadian thing. Uh. Y'all y'all never had Donair sauce? Bro, y'all missing out. American donair sauce? Donair? Yeah. You're frozen up there, bro. It's like swarma sauce. That's what you mean. What the heck? Uh, is it kind of? Is it from garlic, like garlic? It must be a garlicky sauce, is it? What is going on with my camp? Why does my electron electronics never work properly? So okay, let me, let me give because I said it's give di different verses. Like let me let me give one verse. It's set in the Quran. It is uh, chapter 39, verse 6. Hold on, I'm fixing a camera issue. Yeah, problem. no problem. I just bought this damn thing. Why do I always... I'm going to lose my temper right now. I always got technical issues. No matter how much money I spend. How? Because I, I still see you. It's, I, it's not you, it's my YouTube. Oh, uh, okay. 
Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. <laughs> you shut your mouth. You want to be pastor. <sighs> Dude, I just don't want to move right now. Holy heaven, I'm tired. What the heck? Damn piece of technology cost me over a hundred dollars. Are you sure it's that? Yes. I want to hear about the birds. <laughs> yeah, you you do this conversation now, John. So you're alive now. I don't know. I don't, I don't know this argument. This is a new one. Hey, Medea. Medea? Imadia? Imadia? Yes, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Okay. What? Yeah, what's the argument? Okay, I have, I have a better uh, verse for you. It's in the Quran. It's chapter 33, uh, 30, um, 23. Can't, we can't hear you if you're reading it out of the app. Uh, so it's it's, it's uh, Quran uh, chapter number twenty three, and it is verse twelve till till fourteen. And I will read it for you in English. And uh, so, man, we did create from um, from a. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for my English. Yeah, so my English is not very good. We did create from a quintessence of clay then we placed him as a drop of sperm in a place of rest firmly fixed then we made the sperm into a clot of concealed blood then of that clot we made a fetus lump that we made out of that lump bones and you don't, you don't understand no it doesn't describe like uh, the stage of uh, from 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 the sperm into the the womb of the mother and it develops you know into from a clot it develops into like uh, a fetus and then we made it out of the lump the, the bones and clothed with bones with flesh you know so i mean you're just reading the verse again can you tell me how that connects to modern embryology i'm sorry to what you're just reading the verse again yeah exactly yeah, can you tell me how it correlates or connects to modern embryology? You tell me what's wrong about it. What? what how, how? How does children born? What's wrong about this? This thing? What? What? Ex explains here. What's wrong with it? Isn't yeah. that the stages of, so, of yeah. birth? At what? At what point of gestation um, are we a blood a blood clot? Uh, yeah, f from the sperm, I think so. Isn't that mixed with blood? The sperm mixed with blood. Yeah, that's not part of the process. No, of I don't. I know. I don't know exactly what I'm saying now. But maybe sperm uh, mixed with blood or with the egg cell of the women when they when they in contact. 
So, and doesn't, doesn't the verse also say, can you read it one more time? You read it twice, but read it one more time. Uh, from beginning? Um, or from the sperm. So yeah. as, as a yeah. drop of yeah. sperm in a place of rest. So it means the, the sperm gets into the, maybe into the egg or into the womb of the, of the, of the, of the lady, right? Yeah. Firmly fixed. Then we made the sperm into a clot of con, con, congealed blood, it said. I don't know what the, the word exactly means because my English is not very good. So I don't know what it means, congealed. Congealed blood. Okay. Then so of that basically, clot... Basically a blood clot. Yeah, so then of that's that not, clot, that's, that's not we what made happened. a feet. Um, in embryology, what comes first, bones or flesh? <clears throat> and you're going to find out flesh comes first. Bones don't. Yeah, but I don't know if if the verse also exactly says it, uh, YouTube, so. Can you see me? You know, the, the, yeah, you the, said the, it. It says you have the bones that you wrap in flesh. So if you're wrapping yeah, something, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, but, if but, something, but if you're wrapping something in flesh, then I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can't have. So John's right. Uh, the bones don't do not come before the flesh. The flesh comes first. The flesh comes at the three week mark. The bones come at about the uh, no, not even the eight to ten week mark. Okay. Oh, which is, uh, yeah, so you can't hear me now? Oh, you can hear me. Okay. Someone's just messing with me. My TikTok went black? I was about to shoot you. That's not funny. lump like the lump right what is the lump is it that's made of flesh right sorry what was your question the lump is made of flesh i assume so the flesh flesh starts right like right away so uh, yeah okay okay then we have like so flesh, flesh first flesh, and then the bones yeah flesh comes in about the three week mark right Full on flesh, and then yeah. bones start coming about the eight to ten week mark. Exactly, and then after that, what's happened then? Yeah, but the Quran Can states that also? bones come first. Yeah, okay. We, we, Which is just scientifically I'm sorry? incorrect. No? The Quran says bones come first. That's just wrong. No, no. Let's let's re let's read it again. So we made the cloth into a lump. What means what means the lump? What means that? What's the lump? It just says a blood clot. <laughs> so what's the verse? Yeah, you again? Have, you have you have to tell me. This it is uh, Surah twenty three. Twenty three what? 12, 12 to fourteen. Twelve to fourteen. So it says, yeah. and indeed we created humankind from an extractive clay, then placed each human as a sperm drop in a secure place. Then we developed the drop into a clinging clot. Then developed the clot into a lump, and then developed the lump into bones, and then clothed the bones with flesh. Then we brought into being as new creation. Exactly. That's not exactly. That's wrong. Oh. So it says right here, they developed the lump into bones and then clothed the bones with flesh. That's not the how lump. fetal what, development what, what, happens. What, what does the lump mean? What does it mean? So only a blood clot, know. but is is like, huh? I'm sorry? I don't know what it means. It's irrelevant. The, what, the, what's important here is that flesh does not come after the bones. Bo flesh comes first. Bones come later. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know this, so I have to look of of this. I'm sorry, now, but no, you're good. <clears throat> Anyways, man, the, the point is, I don't see a rational reason why anybody should be a Muslim. Yeah, okay, but 
you you I I don't think you ever would make up your mind. I think but that, even that, if that what you're doing there is you're saying, well, it doesn't matter what I'm going to show you. You never change your mind. So you're just validating yeah, exactly. your own belief. That's what but I here's think. The thing. That's you don't, what I you think. don't know that. You don't know that. I could very well Not, be some, no, that's no, no, true. On, that's true. On, but that's on, that, on, that's on, what on, I assume. On, yeah, so. I could very well be somebody that is willing to change my mind, and there actually isn't a rational reason to believe in Islam. But yeah, if you, you see, just say I'm never, you're making, never going to be able to you're change already my making mind. Your, you're already making your uh, reason for not believing in it, right? No, I'm not. I've asked, you know how many times I've had conversations with people? I've had yeah. these conversations. And nobody, and nobody told you so something what, what caught you um, yeah. to be a Muslim. Nobody has given me a convincing argument. Okay, but you, you, you think like uh, Christianity is better than Islam? Well, I think truth is better than falsehoods, yes. So you think Christianity is true then? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. We, we have uh, something what's saying in the Quran. Uh, not the eyes are blind, but the hearts, you know? So yeah, but that's even what, if you no, see so something stop and talking, you read stop it... Stop talking, because that's frustrating. Because all you're saying at this point is you're never going to believe because my Quran says you're never going to believe. Right? Is exactly. it just not possible? Is it's it just not? Po is it just not possible that you don't have a valid argument for it? No, no. It, it's just it just uh, shows the proof what what's in the Quran. You it know, it doesn't show the proof. It tells, right? it, so it tells here's, about here's people thing, like you. Okay, okay. I'm gonna give you a convincing. Because two plus two is five, and if you don't believe two plus two is five, I know it's I know it's true because my other part of the book says that anybody who disregards two plus two is five has a heart closed off to the truth. Mm-hmm yeah right so if i have a if i have a book that says two plus two is five and anybody who disagrees with two plus two is five must have their hearts closed off to the truth uh how do you yeah because because i believe like i believe in that book even if it says two plus two is five you know so even if it says so i believe in that book so yeah it gives me an answer about about like no, 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 people I'm, who no, don't I'm, want to I'm believe, asking like you a question. they're not open. I'm, I'm going to, I'm asking you a question. I have a book in my book. Mm -hmm. It says two plus two is five. And anybody yeah. who disagrees with two plus two is five yeah. mm -hmm. has their hearts closed off to the truth. Everybody who's not, <laughs> that, that's yeah, a weak argument, really, man. Right. So this is exactly gonna... the argument you're giving me. You're saying that the Quran is true, and these are the arguments for the Quran. And if anybody doesn't believe it, must mean that their heart has been closed off to the truth. That, that's the yeah, argument you're after, giving. After you, after you have read it, yeah? If you, after you have read it completely. But you haven't read it. No, but you also not read it, right? So why are you a Muslim? Why well, I'm, <laughs> I'm a born Muslim, so I, I'm already practicing the Islam, you know? So it's natural for me. I don't have to read the whole Quran for to be so, a Muslim. So the only reason you're a Muslim is because you grew up in the culture. No, that's not the only reason. Okay, because so also I believe in it. No, because logic for me. It's logic. logic. We believe logic? in one God, bro. How do you we know? We believe only... in one God, and we How? believe God cannot die, bro. How do you know there's only one God? How do you know? Yeah. How do you know there's only one God? How do you know Jesus is God? No, I'm asking you a question. How do you know there's only one God? Yeah, it's the same question. You know, I'm I'm re right, so, reversing so, because so I'm, it's I'm, the same I'm, question I'm you're asking you, me. I'm going to give you an answer on why I believe Jesus is God, and then you're going to start taking yeah. apart all those things and then create a whole another conversation because you're dodging the actual question. How do mm -hmm. you know there's only one God? I'm not I, I'm not asking how I know Jesus is God. I know how I know Jesus is God. Yeah, okay, okay, but you because you're not going to believe in it, even if I'm going to explain to you, you're not going to believe in it. Well, the, That's the problem. I'm telling you, I believe in the Quran. It says in the Quran. We learn it in the Quran, bro. So why is the Quran true? Yeah, <laughs> because it's the truth. How do you know it's true? How do you know it's true? I, I've already told you there are many stories about the prophets. It's explaining about it's explaining about the prophets before Islam. Yeah, before the true uh, the last prophet came. It's it's telling about science. It's telling about what's going to happen. It's telling it's telling you, about history. So many things. You haven't bro. read it. I'm sorry. You don't know that. But I know it's in it. it. But I well, know it's in it. How do you know it's in it? 
I know it's in it. I know, you know I, that if you have because read it, I didn't you know read everything. It doesn't mean that I know uh, that I don't know everything what's in it. How do you know what's in it if you haven't read it? That's what I'm telling. Bro, you don't have a reason why you're Muslim except for you grew up in it. <laughs> no, that's not true. But it is true because you haven't read the Quran. So you don't know what's in it and you can't give me any other explanation. And the only reason that you say I'm closed off to it is because my heart's been closed off to it. You don't actually have an explanation for why you believe what you believe. And this is a problem, man, because God is out there and he's seeking for you and you're choosing to turn your back on him for no reason. He already found me, so he's not seeking for How me. He's already you know found he me. Found you? He's seeking for people like you. How do you know he found you? I'm sorry? How do you know he found you? Because I'm a Muslim, bro. How do you know I'm Muslim taking... is true? I'm I'm thanking God that I'm a Muslim, bro. How do so you, you don't... know Islam is true? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. If you read the Quran, if you, you know, so... I don't see this going any further, but I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming. Okay. I'm going to jump to the next person. God bless. He, he jumped. I didn't kick him. It, it's circular by nature. Does that look like it's in focus to you? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Second reason, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, are you driving? Yeah. Yeah, I am, yeah. Alright, God bless. I can't have you up while you're driving, bro. That was the TikTok right. rules. <laughs> Abby stopped me just to show me she's got goats in her game. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, man. Just real quick, how old are you? 18. All right, go ahead. Um, by the way, I just wanted to say, uh, from the previous guy who was arguing about the embryos and everything, there are arguments for that, and I don't think it's fair for you to be arguing with people that aren't so knowledgeable when How, it comes okay, to the specific... Okay, hold on, pause, pause, pause. I know, no, no, I know you brought the argument. I know you brought the argument. How am I supposed to know how smart somebody is when they come up? I'll be honest. Me, personally, I can just tell. It's just an assumption, you know? Okay, well, I'll make the assumption now. God bless. Okay. That was astaghfirullah. Hello? Oh, I kicked the wrong guy. <laughs> you, uh, listen, uh, now you have to... Uh, John, hop back up. That was an accident. <laughs> uh, so you can't, you can't actually know somebody's intelligence, bro. You can't tell. The only way you can tell is by talking to them. Like, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. He's going to tell me, don't you talk just, to people that are He's stupid. just like, yeah, we got to kick the less intelligent guy and then drop oh, me. I'm like, like this. Then kick him. <laughs> Sorry, John. This lot lizard. Yeah. Doing right. your claim. Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley. Uh... Uh, Cartilaginous zones. Basically, you have these myogenic cells coming now. Hello. Hey, what's going on? How are you? <laughs> Sorry, multiple apps all the way. You're, you're good. How, how um, old are you? I'm like 30, man. All right, go ahead, bro. You sound younger, I guess. Um, so a couple things here. Um, I guess I want to talk about the uh, miracles that the other brother, um, you know, kind of brought up. Okay. Um, one thing about the two C's that, that don't mix. Um, <clears throat> you said earlier... Because that's just kind of like when I joined the the live, I heard you say something like, uh, "It's fresh water or us." Uh, what, what, what did you say? It was fresh water and salt water, mm -hmm. or they're both salt water. What, what was the issue with that? The Quran says it's fresh and salt, but there is no fresh and salt seas that don't mix. Okay, is is that what it says in the Quran? Well, what's the verse? Let's go look at it. Here, let's pull it up. Because <clears throat> I don't remember anything saying about salt and fresh. Um, it just says that there's a barrier between the two seas and they don't intercede over each other or overpower another. Problem with the Quran is every time I look up a verse, it always just gives me the apologetics and never the actual verse number. 1922. Fifty-five, nineteen through 21. 
It's 50, yeah, 55, Surah uh, Rahman. And uh, what verse was it? Uh, he merges two bodies, fresh in salt water, yet between them is a barrier they never cross. Here, let me... Because in, in the Arabic, it doesn't say melech, it doesn't say salt. So I don't know where the salt's coming from. Uh, let's see. Fresh... That's what it says here. Hey, bro, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. Um, Bye, John. I gotta... Yeah, I got to pick up Than tomorrow. I'm going to promo one more time and then can I'm out. You, can you give him like a deep sensual hug and say it's from, like, like hold it a little too long, grip him I'm a gonna little too tight. I'm going to hold it a little too long and I'm going to lower my hands a little too far. You yeah, know what I'm say, saying? Like, say it's from me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, that's a big ask. It's a big ask. Okay. No, uh... Yeah, so check it out. Here's here's the here's the deal. Jesus died. Jesus resurrected, and there's atheists that don't believe it, and there's Christians that defend it. Well, that's what's going to be happening this coming Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Than Christopoulos is going to be debating Matt Dillahunty live and in person at my church, uh, and I will be moderating the debate. If you are in the Florida Tampa area, then you are more than welcome to join us at Crosswind Church. If you are nowhere near the Tampa area, we're going to be live online. You can literally click my profile right now, and you can go and um, click the link in my bio. It's going to send you directly to uh, our YouTube channel to where you can hit Remind Me, and then guess what? Um, you'll be able to watch the debate from wherever you are. So I encourage you to do so. Thank you guys so much. And uh, John, you have a lovely evening. God bless you, man. Have a good night. <laughs> Later. And also to the wife. Thank you. I pray for you. I pray for you every day. Yeah, okay. I'm it. just kicking him that's out. That's the only thing that's getting me through. All right. Go ahead, bro. Okay. No problem. Um, what you call it? So it's talking about the two bodies of water that don't mix okay so why does it um, say quran I, I, here fresh and salt quran.com okay let's pull that up because that, that the, the arabic doesn't say it maybe there's like a commentation like a let's say in the atlantic or pacific or anything but it doesn't say anything like that it just says that there are two body of water and one doesn't overlap the other okay so here here's the problem they do right at some point like they they hit each other but they do cross paths eventually that's how water works if you take it doesn't yeah, matter but, how much but there's water. a barrier like what's the purpose of so it's it's, it's, it's a density stating... it's not a barrier there's no actual barrier there's a density in the water so that when they clash they, they don't cross immediately sure. that, that's okay, one problem that, that's that, hold on hold on there's another problem another problem <laughs> okay. is even if i was to grant this how does it prove that the quran came from god Okay, I mean, how would somebody know back then that there's two bodies of water? Because it, it, the, the common sense then is like if you have water, it just mixes up and there's you, no... You don't think that nobody uh, traveled across the sea back then? <clears throat> no, I'm sure some people did, but how would they know? Like, okay, because these two bodies of water... Because they looked at it cross. because the two parts of the sea are very vastly different colors. No problem. No problem. Yeah. I'll give you that. But yeah. the, the, the verse itself in Arabic doesn't say salt and, and fresh. There's nowhere in there does it say salt sure, and fresh. Sure. I, I can grant but, you that. But if I... you want to pull that, no, no problem. No problem. What about... Um, what was the other one he brought up? Uh, the, the baby... The Quran knowing exactly how babies are formed in the womb. Okay, perfect, perfect. So I did read something on that, and uh, if I could pull up the book for you, because well, the study that we're getting today, we're we're looking at like thirty years past, and they're like, oh yeah, obviously the flesh comes before the bone, correct? However, modern science, and and I have to pull this book. I have it somewhere. I got it from Amazon, but it, it says the ossifications of bones. So like it comes out pretty soft. It has like this lump. And the ossification of the of the bones actually start before the flesh is actually created. So this would make the Quran true. But then again, hey, maybe somebody um, no, invented I, a microscope here's, here's and thing, discovered though, that a long time here's, ago. Here's the thing, though. I don't believe your claim here. You don't believe in the ossification of bones? So what do you mean by ossification Starting of before bones? flesh is bone? What do you mean by ossification? Before... What do you mean in, by ossification, o ossification of bones? Ossification is... It's a process of bones. Bones don't just come up and become hard. That, that's not how it works. Well, okay, it, if, if you're going to use that logic, then literally everything starts at the start. 
because it doesn't just come out of nowhere. Everything starts at the moment of uh, conception. Yeah, yeah, but but this is so specific. It's, it's, it's so it's specific. Not, it's like not that the, specific. The formation of bones. Hold on. The formation and the ossification of bones start before flesh, right? So this was like an argument against the Quran thirty years ago. Now uh, we find so, out. So in bone, bone, that the So actually, here, here's here's the flesh. thing. You're wrong. Bone, <laughs> okay. Bone, bone ossification starts at the sixth and seventh week of embryonic development. Where, where's your source on that? A National Institution of Health. Let me see. Here, let me find the book for you, because this is something pretty recent. Here, let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. I can't hear you when you're out of the app, by the way. I don't know if you're talking to me. No, I'm looking for the book real quick because I don't want to give a broken source, you know? Like, even logically... What are the bones held? How are the bones held together without the skin? Uh, thank you for your patience, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I was just coming here to talk. <laughs> One second. Okay. So it's, um, it's a book here. It's called The Fundamentals of Human Embryology. And this is from John Allen and Beverly Kramer. And what Who it are they? states... Who's John Allen and Beverly Kramer? Here, let's see. They're the doctors that discovered... It. Let me give you... Let me do a little Wikipedia search on them real quick. Is it J-O-N or J-O-H-N? I'm sorry? John, J-O-H-N, A-L-L-O-N. Bro, this, the book, what was the book called again? He's a biochemist. No, what, um, what was the book called again? Uh, it's fundamentals of human embryology, bro. This, this book doesn't even have a cover. It does have a cover. I found it on Amazon. It doesn't even have a cover to it. Um, no, there's a cover. This, I mean, about the, this ebook, John Allen, Brevely Kamer rated on average three out of five stars. John Allen lives by sea, coast England. He loves the outdoors and most sports. John has written a wide variety of topics for children, including math, science, and sports. Uh, he's also read, written children's, lots of children's books. Um, she's like, it's not looking good, bro. No, but let, let's just see what he says and put it. I mean, I'm not, it doesn't, a, um, it doesn't matter what he says. If he's not, if he's not, doesn't have the credentials to back it up. Like, I can say anything and write any book I want. Like I know people who've written like 50 books with I mean, no credentials. It, 
if he holds a biochemist degree, he doesn't uh, that doesn't hold weight. It holds a it holds more weight than if he didn't. <laughs> I mean, but, I, but yeah, is he arguing for the consensus or is he arguing for the minority view? Right? What is what is his like place in the academic world? Like, there are people who argue outside. There are historians who make historical claims that are just completely BS. Right? Just because you go get a degree in something doesn't actually mean you have you have the ability to speak on that. It just well, means he, you went to school. He's been doing uh, studies from Wits University, and he's um, well, you, he came you, out with you, this. You, you don't know anything about him until you right right now either. We both know the same amount about him. No, I, I don't know his work like that, but I'm I'm seeing he's um, through throwing fundamentals. Okay, really does think. he have anything published? Yeah, no, not not a book like a paper. Uh, we could look that up. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could find is his book. Beverly, yeah, Beverly Kramer. She's uh, at Atomical Sciences, the University of Whitstander and uh, NYU, president of Anime Society of South Africa. Oh, shit, they've been all over. However, anyways, uh, the, the, the main thing that they're bringing is that the ossification starts before. The ossification of bones actually start before flesh is um, actually created. Okay. Um, quote, but, quote, but look, quote look. It, hold on. Quote it for me. Quote what okay. they say. Let me find the page. Give me one second. Bro, you, you got your source from islampapers.com. I found your source. No, no, I'm not on islampapers.com. Where'd you, where'd you find your source? It's on Amazon and I just look at, um, no, no, no. But like when you looked, when you looked this up originally, where did you find this book? How no, hear I, I about heard it? about this. I, I actually heard about this a couple of years ago. So I just had to look it up because it's been some time. I mean, when I look, look up your argument, the first mm -hmm. like page that pops up is an Islamic apologetic site. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, like how, how many things that the Bible might say, and then you'll have like Christian apologetics say, oh, yeah, this is true because this is the word of God. I, I, you know, none the, of the, oh, argument, well, none okay, of the arguments I bring forth will, is going to bring you to a Christian. No apologetic. problem. OK, let's let's do something easy. Um, the, the Quran puts a claim that the clouds are heavy and everybody that sees the clouds will think that's ridiculous. And it was um, it was um, kind of something where like. A lot of other people would mock the Quran saying, oh, these clouds look light. They look nothing transparent. You could grab it. It's like a big thing of cotton. And now today we could all agree that the clouds are heavy. But how would a man 1400 years ago who can't okay, read or write know that? What's the verse? No problem. Here, let me. Let's see. Go to chapter 35, verse 9. And it is Allah who sends down the wind so they could rise up the clouds and we drive them to the land. So, sorry, what was the verse again? Chapter and verse? Oh, wait, that's, that, that's not it. Hold on. Uh, go to chapter 13, verse 12. Chapter 13, verse 12? Yeah. Okay. So it says, He is the one who shows you lightning, inspiring hope and fear, and, produce, and produces heavy clouds. But this is mm -hmm. not talking about... Okay, first of all, this is not talking about how clouds are made 
or what they do. No, no, I, I never stated that. I just said that it's saying it's saying that the clouds are heavy. Who would yeah, but think that, that's an idiom? Fourteen hundred years ago, the clouds are heavy. Okay. Uh, so you're saying time. you're saying nobody no. ever said heavy clouds before then ever once. No, no. no. Oh, so here's the thing. It's pulling up a state. Fourteen hundred years ago, a man. You, you, we could say maybe seven hundred years ago, twelve. But something like this would be very like, if if a man who can't read or write is going to produce something and say that there's heavy clouds, people back then for fourteen hundred years you would think you, this haven't, you haven't even convinced me that you can't read or write. You're begging a question at this point. So again, are you making the claim that no one what? ever before Muhammad has ever said that there is heavy clouds? I never said, made that claim. You made that claim. You're trying I, I to find a reason claim. to say, hey, maybe he pulled it off of there. Right? So so, so <laughs> you're stating that he knows that clouds are heavy, right? Who? Who knew? Muhammad. So this is a scientific miracle. No, it says it in the Quran. Okay, so the Quran says that clouds are heavy. So this is a scientific uh -huh. miracle, yes? Correct. Now, are you making the claim that no one ever before... The Quran I never made that claim. You okay. made that claim. I'm not making that claim. I'm asking you a question. Has anyone ever before the Quran ever mentioned heavy clouds? Are you saying that no one ever has? I, I'm I'm not saying that. You're saying that. That's I'm not saying I'm anything. You. I'm asking a question. Okay, okay, you're asking me. I'm saying no. Okay. I never made that claim. I'm not, so if you're not making that claim, then how is he showing a miracle here? Okay, so first of all, why would somebody 1400 years ago make a claim that they the clouds are heavy why like what, what would did what would come anybody up ever before the quran regardless ever say there's such thing did, as a heavy cloud regardless if they did or they didn't what, what does that matter because in the context of what he's saying here is poetic uh -huh. by nature he is the one who shows you lightning inspires you with hope and fear and produces heavy clouds it's talking about an mm -hmm. idiom it's talking about things that happen to you heavy clouds is an idiom for what weighs you down right we've known no. this for a while no. why okay this it, is talking about science who shows you lightning right talking about lightning and clouds right causes fear and hope and he produces heavy clouds it's a poem listen to it it's he, not a poem okay let, let's read it thing and let's let's read it together as a class and we'll figure out if it's this is a poem or a scientific text okay let's, let's start at verse 11. for each one of the successive angels before them behind protecting them from allah's command indeed allah would never change a people's state of favor until they reach their own state of faith and if it's allah's will to torment the people it can never be averted nor can they find the protector other than him he is the one who shows you lightning inspires you with hope and fear and produces heavy clouds the thunder glorifies his praises as do angels awe of him he sends thunderbolts striking them that striking them whoever he wills yet the dispute uh, dispute about allah and he is tremendous in might Calling upon him is truth, but those and pagans invoke beside him can never respond to them. It is just like someone who stretches their hands out the water asking, reach to their mouths, but it can never do. The calls of disbelievers are only in vain. Is this making a scientific claim? It's making a, a very subtle claim to show like, okay, I did this, okay. this, this. By the way, there's a lot of facts to it, right? And for, okay, this, okay. for this to be no, a miracle, no no for this to be a miracle, you have to say <laughs> that no one ever in history before this point ever said, mentioned the words. No, ridiculous, ridiculous. Come How on. is that ridiculous? Like, if anybody before the Quran <laughs> mentioned a heavy cloud, then they're the one performing the miracle. No. No. Why not? Because you can have people in the past, like you can have, like if if the quran says okay this is what happened this is what happened this is what happened and in every one of those things oh people didn't drive up to the sea and notice that there's a, a barrier separating between them oh wait a minute oh psh, look at another one here heavy clouds oh Bro. you're saying nobody else written anything about that 1400 how is it that it so happens he got everything right about iron he got everything right he about, didn't. about iron no he didn't well okay well, what what's wrong about iron? What what's right about it? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you're saying he didn't. I'm I'm telling you. I, I haven't even brought that up yet. But you're saying he did. But you're, you're making all the claims. Why? He's got all this no, stuff no, no, right. No, no. no. Here's, what, here's what, the thing. what he's here's, got. Here's the thing. What he's got is living in a world around him where people talk about things. If you're going to talk about the fact that he brought iron from the skies, well, Egypt talked about that 1500 years before Muhammad. So is Egypt the prophet? No. Okay. Did he? Well, where's the proof that Muhammad got it from from Egypt? I didn't say and he did get it from Egypt. 
What I'm saying okay. is Egypt a prophet? Because they talked about it 1500 years before Muhammad. Sure, sure. And Egypt also said that the um, that uh, there are certain man gods coming out, and they believed in uh, multiple people being um, gods. Why didn't he mention that part? Because they lived in the Near East where Christians lived? No, Christians also believed in the many, like, essence or parts of gods. Like, they, they had Bro, this idea of Trinity. You're, you're and, making and it sound people. like Muhammad lived in a box and then all of a sudden received this information. He lived in a world where people talked about things and looked at things and studied things and understood things and traveled the seas and traveled the lands. You're so like, he picked how up did the he right know stuff. about the sea? Because somebody on, traveled. Hold on, hold on, hold, right on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. How did he know about the sea? <laughs> somebody traveled across the sea and seen it, right? How did he know about the, the iron coming from the skies? Because they've been talking about it for 1,500 years. How did they know about the Christian stuff? Because Christians existed around him. These, it's common sense, bro. So, so you're saying that he extracted the right information and didn't extract the, the, the wrong information. He did extract the wrong so information. Like, he doesn't well, know how wrong, embryos are made. Right? Well, he doesn't know where a sperm cell comes from. The, 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 the thing. Sperm cells? He doesn't, know where, he doesn't know how an embryo is made. He doesn't know how a sperm, where a sperm cell comes from. Well, the, the hadiths well, well, don't understand sperm? that the spine does decay. Well, 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 where, where does it say the uh, something about the sperm? Sperm comes from the spine. No, it doesn't. That's what the Quran says. No, it says Khulika min Mat and Dafik, Yahrujiman Bain Sulbi Wataraib from in between that area. No, it doesn't. Let's go to the verse. Yeah. What is it? Let's go. What was that? Chapter ninety six? No, you tell me. You're the one who knows it off by heart. I know the verse, but I I don't know the, the numbers and the verse right off the top of my hand. Um, but you're you're saying it's not true. So here, let me see. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Oh, it's eighty six. Oh, it took me out. Um, 86 what? Um, it's in the beginning. Look at the verse. Uh, I can't hear you. You muted yourself. Hello? Hello? I can't hear you, bro. You're muted. Now you're out of the app. Okay, I'm gonna move on in like 15 seconds, maybe. Ten. Five, four, three, two. All right, man. God bless. Appreciate you. Uh, oh, that person didn't connect. Hello, how are you? Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you? You yep, you are saying why should you be Muslim, right? Yeah, so hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank God. How's everything? Good, man. Uh, how old are you? 35. All right, bro, go ahead. What do you know about Islam to begin with? Uh, I'm not a scholar, but I know a little bit. Okay, you know a little bit. Why I think you should be Muslim is because you're just basically following the Old Testament and the Biblical Prophets. Also another benefit of being Muslim, you'll have a little more clarity, more clearer vision. And you have a if you were gambling on yourself, you have a better odds of making it to heaven. Okay. Why do I say that? 
Yeah. Go ahead. You can no, I was just going to ask, why do you say all that? Can you prove any of those claims? Yeah, because if by being Muslim and you just follow all prophets, including Jesus, you have a better you have a better chance of pleasing the one who sent the prophets. Okay, well, how, if you're how do Jewish, I know how do I know which prophets God sent? Well, Muslims believe in the biblical prophets and the Old Testament prophets. Well, I don't care what you believe. I just want to know how I know which God, which prophets God sent. Like, how do I figure that out? What was the answer? I just gave an answer. Like, like for example, the same for example, my question is, why don't I follow Joseph Smith? Because he's not a prophet. He didn't come do miracles. He didn't come with no well, rules, no he, laws. He did, actually. He came before miracles. He was given laws by God's two golden tablets. Uh, he got a new book. It was called the Book of Mormon, right? People followed him and they called him a prophet. So why would I not follow Joseph Smith? What year did he come? I think it was like the 1800s. Yeah, because Jesus, if we follow the Bible or the Quran, we know that many false prophets will come after. Okay, so how do, how do, I, how do I differentiate between who is a true prophet and who is a false prophet? Okay, great. A true prophet is not coming for worldly gains. A true okay. prophet is going to come give you the same message that was sent prior. And a, a true prophet... But, but my question most, is, where are you getting this criteria from? From the Quran. Okay, that's begging the question. But you're saying why I should be Muslim, and I'm telling you information on but, why but you should. Ba you're begging the question, right? You're presupposing Islam is true, and then using Islam to convince me and to believe it. Exactly. Exactly. That's why if you're that's, sincere... That's a fallacious argument. So why should I believe the Quran? This is what I'm saying. If you're sincere in trying to learn, like your video saying, why should I be Muslim? I'm just giving you a couple of things of why I think you should be Muslim. I'm not here to explain to you what false prophets or real prophets... So what you're I'm saying you is you don't have a valid reason on why you should be Muslim. Yeah, of course I have a valid reason because if okay, you know so the Quran and the God said book... If you know the Quran is a God sent book full of miracles, and it's the only book that we have that's preserved, and it's the only book that man cannot change, even if it's if you bring the whole world to try to test it, it will not change the book. Except it has been that, changed. It has not been changed. Never has. Yes, it, it has. And How I can, can you I, prove I can that prove the Quran has been changed? I can prove it to you. Go ahead. This one. Okay, so I'll ask you a question. In chapter 3, 146, did they Good. fight side by side or were they killed side by side? Did they fight side by side or were they killed side by side? Yeah. All right, what, what, what translation of the Quran do you have? Well, I, the just have I just have an English translation. I'm asking you which one is true. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up that verse. One moment. You said what was what was the number of the verse? Three one forty six. Three one forty six. Somebody asked, imagine if I didn't have Google, I just have my books out. I have stacks of books. And I just have them laying around me and I just open up and look at those things. People say different dialects and accents don't know how to speak. I'm reading one moment, just so you can know, one second. Bro, it doesn't take that long to read a verse. You're reading an apologetic. No, it's not that because I re I'm reading the verses be before it and after it to give you a good answer. Well, I just need you to want know, I just need to know does it say quetzal or Do you want a quick Ferrari answer? I just need to know does it say quetzal or quetzal? 
In the in the wash, it does it does say that. Hold on. I'm not claiming it's a contradiction, Julian. Okay, well, well, that I don't have the answer for you. That's maybe one of five different differences in the wars and the half Quran. There's not too many of them. Okay, what? Are, right. Okay, but then right then you've just showed me that it's not perfectly preserved. Also, is it not true that all the ones that didn't match the Quran were burned? No, that's not true. That's not true. They didn't burn it. It's not true because the companions were ordered to to burn the ones that they they were not ordered to. But my question to you so would hold be: on. Did, I, did they gonna, or did they second. not per burn the copies that did not match up? They did burn it. Right. That's what I'm telling you. Th think about that. I want you to think. It's yeah. perfectly preserved. Why is it perfectly preserved? Because it was ordered from the prophet that they were unnecessary. So you burnt the copies that did not match what you had. Yeah. Let me explain something to you. If if you're saying that, because I see the cross on you, if you're saying that the Bible being Christian would be better, then your argument is way worse. I'm not, I'm not making because any argument for Christianity. Stand, I'm saying there's no valid with, reason to be a Muslim. So why does every Muslim agree with the amount of chapters in the Quran? And why do every Muslim agree with how the verses start and end? There's a couple of differences between the two different uh, dialects of the Quran. I don't have the answer on why those words are different. But scholars say that it just, for an example, a person in Egypt and a person in Morocco, the way they say words are different. So, but it's so, not so but many the difference, examples. The though. difference between the Hafs and the Warsh is one they fought side by side, the other they really killed. Right? In, okay, in maybe the Hafs and Warsh maybe is they one they were by, taken. Maybe they fought side by side and they were killed side Hold by on. side. In, it's, in 2 125, it says one says yeah. they, they took and the other one says they were taken. Those are contradictions, those ones. It's a possibility that there's some, there's some languages. So that here, don't here's have the that exact that, word that fit in English. I, I'm still not That's claiming. Answer, I'm not actually. claiming contradiction. That's not what I'm claiming. Yeah. What I'm claiming is not perfectly preserved. There's not just one copy. There's different copies. Of course, that because for an example, in English, Julian, for an example, hold on, Christian I'm just gonna, I just got to mention someone in the comments again, Julian. If you mention contradiction again, I'm going to boot you from the live because again, can I'm not I, claiming. I'm not claiming contradiction. Go ahead, bro. I know you're not claiming. I know. I know you're not, but somebody in the chat keeps yelling. I understand. It's driving me nuts. I, I'm, I'm saying, for an example, in English, we see Christians saying the word father. Our Christians might use the word Allah. We both know, logically, it's the creator they're talking in both, right? Logically, me as a Muslim, I know, okay, if a Christian says father, he's talking about the Lord above. You can't, you can't say Father in Islam. You can't call the Father, yeah. God Father. I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we say that. I say I know, I'm aware that when Christians mean that, they're talking about the Lord upstairs. I'm not saying me. I said Christian. And then our Christians would say Allah, which are both the Father supposedly in, Christian, in Christianity, right? So what I'm saying to you is why would you not become Muslim because of a, wor a word that's not far off, for example, f is that the issue why you don't I'm want not, to be Muslim? That's not an issue I want to be Muslim. You made a claim that is perfectly preserved. I'm showing you it's not. It is perfectly preserved. But it's Because not. we know, we know, all Muslims, we we read the same Quran. But you don't. Do you read the Hafs or the Warsh? Those are two different Qurans. They're just, well, there's maybe three or five words it's that are different. translated. It's not perfectly preserved. Perfect means it is no perfectly mistake. preserved. I'll tell you why. They all have 114 Define perfect. chapters. Define perfect. Ready? Define perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect is perfect. Define it. Define perfect. It means no flaws. Um, okay. So if if it's perfectly preserved, it's then flaw. why do two say different things? Uh, I don't know. What I do know is people who looked into this matter more than I have. They're saying it's like uh, um, a way of translating it. But what I'm saying is not on this topic. No, I don't no, know the right the answer. Arabic word, one Arabic word is quetel.
The other one yeah. is Quittal, right? But they're, they're similar so words. Do, do you, do you want to hear what the, the Muslim uh, scholar has to say about this? I can quote you what he has to say about it. There's many. There's many scholars. I'll quote, I'll quote you what Muhammad Mustafa al-Azim says about this verse. What did he say? He says, we must nevertheless take into consideration that there are over 250,000 manuscripts of the Quran scattered over the globe. When comparing them, it's always possible to find copying mistakes here and there. This is an example of human fallibility and must be recognized as such by authors who have written extensively on the subject by unintentional errors. Such occurrences cannot be used to prove the corruption with the Quran. Okay. But my question, my friend, is to you, if, if, if this is an issue for you, are you claiming that the Bible is more better preserved than bro, the Quran? Bro, perfectly, you, I understand that. Bro, even if it was perfectly preserved. That, so why that are you Christian? If even, that's why you're I'm not Muslim. I'm trying to answer your question. Even if it was perfectly preserved, it doesn't prove okay. anything. My pickles in my fridge are perfectly preserved. That doesn't mean it's the word of God. Okay, but aren't you looking for something that's better? Why would you want something worse? There's nothing worse than pickles. Because if we're talking about, if you're talking about one or five words and the difference of the, the harsh and the, Bro, can and you, the can harsh you, Can you crack? give me my argument I just said to you? Because again, I, that is an argument. No, no. What did I just say to you? You said that you don't care if it's, if it's uh, not perfect. That's not what I said at all. I said, Basically. it doesn't matter if it's perfectly preserved. My pickles in my fridge are perfectly okay. preserved. That doesn't mean my pickles are the word of God. Okay, great. So what other issues you have? If it's not about preservation, what's another issue you have about Islam that you feel like? I don't think there is any reason to be a Muslim. That's my issue. But we, we have the straight belief the, 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 of the oneness of God, where you cannot lose. That's how what I'm you, telling you. How do you Muslim. know God is one? Because that's what Moses preached. That's what Jesus preached. What is Jesus' first? But how do you, how what do you, how do you know that Jesus and Moses preached that? Because I'm a person that's into comparative religion. So are you. But how do you know Joseph, Moses and Jesus preached that? What's your evidence? The Quran. But you're pre and if you're you say well, the other than the Quran, there's evidence also in the Old Testament of the Bible. Okay, here, here's the thing. You keep, saying, you keep saying the Quran, but you've yeah. yet to show me that the Quran is trustworthy. Why we could take of that Of course it's trustworthy. Then, because you, hold on, hold this, on, hold on, hold on. Then you it, go to the Bible. Hold on. Then you go to the Bible. But the problem is you say that the Bible is corrupted. So how do I know the verses that you're taking out of the Bible are trustworthy? Okay, great, great. Just because something's corrupted does not mean there's no truth in it. Corrupted means tampered. I believe it has been tampered through the generations. So how do you now, know someone didn't I don't go measure, hold, hold I don't measure by the Bible. Let me finish. I don't measure by the Bible. I measure by the Quran. And another way I know it's God sent is because nobody can produce something like it. And another thing is if it's if if it is not sent by God, why hasn't there been no other text or book since since that has impacted society like it nothing yeah there it has been the book of mormon oh really and how many people follow that today a lot millions millions and that was okay, in the great. 1800s so it hasn't had enough time hasn't had the same amount of time the quran has and give does it, the, give it a th another thousand years it could out, outweigh uh Islam. okay great do the Mormons believe everything what Christians believe in? No. They don't. No. So why why is your why is your life not saying why am I not Mormon, not Muslim? I might do that one day. But not you might not be a Muslim though one day. I might go why not why I might go why should I be a Mormon one day? I'm not doing it today. I'm doing Muslim today. I'm allowed to do different okay. things different days. Well, based off my opinion I'm telling you why I think it's better for you to be a Muslim because you're just following the prophets. If you believe in prophets, if you believe, do you believe that the prophets came with the same message? Yes or no? No. You do not believe? No, they all came with a different message and had a different purpose. What was different about Abraham and Moses' message? 
Abraham's, me- Abraham's message was to start the generation, right? To say that I will make a whole nation out of you. Moses' message was to guide that generation, to guide those people. Right? Oh, For example, God, right? the, the, the prophet Jonah was sent to preach to Nineveh specifically about their, their sin and their transgressions. Great. Just like Jesus was sent specifically to the lost tribes of Israel. So they're all sent for different things. But what is their message? Their message to worship the Lord. They all had different messages. One. We can okay. all agree. This show, is why show me, show me a verse. A hold on. Show me a verse by Jonah says, worship the Lord. The Lord is one. Why would God send the Bible? Show me a verse by Jonah that says that. Show me a verse by Jonah that says that. Show me a verse by Jonah that says that. There isn't, but let me tell you why. Okay, so then how do you know all the prophets came with that message? Because the Quran, the Bro, Quran you're begging tells the question. Prophet, how do you know the Quran is from God? Because it's instilled. If you are instilled in believing in God, you would believe. Why would a messenger come with a different message than other than worshiping the one Lord? How do why you know I, the that Quran takes you out came the fold of belief in God? How do you know the Quran came from God? How do you know that Muhammad just didn't make it up? You know how I know? Because there's no book like it, my brother. There's How, no book like Harry Potter. One book. Explain to me this. Name me one book that 150 million people who don't speak that language can memorize it from cover to cover. That's a miracle. Yeah, I, I can name one. The Torah. You could bring me one Jew Bro, Jews, that can recite dude. the whole Torah. I'll give you $1,000. Cover to cover. You're, you're dead, dead ass? I'm serious. Dead you ass? You can message me. You can message no, me. I'll on my show TikTok. you right now. Go Are ahead, you serious? You're going to give me $1,000? Yes. Okay. Cover to cover without the book. Better loan $150 million people. We'll go sell you the book to book. Okay. And that, I'm not just looking for a claim. I'm looking for proof of a person that could do the yeah, whole... Yeah, dude, he's alive. he's alive right now. Yeah. Like, he, 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 he does this for, like, a living. He goes around and preaches yeah. the Torah from his brain. How many? How many of them can do that? No, no, you're no, no. That's not your claim. Your claim was one person. It's one person. Show exactly. you one person, you'll give me a thousand dollars. You know why I said that? It's an analogy to show no, no, you, you that. Are you, are you capping right now? That. Are you capping right now? Because you said show yes. you one person who could do that, you'll give me a thousand dollars. One per Yeah, I still gotta see it. Right. I gotta see, and uh, that's what I'm saying. Rabbi, Anybody, can Rabbi Yosef one Kintor person is his name. How about the Bible? Do you know anybody who can recite the whole so, Bible cover to cover? So. While you're looking, do you know anybody who can recite the Bible cover to cover? Not off the top of my head. Do you know how do, long do, the Bible Would is? you say that it's a miracle if some, if 150 million people could recite you the Bible cover to cover? No. Wouldn't you feel like that's God installing I would not say that's a miracle. You wouldn't say that's a miracle? No. I'd say it's just how a bunch about, of people memorizing it. How about... Um, I'm here. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, numbers, number miracles, for an example, the amount of times word are, are, words are mentioned and how symmetry every verse and every chapter is with a prophet that is illiterate. You want to say that's a miracle? Bro, you keep talking. I'm trying to find this. I'm half listening to you. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm did just you, I didn't to, hear a word you I'm said. I'm just trying to help you with what you said. Well, Why no, should I'm you trying, be I'm trying to find you this source, but you keep yammering and I'm, I'm half focusing on that, half focusing on you. What okay, did you just brother. Say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep looking. Bro, I hope this ain't true. It says he died. I'm gonna be so mad. Uh. That shows you. You can't, you could barely find one. Even if you could find that one. Why isn't there 150 million? God is not the author of confusion. It's clear as day. I could bring you a Mexican boy who could recite you the whole Quran, a Japanese boy, an African boy, a white boy. I'm just Bro, saying, why do, do you Muslim? ever stop talking? Of course I'm okay, talking. What am so, I supposed so to do? So I can show you in the Bible a verse that says yeah. that it was every single Jew's responsibility to remember, to memorize one book of the Bible. Right? So you got to okay, remember right. the Bible is not one book, right? It is 66 to 73 books, depending on, on, the yeah. dot, on where you look, yeah. right? That's 850,000 words. It is literally okay. 10 times the size of the Quran. 
every single Jew, every single one, this is Mosaic law, have yeah. to memorize one entire book of the Bible. Every single one. So how come they don't? They do. How come there's they only do. one? Every, sing could. every single Jew that lives in Palestine that's practiced Judaism has memorized one entire book of the Torah. One book. Okay. I'm Palestinian, by the way. So I would have seen that more often, but okay. It's a claim. It doesn't mean that they do, my brother. They do. That's part of their tradition. They're, every single Jew, every single Yeah, one. in Jerusalem, not in Palestine. They have Love to be living you, in Jerusalem. You keep changing the dang subject. You keep you running. Look, point. you're running. You're I ain't running, bro. You literally said, I'm a, I'll am I'll pay you a $1,000. You can show me one person, right? So Rabbi Yasef Kantor, uh, then the other guy, he passed away, unfortunately. He's the other one. Um, Yaakov Rav Sham Yada is another one that you can look up. Uh, and then again, in the Bible, in the Bible, it commands them. It says you must to become a man. Part of the process, part of the Ju the Jewish process of becoming a man when they turn thirteen, is they have to memorize an entire book of the Torah. Bro. All right, moving on. Yo. Hello, how are you? Hello, mate. Hi, how are you? I'm good, bro. How are you doing? Good. Uh, just real quick, how old are you? I'm 21. All right, go ahead, bro. Um, You see your previous point about contradictions in the Quran, um, the dialects of the Quran. I never made a claim that there's a contradiction in the Quran. Do any of you guys listen at all? Any of you? Okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, you made a claim that there was a, a difference of verses in the, in the dialects, isn't it? Yes. The refutation to that is, I don't think you know what the word dialect means. When it talks about dialects here, yeah, it refers to accents in a sort of way, innit? The Prophet, peace be upon him, even said that the Quran was revealed in seven different dialects, different accents. Okay, so a different accent says that one says they fought side by side and the other says they were killed? A different accent we'll and it. dialect changes that? Yeah, the, the translation will change depends on what so did they I fight the side by side or were they killed side by side well don't we'll get to it. we'll get to it let me no let no me just answer the question we're not going to get to it just answer it which one no no bro you I'm which one question for, for just which one which I'm one was it question. did they fight side by side or were they killed side by side which one is it i'm going to answer the question through the explanation no just tell me which one bro it's not a yes or no answer i'm, gonna I'm not asking for a yes question. or no i'm just asking you to tell me which one but by doing this, you don't prove that you're correct. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, you're going to get your answer. Let me give you uh, the context first. All right, it? I'll give you 10 seconds. 10. But you, cool. regardless, yeah, dialects, they don't change the understanding of the Quran. All they do is change the pronunciation. Thus, it's the translation's error where they don't understand the Arabic properly or they understand only one dialect of the Arabic in which they translate into English. Do you get it? The okay, best analogy so I can phenomenal. give Phenomenal. Which one is it? What's the verse? 3146. Did they fight side by side or were they killed? Um, 3146. Mm -hmm. Al Kahaf three one forty six. What? Everybody in the chat being like, let him talk. I ain't saying nothing. No, you was though. Obviously, you wanted a yes or no answer. I'm telling you, it's a bit more complicated than that. I didn't want a yes or no answer. I wanted an answer. Yeah, and I, I, I was giving you my answer, and you didn't let me complete. 3146, bro, it's not coming up, man. What? Let me just look. Let me just look. See the hand of my money. Three 
one, forty-six. That you want forty-six? Three one forty-six. Three. Chapter three, verse one forty-six. Oh. This time we're looking at the whole wrong verse. Forty-six. One forty-six. One forty-six. One forty-six. Muhammad is like many of other prophets alongside him. Masses of devout men have fought. They are neither disheartened nor weakened, nor did they surrender in the face of the suffering. God loves the patient. What? What's your translation? What'd you say? What's your translation? Uh, there's two I'm looking at, the house and the wash. If I go to Quran.com, it says, how many devotees fought along with their prophets and never fell uh, faltered despite whatever they suffered in the cases of law, nor that they weaken or give in. Allah loves those who persevere. Right in the Warsh text, the it I says, it said in the Warsh Muhammad text, it says, How many devotees were killed along with their prophets and never faltered despite whatever? Okay, Muhammad is like many other prophets alongside whom masses of devout men have fought. So, I'm gonna say the fort is a correct one. Without okay, so why? So then, why is there a version out there that says they were killed if it was perfectly preserved? Okay, now now I'm gonna go to my explanation. As I was saying, yeah, dialects are like accents. If you if you have one book which has been has been written in seven different dialects, yeah, let's say in well, seven different accents, that's Scottish accent. preserved, then is it? That's written no, no, in no, seven different the dialects. Revealed, the, the Quran was revealed in seven different dialects. So Muhammad, when he got the Quran, it was given to him in seven different versions? How did the Quran come down? It came down in bits, right? So through seven different times, seven different versions? Now, when you see what it is, it came down in the Quraysh dialect. But when it was it was portrayed onto the people, this is what happened. Obviously, the people of Mus the Muslims at the time started off as the Quraysh, yeah? And then as more people came to Islam, they was finding it difficult to read the Quraysh dialect. So the Prophet peace be upon him said that um, the, you're allowed to read the Quran in the other dialects available, that were the, the majority of dialects so that were there around So you can change the, the story? No, it was, it, was, it was restricted to these seven dialects. But this, is, this isn't a dialect. Said, Define a said, dialect story, for me. Define dialect. The best way to describe it is the accent. Right? So an accent. So, like, okay, so, so what, look, why look, is an accent what, what changes the fact that they were killed to one being oh. one and they fought being the other? That's not okay, an accent, so bro. Here's an accent. Right now I'm giving you a Canadian accent. Yes, boy. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm giving you an Irish yeah. accent. Do you ever go to Ireland? Yeah. This, see, this is the thing. I'm still saying the same thing. Nothing's changed in what I'm saying. It's just coming out of my mouth just you a little bit different. The There's a bit of an accent. I might not say three. I might say tree, mm -hmm. right? I might say tree, but tree and three mean the same thing. It doesn't mean different things. You know what I'm saying? No, cause the reason why you're wrong there. Imagine we've got one book here. We've got one book that has been that has been written in, let's say, English, American, uh, British, British, British English, American English, um, Scottish English, Welsh English. If a Spanish person was about to translate this book here, can understand your your difficulty you're having is with the English translation, not with Arabic. There's no there's no contradiction. So, so in the Arabic. Arabic, the Arabic, one says quetel mm. and one says quittle. Right? Well, they are different to, Arabic yeah, words. Other, one means fought, one means killed. In, in the dialects, in the dialects, in, in one dialect. In, so again, the, the again there, lad, a dialect doesn't mean anything, right? My dialect just, is now changed. Just, My dialect is now changed. Hmm. But the words that I'm saying, even if I use different words, if I use words that are specific to Ireland or are no Phoenice, right? Yes, boy, come get a no, card. No, come get a kiss. Come get a kiss on the card. Come get a kiss on the card there, boy. Right, still means the same thing if I said, "Come no, 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 kiss no, no. the fish, my friend." No, but look, if a Spanish person was now about to translate, "Come get a kiss on the cod," he would be thinking, "What the hell does this mean?" And he may he may translate it differently, right? Right. I'm right, don't it? Look, look at you. You know I'm right, bro. You know I'm right. They're it? still going to look, so if I say if I say so here here's the thing. If I say no no, I, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to answer your question. If you shut up, I can answer your question, right? If I oh, say oh, oh. to you, right, good night, please, is the same as, oh, is, is the same as buenas noches, por favor, right? 
That's a different dialect, but it still has the same meaning. So my question for you, my question for my question for you is how the heck does two different dialects mean two completely different words? Uh, though that depends on the translator. The translator has duties, right? He has a duty to understand the Arabic and he's got a duty to understand his own language, right? Okay, so which which one is the correct translation? The the Hafs or I'm the Warsh? I'm telling you four is the correct translation, yeah? But some translators may, if they're if they're reading the wash, understand it as something else because they're using a different dialect to translate it. Because they're understanding. Of so did they fight complete. side by side or were they killed side by side? Which one? I, I said fought. I said they fought. But okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm not then why is it? Then I'm why is it the? Then why is it the people who get the wash text get a corrupt version? They don't get a corrupt version. The it's different, bro. Um, it's, it's, it's not different. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. You still don't understand what I'm trying to say to you. Because what you're saying like, doesn't make any sense. The well, the thing I think everybody in the chat agrees with me. No, they don't. Yeah, they literally agree with me, bro. Look, Do you want to? Okay, text, let's yeah. run a poll. Let's run a poll. Uh, if everyone in the chat agrees with you, we're going to run a poll and we're going to find out for sure because we're not going to play the game which one. Uh, smiley face if you agree with yeah. me, crying face if you agree with him. Go ahead. If everyone in the chat agrees with you, let's see. Smiley face if you agree with me, crying face if you agree with him. Okay, three, four, seven. And actually, there's going to be more Christians here anyway, isn't it? So well, you said everybody in the chat. Well, people, you said everybody. People, regardless, yeah. People understand, people understand I'm a prophet. Please, brothers, don't be biased in it. Jesus is watching in it. And you get how to be learning. I'm results, going off you your, your claim. Be, be yourself, your right? claim was everybody in the chat agreed with you. Oh. Now, all right, cool. The, anal the analogy I'm going to make here is imagine you've got one book. It's in seven different dialects. If a person that studies a different language, for example, Spanish here, has to translate the English translation, uh, the, the British English translation and the American English translation, naturally, he's going to have differences because of his his understanding of English. Yes. You get where I'm coming? I 100% I agree with everything yeah. you said. Now, which one is yeah. correct? Did they fight side by side or were they killed side by side? And which one was given the, the corrupt one? Understand, you see the translation here is not the Quran. That's a translation of the Quran. Bro, if I translate, okay, hold on. If I'm given something yeah. in this language and it says they yeah. fought each other and I translate it and give yeah. it to the, this people and say they killed each other, those are two different Bro, things. What is a dialect? What is a dialect? I'm, I'm I, is that's the question I asked accent? you. You said it was an accent. What is an accent? Yeah, what is an accent? Explain it to me. Please. This is an accent. I'm speaking a Canadian accent. Oh, it's happened to Ireland here, so now I'm speaking an Irish accent. Yeah, you're saying two different things, two different words here, but they mean understanding as the same thing, right? The understanding of the, the the understanding of the language is the same thing, right? I gotta Google Please don't something. don't just uh, don't just disagree with, disagree with me. Right? You disagree with what? What are you saying? I'm saying if if a person. If um if people have two different accents here, they have different words that have the same understanding. Yeah, okay, people have two different words, but those two different words should have the yeah. same meaning. When you translate no, the point the of translating, the point of translating is to convey the same message that came from the original, is it not? Yeah, it has okay. the same meaning. So for example, let me give you an example, yeah. Um you could say you could say um what are you doing, yeah? Now, what are you on? Like, for example, in, in England, we can say to you, what are you on, yeah? Meaning, what are you doing, yeah? Yes. If you were to take a literal translation of this, yeah, what does that mean? What you, are you, you look at on, the or context. What are you on top of? Regardless, this, one, this is my point I'm trying to make to you, bro. The same Bro, I agree, words, yeah? same, same I agree with your point. I agree with your point. I disagree with your conclusion. If you agree with me, yes. what's, a, what, what's think, the conclusion that you Dude, with? think about it. I agree with your point, 100%. One yeah. million... 5,000% okay, I agree okay. with your point. When somebody, no, when, um, let me explain, let me explain, let me explain. When somebody from this language translates to this language and they might be using their dialect, they're going to translate it to the best of their ability to the way that they understood it and give it to their people. A hundred percent. I absolutely agree with you. But when that happens, it means what they translated by definition is no longer perfectly preserved. Exactly, you just proved my point. You just said what they translated, meaning the translation is incorrect, not the Quran. Okay. No, no, we just so, said, you just said okay. my yeah. question for you now again which one Quran? is the correct one, Hafs or Warsh? As you said, the Hafs and Warsh is in Arabic. God bless, man. Have a great day. 
Wait, what are you talking? Don't, don't get rid of me, because you know what I'm saying is... I swear the average IQ in Islam is two. Somebody come up and prove me wrong. Uh. I got cooked, you come up. You come up and cook me. If you think I got cooked, you hop up. Hop up. Let's see. If you don't have enough followers, jump in the Discord. I'll pull you up there. Jump into the waiting room. This person's not connecting. Uh... Oh, geez. What's Hello? up? How are you? I'm done. Good, man. Uh, just real quick, how old are you? I'm 34. All right, bro, go ahead. All right, uh, no, I just seen your uh, your live and why should I be Muslim? Uh, yeah, bro, I mean, you, you believe in one God, right? Mm, currently, yeah. Yeah, so, and you believe uh, that God sent prophets? There are prophets that have been sent, sure. And you believe in his books? Uh, I don't believe every prophet was sent with a book. I don't believe yeah, every prophet believe, had a do book. Believe, do you believe that God sent prophets with books? No. So you don't believe that God sent the Torah or the Injil or the, uh, the Psalms? I don't um, believe in the Injil. No, I don't believe that's a thing. So, so the what? Moses was sent, right? And Moses prophesied. And, what about and then God? Moses wrote, about wrote books. Sure, he was a prophet that wrote books. Right, there are so, some prophets that wrote books. There's some that didn't. So you don't believe Solomon had a book neither? Solomon? Uh, yeah. No, Solomon had a book. Solomon wrote. So you believe everything before Christianity, but nothing after Christianity is what you're saying? That's not what I said at all. I mean, that's the books you've mentioned. The, the, those books are before Christianity. What? Moses, the Torah is before Christianity. Those, Am I wrong? Those aren't all the only prophets. But those are, the, those are the books that came down. So we're talking books right now. So, for example, Nathan is a prophet and he never wrote a book. You're missing the point. We're talking about books, right? So I'm asking you, you said you believed in God sent prophets. And I'm asking you, do you believe he sent books? You said, yeah. No, I said, well, I books don't, don't believe. I, don't, I never said God sent books. Never once said that. So you don't believe he sent I, the Torah? No. So God, there, Moses wrote the Torah. And in the Torah... Moses quoted God on a lot of things, and Moses just wrote stories that he went through in a lot of things. Okay, and then uh, what else do you believe? What what other books do you believe? What do you, what do you mean by books I believe? Like, what do you mean? What books do you think God sent? I don't think God sent a single book. You don't You're not God listening to me. None of you guys ever listened to me. I have had so many freaking conversations no, with... God, no, stop talking. No, stop. God... Get out for a second. Uh, you can come back if you want to. I'll bring you back up. But I am so sick of having these conversations with Muslims where I say the same thing 30 times in a row and you guys do not listen to me. How many times in a row do I have to say it? And then you repeat the same thing. I said, I don't think God sent a book. Do you believe God sent a book? I don't think God sent a book. Do you believe so? like 16 times in a row? Now you can come back up. I've done my rant. Hop back up, bro. I forget your name was though. What was his name again? Where is he? Hop back up, bro. Zacco. Zacco, you can come back up. I just had to kick you so I could do my rant because you weren't going to let me do it. Uh... Okay, I'm moving on then. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm t Sorry? 21 years old. All right, bro, go ahead. Yeah, so I wanted to, to originally go back to the, the topic you were having with the other guy about um, Qatila and Qutila. The what? You know when you were talking about the differences in recitation style? The Hafs and the Wash, sure. Yeah, Hafs and Wash are both correct. Okay. 
so what's, what's the issue if they're both correct? It's not perfectly preserved. Uh, all right, so when we say perfectly preserved, what do you think we mean by perfectly preserved? Why don't you tell me what you mean? No, I want to understand what your understanding is first. So that, that I there's can been clarify. no changes, that there's no differences, that's the exact same thing, that if I ask you, you're going to recite the same Quran that if I ask that guy over there. But that's not true. Because if I ask one guy, he's going to recite me the Haas. If I ask another guy, he's going to recite me the Warsh. Right, but these are still all from God. But they're different stories. And it, even, if it is, different. even if it is from God, it's not perfectly preserved. Of course, it's again. If you have the seven, um, what's it called? The seven uh, recitation styles all revealed from God, and these are all perfectly preserved, right? You then so God me that, gave, okay. so God sent seven different stories down of the same thing. So, for example, in two one forty five, it says they shall take, and the other one says they have t uh, they were taken. Yes. So he sent down, he sent down two, so, so, so God, so you're saying God has, uh, some sort of schizophrenia. How, how is it schizophrenic to because say this? Why this doesn't he just give one story, right? Why would he say to one people, they fought side by side and say to another people, they were killed side by side. Do you realize how stupid that sounds? Okay. Now let me just clarify this, the quote unquote stupid part now, right? The reason to why that was is because at the time of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? The people that were there were in different tribes. You had the Quraysh tribe, you had um, uh, Bani Hashim, you had many tribes there, right? All these tribes had a, they spoke Arabic, but there was a different dialect, right? So in order to have it trans uh, uh, um, given to the people, right? It was revealed in seven different ways to then make it easier for people who had a different recitation style. Okay, so, again, okay, so let me just get this clear. So God comes up. Billy sitting here, he's got one dialect. Bob sitting here, he's got another dialect. These two different guys here, they got different dialects, right? They, they speak differently. So God comes up, he says, I know you guys speak differently. So I'm going to tell you that these people fought each other. But I'm going to tell you they were killed. Because I know you guys speak differently. But don't worry about which one's true, guys. Because I, I know you guys speak differently. So you say, I'll tell you they were killed. I'll tell you they fought. Is that what you're saying? They're both the same thing when you read it in context. I don't know why you're telling me like it's it's not the same thing. It is. Well, what's the context? Show me the context. All right. Let me get the verse. What? Uh, tell me the verse is. Tell me what the Three one forty six. Yeah, it's probably two seconds. I'm assuming the one that's going to come up first is the half one three. Surat al-Imran, verse 3, did you say verse 46, right? 3, 1, 4, 6. 1, 4, 6, my apologies. 1, 4, 6. Um, okay, uh, okay, okay, so then that one is, what's the, let me get the one in Warsh now. Hold on, I just want to see if I can find the right verse now. Surat Al-Imran 3, 1, 4, 6, uh, Do you have the, the one in Warsh uh, on your screen at the minute or? Uh, the one I'm looking at, how many devotees fought along with their prophets and never uh, faltered despite uh, losses they suffered in the cause of Allah, nor did they weaken or give in. Allah loves those who persevere. Yeah, so so that was the, that's the Hafs one. I need, uh, do you have the Warsh one next to you or? Because I'm trying to find the Warsh one. All I have for the Warsh is what it says in Arabic, and I can't read Arabic, and it just gives the translation through that. Yeah, don't worry. So the first thing, just to clarify, uh, is Arabic has a trilateral root system, right? I'm, I'm assuming you're aware of this if you're quite intellectually, uh, you know, 
motivated to learn about Islam as it's demonstrated right now. So if that is the case, a trilateral root system would be that the idea that you have the qatila, for example, which means thought. The trilateral root system is qaf, the ta, and the lam at the end. All these have different words within it, depending on how the vowelings is placed, right? So qatila and qutila, same trilateral root system, right? It just happened to be in the different dialect it was presented to, where it's fought or killed. When you read the same context or you read that verse, it's the same thing and it's talking about the same thing. Because yes, there were prophets that were killed during the uh, that during make, that. That doesn't make prophets sense. That doesn't make sense because it says, if, they, if we're reading in the context, if it says killed, how many devotees were killed along with the prophets and never faltered despite whatever? They suffered in this cause of Allah, nor they weaken or given in. Allah loves those who persevere. They didn't persevere. Well, I guess, yeah, they could persevere. So they fought or they were killed. But again, e either way, like I'm not saying it's a contradiction. Sure, maybe they fought. Maybe they were killed. It's not perfectly preserved. Yeah, what we mean by perfectly preserved is the idea that the that all of the seven, uh, um, what's it called, um, dialects that were revealed in the Qur'an all came from Allah and haven't been changed, right? In a sense that um, the the context of things are still in place. So God sent seven. down seven Qur'ans? He, didn't, he sent one Qur'an with different recitation styles, it's not seven different Qur'ans. But those are different stories. It's not a different story. If I say he fought, uh, uh, let me just bring it up. Again, I'm not now. saying it's a contradiction, I'm saying it's a different story. It's, when you say it's a different story, then you're th then there's two stories, right? And and uh, by by indirectly, what you're trying to say is there's a contradiction. Whether you want to say it or no, not, not, so a contradiction would, like, contradiction would say one said they fought, the other one said they lived. That's a contradiction. What I'm saying is it's giving a different story. When it says they fought side by side and they persevered, no matter what happens, the imagery that comes into my head are these soldiers that are fighting, that are enduring battle, and they're surviving. And because they endured through Allah, they're they're, they're no, prospering. No, 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 no. If it says it's they killed. That, okay. Hold on, stop talking for the love of God. Oh, if it says no, they please. killed. Right. So if, if we take it right, three, one, forty six, imagine how many devotees have fought along the prophets and never faltered despite whatever. Right. So no, no matter what, whatever, they never faulted. They suffered for the cause of Allah, nor did they weaken or give in. Allah loves those who preserve. Right. They kept going and they kept fighting. How many devotees were killed along with their prophets and never faltered despite whatever losses they suffered cause of Allah, nor did they weaken or give in. Allah those love those who persevere. Those aren't contradictions. I can admit that they fought and maybe they were killed. They don't contradict each other, but they are two different stories, which means it's not perfectly preserved. I've just told you what we meant by perfectly preserved, right? If, again, in order for it to not be perfectly preserved, right, would be the idea that if you can find somewhere in, in the Islamic history, someone has changed the verse uh, uh, manually, then they you may have... They did. We proved that. You guys proved that because you admit that they burnt them. That didn't mean they changed them. Why did they burn oh, them on. then? L listen, listen to what I've said. Why did here, they burn right? them then? I can answer that question, but allow me just because if we're going to have a conversation, you have to listen to what I said cl clearly. Only if Burning you answer the actual question. Why did they burn them? I will. I will. But I asked you to answer the, the my question and you went and I didn't answer my question. Right? Because remember what you said no, earlier. With why the other did guy? they burn them? I will answer that question. Just answer right? it or leave. Why did they burn them? Okay. The reason why they burnt them was that to put the Quran in the standard uh, uh, to a standard uh, dialect because when it started to grow right there were people that were new uh, new uh, that converted to the religion that let's say in Palestine or in Egypt who weren't at the time of the prophet rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and therefore they standardized it into the uh, the dialect that the uh, uh, of the the Quraishi dialect which is the the dialect of Muhammad's uh, tribe so, they, so with that being said, it's, whoa, it's not whoa, changed whoa, whoa. Wait, been, it's not changed that's wild bro you guys burnt uh, Allah's word? How? That's you just, you just said today. Allah gave seven different dialects for the tribes and then you said they burnt them because they only wanted to use one dialect. What's wrong with that? So you burnt Allah's word? It was done that for a standardized, uh, to standardize it, yes, but we still have it today, hence why you've still got seven different recitations. But you, you burnt Allah's word, bro. You literally just meant you admitted that you burnt the Quran that yeah, was given okay, by God. Okay, okay. Islamically speaking, whether you want to, like, maybe in the Christian belief you have something different, right? In the Islamic belief, if you want to get, like, let's say, like, I don't see your point here. Like, okay. You burnt, so could, am I allowed to burn? Would you say as a Muslim you can burn the Quran? No, because you're doing it in an act of disrespect. So why can you burn a dialect of the Quran? It was done with a purpose. What was the purpose? And if, 
to stand up. I've mentioned the purpose. Are you listening or you're not listening? Because you had to go at the other Muslim guy for not listening to you. So, you so the, purpose, you know, the purpose was to standardize the dialect. I am listening to you. But the problem is, is that the problem is that you said that God sent the dialects down for the people. So why did you burn them? Again, what did I say in the beginning? It was seven recitation styles. So you can still recite the Quran, right? With the seven different recitation styles. However, it was standardized into the uh, um, the, the Qureshi dialect. You can still recite it. Why the, did you, did God tell you to burn them? Did God tell us to uh, burn them? Uh, Allah, I'm directly, I'm uh, not that I'm aware of. So then why did you burn God's word without his permission? Would, uh, why? Allah, I mean, that's, this is what they decided to do to, because, to, to better the ummah. But God, sense, but but God never sense, told you that sense. you guys could burn the dialect. He gave you seven dialects. This is your argument. He gave seven dialects so that more people would understand the Quran and come to it. And then you guys decided to burn some dialects so you could have a standardized one. Yeah. But he never told you that you could do that. Yes. Yeah, so let me provide you an example now, right? The same example could be provided how something started off a certain way, right? And even wait, it, 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 the argument is still presenting, right? It still doesn't make a difference because we still have the seven recitations still reciting in this day and age. So whether they burnt it to standardize it, uh, uh, standardize it in the Quraysh dialect, it is still in the seven Ahruf anyway, or the seven recitation styles anyway. To so, this day, so, so for, you're asking. So these are a lot of. So these are a lot of claims. Are you gonna let me finish my point? Are you gonna let me finish my point? No, these are a lot of claims. Okay, so these are a lot of claims. Not, not these a are a lot of claims. These are a lot of claims. Can you prove any of them? Prove what? What point you want to prove? I'll bring Can you up. prove God sent seven dialects? Can you prove that what you burnt was dialects and not just copies that people messed around with? Yes. Bear me two seconds. Uh, what was it again? I bring the hadith. Um, bear me one second. Let's try to find the the hadith. Okay, so uh, is, is it going to give me the specific? Okay, so it says here in. Well, it's in Bukhari and Muslim. It's not telling me which one specifically. It says Ibn Abbas reported God's messenger and saying, Gabriel taught me to recite in one mood. And when I replied to him and kept asking him to give me more, he did so till he reached so that's seven. That's not mood. a proof. That's not an evidence. It is. Hold on, hold on. I'm, are you going to allow me to explain the evidence or you're not going to let me? So you're just quoting Ibn Abbas. Ib, Ib, how do you think hadiths are written? How? The, the Ibn Abbas, the cousin, uh, the nephew of the prophet, uh, the cousin of the prophet, would witness what the messenger uh, said or told them, and then uh, write it down or narrate it to another person. Are you going to allow me to now make my point? Because you're telling me it's not evidence. I'm telling you this is what it is. How, how is, is that saying. evidence? How is that? Yeah, allow me to elaborate. This is the beauty. You asked me a question. Allow okay, me to so elaborate. Okay, so what's what's the hadith so we can read it together? It says here, uh, it says Bukhari and Muslim, but the, the reference here is uh, Mishkat al Masab. Sorry, sorry, just, the, just the, the numbers, please. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know the numbers in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, but the, the reference in this book is called Mishkat al Masab 2214, so, book 8, Hadith 104. Sorry, what was it again? Mishkat al Masabi? Mishkat al Masab. So okay. M A S A. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I well, what's 2214. Chapter book two. Book no, two. no. The, the the number is two two one four. Book eight, hadith one o four. Book eight. One o four. One o four. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to continue reading it now. No, Even not, not yet. We're going to find it. We're going to read it together. So let me find it. Brother, you asked for the evidence. I tried to give book you. Book eight, one o four. Okay, go ahead. I'm here now. Okay. Ibn Abbas reported God's messenger as saying, Gabriel taught me to recite in one mode. And when I replied to him and kept asking him to give me more, he did so till he reached seven modes. So the seven recitation styles, it says here. Now, now, what's your problem with this now? I provided you the evidence. That's that's not an evidence. That's just Ibn Hathir saying that he received seven messages from God. No, it's Ibn Abbas saying that the messenger. Okay, so when was this written? What you mean was written? It is a witness, Yani. What do you want me to do? So, so, 
So <laughs> when my, was it written, bro? So Mishkat Al Masibi, Masibi, or whatever his name is, he was a per, he knew Muhammad personally. Oh, my, the book itself, right? Is not the hadith itself. The, the book is a hadith collection. The hadith so, itself. So it how do I a, know? Allow me to finish the point now, right? You keep interrupting when I get to the juicy point. Because allow you're yammering, you're point. yapping. So I'm again, not yapping. If you don't understand when was issues, this written? Me... When was this written? The book. I don't know when the book was itself. The hadith was at the time of the Rasulullah. Okay, so let's see when the book was written. Why does that matter? Well, because if it's written 600 years after when it happened, then I can't trust it. The hadith itself is a, it exists at the time of the Prophet. It's in Bukhari and Muslim. The book, again, again, the book itself. If you want to, you can find it in Bukhari and Muslim, and that'd be even closer to, to that if it's your case. So how do, the, I know, how do I know the hadith came from when Muhammad was alive? Because you have a chain of narration. Something that the Bible doesn't have, which you still believe in. We so do have a chain of narration. Again, we have apostolic succession. Say again? We have apostolic succession. We have a chain of narration. For each of the Gospels? For literally everything in the Bible. Can you provide me them, or is that not going to be happening? Yeah, you can You can look them up. Just go to newadvent.com and look up the apostolic succession, and it'll show you uh, every single pope going back to Jesus. And then if you can go to any past, or sorry, any priest in a Catholic church or any priest in an Orthodox church, and they will tell you every priest that has laid hands onto them going all the way back to Jesus. Every single one of them. Not one of them can't do it. Everyone will be able to do it. Right, so new what? What was it? What was the website? New Ad? New Advent. Uh, new Advent. All right, nice. Oh, okay. I'm on the... do it now, all right? All right. I'm on the website now. No, this is just a further what's it called. This is just for like for further knowledge in the future, so I can re do this in my spare time. What was it? Uh, so I'm on it. It says Papal Doctor Pope has no particular illnesses, and is doing well, consistent uh, with his right. age. Hold on, it might not be on New Advent. One second. You can go to catholichierarchy.org. Catholic hierarchy.org. I'll bring a second. Catholic. Is that uh, Catholic hierarchy? Hierarchy.org. I'm not a robot. Rock. Okay, well, are you sure it's a website or am I going to about to get flipping viruses on my PC? You might get viruses. It's semi security alert. You visited an illegal infected website, so I don't think that's the right one. Catholic hierarchy.org. Okay, so let me try that again. Catholic. You said dash, right? Yeah. Hierarchy.org. Okay, yes, I think I found it now. Okay, so where do I go from here? That's what I'm looking. And we have biographies on all these people as well, yeah? Uh... This website sucks. Hold on, let me find something better. No worries. There it is. So, so yeah, we have the list here at arcaneknowledge.org forward slash Catholic forward slash Popes dot htm dot uh, number sign list. It starts first St. Peter, two St. Linus, uh, three St. Anglicus, 
St. Clement, St. Everless, St. Alexander, St. Sixtus, St. Telephorus, St. Uh, Hyingus, St. Pius, St. Ancient, St. Sorter, St. Alethoreus, St. Victor, St. Zephyrinus, St. Callistus, and this just keeps going all the way until the Pope that they have today. St. Peter, been... Peter is an apostle of Jesus. So you said arcane, is that spelled A-R-C-A-N-E? Arcane knowledge.org forward slash catholic forward slash popes dot htm pound symbol l i s t t okay knowledge dot okay knowledge dot we are i don't think i've found it with okay knowledge and wisdom what's okay knowledge slash what was it for dying dancing jesus arcaneknowledge.org forward slash catholic forward slash popes dot htm forward slash pope popes s pope sorry popes that dot htm popes dot htn m. so okay m sorry so arcaneknowledge.org/catholic/popes.htm. So people tell me to debate a scholar. I don't tell them they can't come up. Every one of them can come up. It's not like I can call them and they're going to have me over at their house, right? All right the list of popes. Succession of popes. 2007. Daniel J. Castellano. Okay, where's the list? Wait. Okay, just give me the list of popes. Is it going to tell me if they've confirmed what was in the scripture or what? Like, I, I don't... That's not what you... Hold on, hold on. If you understood the context, we brought up the hadith. And you asked me, how do you know if this hadith is confirmed or not? And I told you because of a chain in... I can't do it anymore, man. You just wanted the list of apis of the freaking popes. There's the popes. If you want to know what they confirmed in the scripture, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. Everybody's saying I'm running. Go to Amazon. In Amazon.com, you can buy every single writing that every single one of the church fathers ever wrote, including all the popes. And you can tell me if they confirm what's in the scripture. Go ahead. Go ahead. Find me a church father that disagrees with what's in the church, in the scripture. There's more pages on that than the Bible itself. You can literally quote the entire New Testament from just church father writings. The entire New Testament. Yeah, actually you can. You can requote the entire New Testament from church father quotes. Bro, I don't know if I can do any more of this. I might just call it a night. Thanks, James. Bro, y'all saying I'm running? I've been doing these debates for years. It's y'all in the comments there, cowards. Come up. Come up. Come up. Let's go. I don't have enough followers. Cool. I have an answer for you. Not enough followers? Join the Discord. Jump into the waiting room. Let's go. Mm -hmm. When's the soul stash coming back? It's not, bro. Kick the guest for proving his point. Did not prove his point. What he did is the Muslim shuffle. He asked the question, I showed him the answer, and then he shuffled it. It's the Muslim shuffle. And again, I answered that question after I kicked him. I kicked him because I was tired of his stupidity. But I still answered the question. Again, he's asked, what was this question he asked, everyone? 
If I'm running, what was this question he asked specifically? He said, well, it doesn't say if they confirm the scriptures or not. Then what did I say? I gave the answer. You can go to Amazon. Talk. Every one of you guys who say I'm running, I want you to do this. If you really think I'm running, you really believe that and you really want to prove this, go buy the, every single t on Amazon. Guess what? It's $2. It's $2. You have no excuse. You can buy every single church father writing that has ever been written, including all the popes that has ever written anything. It's all there for $2. Every one of them. And then tell me, do any one of them disagree with the scriptures? Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's see what Abraham does. Maybe he can, like, chill me out. Sup? Yo, bro, I wanted to point out that it's kind of a redundant question because, like, in order to even be ordained as a pope, you would have to accept the scriptures. I mean, imagine... Imagine this guy like quotes you with a shake and is like, well, does this shake accept the Quran? Like, is, how can you be a shake and not accept the Quran? Like, you know what I'm saying? You got a point. Are you driving? Of course not. It's irresponsible. Love you, Abraham. Come back up when you're not driving. <sighs> You go preach the gospel. <laughs> He's running at Mach 10 speeds. <sighs> Should I bring up another Muslim and see if they have phenomenal arguments? See how well they cook me? Watch how fast I can run? Let's go. And praise be Allah. What's up? Hi. Hi. Uh, How old are you? Yeah. 35. Why are you all 35? What year were you born? 1988. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so you should be Muslim because Muslims is unstoppable. And it's the fastest growing. Oh, you're not 35. God bless. No, no, wait, wait. Yo. Are you the same guy? Am I who? No. <laughs> Hi, how are you? And uh, real quick, how old are you? No, I'm 28. All right, go ahead, bro. Yeah, man. So why should you be a Muslim? Yeah. Who Who's the suffering servant in Isaiah 42? Who's the suffering servant? Is Jesus. Oh, okay. Well, Jesus was a Muslim according to Isaiah 42. Oh, yeah, how? Isaiah 42, 19 calls him Meshelem, which okay. your scholars say means Muslim. Oh, does it? Which yeah. scholar? Uh, Ellicott, his commentary. Who? Uh, pulpit. Ellicott. Who? Ellicott. Ellicott? You know who that is? Okay, so yeah, Ellicott commentary, go, pulpit, Matthew Henry. So let's I mean, go. Let's let's Oxford. go. Let's go read it. Let's go read it. So Isaiah what? Forty-two nineteen. Forty-two nineteen. Okay. I have it right here as well. Okay. Forty-two nineteen says, uh, "Who is blind but my servant, or deaf like the messenger I am sending? Who is blind like my covenant partner, or blind like the servant of the Lord?" Okay, so let's go mm -hmm. to the commentaries. Which commentaries? I'm in Ellicott right now. Ellicott. Et, well, is, I think it's Ellicott. I don't know. Maybe you spell it better. E-L-L-I-C-O-T-T. Not a commentary I'm seeing here. What was the other you one? My, you want me to turn my camera on? No. What was the other one? Ellicott. Oh, the other one's uh, you got pulpit. Okay, I got you pulpit got... here. So let's read pulpit. Announcement of the servant and the Lord and the work which will all perform, though they are comparatively few to deny that. In the place, at any rate, the servant of the Lord is the Messiah. So the Targum on the passages, or so Abernal, so among the moderns of Ohel, Delich, or Mr. Chania, the Porritcher, 
has so strong an individual and such a marked person features that it cannot possibly be a mere personified collective and goes infinitely beyond anything of which man has ever capable of that can only refute Christ. It be added that St. Matthew, oh, it's crazy, St. Matthew, distinctively applies the passage to our Lord. Verse Wait, you're in 42.19? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm on pulpit. It doesn't say any of that. Oh, no, that was one for some reason. Okay, let's go back. Pulpit. Uh, who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger, God's original servant, messenger to all nations, whose people Israel. It was only thought that the default that he needed to send another truer messenger. He now asks, having regard to their opportunities, who is so blind and deaf as they are, the object of question is to wake uh, to wake opportunities who is blind deaf as they are the object is to wake feelings or shame in the hearts who is not shameless among the israelites that i sent rather whom i will send israelites mediatorial office was not yet over there was still over 500 years to god's message to the nations as he was perfect rather is that he see, received the reward from me the word uses connection boom. etymology with what's that what'd boom. you say boom keep reading me? what was the berm oh yeah the it's, word it's used right connected etymology with the Arabic Muslim, but does not Boom. appear. But does not. Where does it say it's he's a Muslim? It it says it literally just says that the word mashallam is its etymology is is to the word Muslim. And if you read Ellicott, he says that there's some link of but causation. I sw I swear to God, you guys have the average IQ of one. Seriously, really? let's read it again together as a let's let's read together class let's all slow down and read Wait, the whole thing why let's did not you, why let's did not you, why all did you just go to pulpit, though? let's not all just focus on one word let's read it as a class did the, you mean me the That's word crazy. uses let's read it together the word uses is connected etymology with the arabic muslim etymology you gotta say the word right brother I'm sorry, I, I have a different right dialect. Now. God gave me a different dialect. My bad. Oh, okay. With the Arabic Muslim or Muslim, but it does not appear to have had any sense of surrender or submission in the Hebrew, Isaiah 42, 19. Right. Yeah, I, and I, I can agree with you, but in so Ellicott, where, it says where, that it has where, causation. Where does it? But, who but the you hell skipped is Ellicott? Ellicott. I don't have Ellicott he's, he, here. He, he's your scholar. You, I said, do you want me to turn on my camera? You said no for some reason. Because all I'm going to see on your camera is little blip of lines. So, who the hell okay, is Okay, can I read it? Okay, let me read it. Let me read, read the, his, whole thing. From the, the whole thing. The whole thing. Not just one Perfect. verse, the whole thing. Okay, deaf as my messenger. The work of the messenger of God has been the ideal of Isaiah, and it was the servant in whom the ideal was realized. But how could a blind and deaf messenger like the actual Israel do this work effectively? As he that is perfect, strictly speaking, the devoted or surrendered one. The Hebrew Meshelem is interesting as connected with the modern Muslim and Islam. The man resigned to the will of God. The frequent use of this or a cognate form as a proper name after the exile. And then it quotes 1 Chronicles 9, Ezra 8, 6, Ezra 10. May, on either assumption as to the day of 2 Isaiah, be connected with, with it by some link of causation. Other meanings given to it have been perfect, as in the authorized version, confident, recompensed, and... So what does the word Muslim mean? Muslim means one who submits their will to God, just as Mashallah means. Okay, so can somebody be a Muslim without following Islam? Well, this servant in Isaiah 42 is... is Would you freaking answer the question? Can one of you guys answer a question? Can someone we're, we're, be don't Muslim... Panic, just relax. Can someone yeah. be Muslim without following Islam? Okay, I, I'm not sure if you get what definitions are. Can I'll, I'll go someone slow. be Muslim it, it, without Islam, following Islam? Is Islam. One who sur okay, Islam is one who surrenders their will to God, which the servant in Isaiah 42 did. So you can be Muslim, you can submit your will to God by surrendering your will. So in the can time of Jesus, someone be Muslim? So, okay, so you have a deaf without theory. following Islam. Okay, so you're a little deaf. Okay, so I'll, I'll go slower this time. So yes, you can be a Muslim. Whilst following Islam, but you have to follow the prophet of your time. Can and the one someone God with no be partners. Muslim without following oh. Islam? Oh, guys, here's the running. Here's the running. I'm not running. You're not answering you the are. question. You're actually running. Oh. You're refusing to answer the question. I answered it four times. Can someone? Is this a yes or can no? Can someone worship yeah. the one true God? Yes. And not be Muslim. Okay. Or Islam. Muslim sorry, means not in Muslim. Islam. 
Okay, Islam is the one who surrenders his will to God. That's the definition of Islam. You're making the definition of Islam being what? So, Islam. Mm, okay. What is Islam? What, what do I have to be okay. to be Islamic? Perfect. In Islam, Islam, the definition is one who surrenders their will to God. Which God? So how do you, how do you, sur perfect, I'll, I'll explain. The one who surrenders okay. their will to God, he has two criteria. He follows one God without associating partners, and he follows the prophet that came at their time to relay the message. So who's the prophet in our time? Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Who was the prophet at Jesus' time? Jesus. Moses' time? Moses. David's so time? Because, David. Because they use the word Muslim, which means to follow the one true God, and you guys have appropriated the word Muslim to be your entire religion, then therefore that's saying that they are all Muslim? Well, no, your scholars say that the servant in Isaiah 42 is Muslim. He's Mashalim. What, what are problem. they saying when they say Muslim? What do they mean? Do they mean that they are followers of Islam? No, they means that this servant So they're not followers Mashallah. of Islam. Okay, because your definition of Islam Are they are are they not followers of Islam for yes, flying free? Yes. They're, they're yes, followers Jesus of Islam. Is a follower, so yes, Jesus so is a follower in of Isaiah 42:19, they follow the the five pillars of Islam. They bow and pray five times a day. They do yeah. all those types of Math, things. Matthew 26:39. Yep. No, no, Matthew 26:39 I mean, came like 600 years after this. Okay, Genesis 17:3, Abraham bowed down and five times 20, a day. Verse 6, Moses and Aaron. Yeah, why not? Five times a day. Prove that it's five Is times Sharia a day. Might, his Sharia might have been different, but he prayed with his face on the ground. Why don't you, if you're a follower okay. of Jesus? If you want to go face on the ground, what did Jesus call God when he put his face on the ground? Uh, Allah. No, he didn't. What did Jesus yeah, call did. God when he put his face on the ground? Okay, so let's go what to was John that verse? What, no, what was that I'm verse? Matthew what? What was the verse? Matthew what? Yeah, Matthew 26, 39. Okay, or let's you can go, go to Luke it. 6, 12. Luke 6, 12 is a good one Matthew too. 26 what? 39. Okay, I give free tours it. around the Bible, no problem. All right. Uh, We're going to get to Father, and I'm going to I'm gonna embarrass you with that, too, so go ahead. Did he call him Father? Ah, did he? Did he? Okay, well, I'll explain to you how he's not a father. So, is Father a dependent term or independent term? Did you, he call a... him Father? No. Okay, then why does it say Father? Perfect. Great question. So the answer to that is very simple. Father is a dependent term. Jesus and me and you would agree God is independent. Therefore, father would not be an appropriate term for that. Did so he at call that him time, at, in Isaiah 56, 5, don't, don't panic. In Isaiah 56, 5, it says that Holy they God. will no longer be sons and daughters. They will be given an everlasting name that will last forever. What's that everlasting name? Did he call him father? I'm, I'm telling you, not in the sense no, that you're, you're, you're looking quote at it. mining. So what's the no, verse no. again? Matthew 26 what? Brother, how many times do you want Matthew to Matthew 26 what? What was it again? 30, 39. Clean your ears 39. out. Come on. Okay. And he went a little beyond them and his face uh, prayed saying, My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet as I will, but as you will. So what did he say oh, here? Let's go look at the My Hebrew. will, but your will? Oh. What did he say here? Matthew 26, 39. What did he say? Father. He, he went down a little further and asked him to take the crucifixion away Dude, from him. Which what God did he did. call him father? Sure, in that verse, but I just told so you. So Jesus, means. why don't you call God Father? Perfect, great question. So the reason why we wouldn't call God Father, nor did any of the well, other. Well, Jesus ones, called him Father, so why don't you call him Father? Okay, okay, perfect. Let me answer. So the reason we wouldn't call God a Father is because Father is a dependent term, meaning to be a father, you need a son or a daughter. God is independent. He's independent of anything, free of anything. Everything needs him. He needs absolutely. Why are nothing. you avoiding the question? Can we agree to that? No, you're avoiding the question. Can we agree to that? Jesus called him father. If you're okay. saying that we almost prostrate because Jesus prostrated in this verse that you just quoted. I'll give you, you three use, others. Use this, no, you use this verse. Okay, Jesus, no Jesus prostrated in this verse, the one that you mm -hmm. quoted. So therefore, it's an authentic verse. Yes? Well, no, it's, it's in the corrupt book. Even, well, even then why would you quote this? Say, if this is, if okay. this is corrupted, why would you quote it? Perfect. Well, because you're a Christian, would you like to come to the Quran? And I can oh. teach you that Jesus was a servant of Allah, chapter 19, verse 30. So how do you know, if it's a corrupt book, how do you know Isaiah 42 is correct mm. when it says Muslim? Perfect. How do you know that Jesus prostrated? How do you know Moses prostrated? How do you know any of that's true? Per perfect. Great question. So we have an authentic hadith where uh, a Jewish person quoted Isaiah 42 and said that his reading of Isaiah 42 at the time of the prophet said Ahmed. In Isaiah 42 1 so we know Isaiah 42 show me the hadith in... sure I'll pull it up for you let's get it mm -hmm. 
And then while I'm pulling that up, the reason we know why Jesus prostrated is because of chapter 3, verse 84. But the Bible is corrupt. Verse 1, 11 of the Quran. No, no, this is of the Quran, my friend. The I know, but I, how, why do I believe the Quran? Why should I believe it in the first place? Why? Because it's uh, a book that is the word, the literal words of God. How do you know the it same, came from God? Um, one second. Pulling that. Wait, say it again. Sorry. How do you know it came from God? Uh, we know it came from God for several reasons. Uh, number one, we know that we have a chain leading back from God to the angel Gabriel, to the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to the scribes. We have uh, scientific miracles that science is now catching up with to the Quran. You Show want me one, one scientific miracle in the Quran. Perfect. The earth is expanding. They the just found that expanding? out years ago. Yeah, they just found that out years ago, dude. Okay, now, show, it, they show just, it to me in the Quran. That the earth is, so what do you want first, the hadith or that? The hadith, I guess. Okay, give me a sec. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay. Give me a second, my bad. <laughs> Give me one sec, sorry. Bro, what's the hadith? My bad, I'm finding it right now. What, what was the other one in the Quran while I find this one? You were asking for the Quran something? Or you, I mean, it's going to take... I'm searching it right now. It's going to take me a couple more minutes. Give me a sec. Man, I had it on hand before. Uh... Raise voice. Mark it.
Okay, perfect. Got it. Give me a sec. Let me type in, get the number. Sorry, it took a while. There we go. Okay, it's in Sahih Bukhari 2125. There we go. I can read it for you too if you want. I offered the as the Asar prayer with the Prophet, and after finishing the prayer, the Talsum, he got up quickly and went to some of his wives and then came out. He noticed the No, signs. no, no. Twenty one twenty five. Sahih al Bukhari. That's what I'm reading. Narrated I met Abdullah bin Amar bin Al I'm reading Sahih al Bukhari twenty one twenty five. Sahih al Bukhari. The first words are I met Abdullah bin Amar bin. This is and asked him, tell me about the description. Tell you. Book 21, Hadith 25. No, no, no. It's not. Sahih al Bukhari 2125. It's one number. Which book? Are you on Sun? Sahih al Bukhari. Just type it on Google. Sahih al Bukhari 2125. Sahih al Bukhari. Right? 2125. Is, is like 2125. Right? No, there he doesn't write them. He books. compiles. There's several he books. Compiles them. There are several books by Sahih al Bukhari. Which book is it? Okay. You Have, have you been on Sunnah.com before? I'm, I'm literally on Sunnah.com right now. Okay. Right. Do you have this? Sahih al Bukhari 2125? Uh, there's Which book? Which book is it? What do you mean, which book? It's Sahih al Bukhari. Is it revelation? Is it belief? Is it knowledge? Is it ablations? Is it bathing? Is it menstrual periods? Is it rubbing hands? Is it prayers? Is it times of prayers? The, is it the, the, prayers? Is the it thing is, is the fear sales prayer? and trade. Is it the, the sales? Thank you, man. Sa Jesus. Sales and trade. Okay. Sales and trade. Um, and then it's 50, chapter The Dislike of Raising Voice in the Market. Sorry? The the it's thirty four sales and trade and then under it is fifty chapter the dislike of raising voice in the marketplace. Uh, so which hadith? Tw Sahih al Bukhari twenty one twenty five. Twenty one twenty five. Okay. I met Al Du Abim Amir bin Al As and asked him. Am I reading the right one? There you go. Tell me yep. about the description of Allah's messenger, which is mentioned in Torah. He replied, yes, by Allah. He described the Torah with some of the qualities attributed. He is described. He is described in the Torah with some of the qualities attributed to him in the Quran as follows. Why, oh, why Prophet, we have sent you as a... Well, I'm hmm? going gonna, gonna to finish reading now. Okay? Right. But you, you should read it right. And not I am reading it right. I'm it. quoting it directly off of this. I'm not taking anything but out. But you said I'm by Allah, anything. he's described. But it says he That's is described what it says. in the Torah. He replied, okay. yes, by Allah, he is described in Torah. That's literally what I said. All right, go ahead. He replied, yes, by Allah, he is described in Torah with some of the qualities attributed to him in the Quran as follows. O Prophet, we have sent you a witness. Do you want me to read the part with the captions? The caps? We have sent you as a witness for Allah's true religion. So, yes, you want me to read the part with the caps. Okay. And a okay. giver of glad tidings to the faithful believers, and the warner to the unbelievers, and the guardian of the illiterates. You are my slave and my messenger, i.e. apostles. I have named you Al, I can't say that, who depends upon Allah. You neither discourteous, harsh, nor noisemaker in the markets, and you do not do evil to those who do evil to you, but you deal with them with forgiveness and kindness. Allah will not let him, the prophet, die until he makes straight the cooked people by him with them saying, none has the right to be worshipped by Allah with which we will be open blind eyes and deaf ears and, envol and enveloped e hearts. Okay, so That's what quoting is Isaiah 42. If cool, you go to cool. Isaiah 42 yes, in your oh, book, I you actually, I actually agree with you. It's quoting Isaiah 42. I'm not going to contend Perfect. that. It's a direct quote. Perfect. Why is that relevant? Perfect. So hold on. Now we have a Jew, which is Abdullah bin Amar, saying that well, at no, his time, the no. Torah he had hold in on. his hand. Hold on. We have yeah. Sahih al-Bakari. No, no, Sahih al-Bukhari is just someone who compiled the hadith together. Did, did, he who wrote this down? Okay, it's narrated by Atta bin Yasser. So he's the one who narrated it. And he's now telling us about the person he met, who's Abdullah bin Amr. He's an ex-Jew. He's a Jew that met the Prophet at his time that converted to Islam so upon meeting the Prophet in this. Medina. 
So he wrote this. Over he didn't write it. He narrated it. He narrated, narrated it there over go. a thousand years after Isaiah. No. Oh, after Isaiah? Sure. Okay, so then why is this relevant? No, not a thousand years after Isaiah. Isaiah, I, your Old Testament was put together 300 years before Jesus. Not the whole that's thing. That's the Dead Sea the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah. Book it, no, the Dead Sea, that's not when, what? Dead Sea Scrolls, Bro, you, a thousand you were, you were years really before actually Moses. impressing me with your knowledge right until that point. The Dead Sea Scrolls is not when the Old Testament was written. You know that, right? That's your earliest manuscript. That's when we found our earliest manuscripts. That's not the dating of okay. the writings. Wait, so are you telling me you think Moses wrote your Old Testament that you have right now? Except Deuteronomy 34. No, Isaiah Moses was written somehow. by Isaiah. Was it? That's Can you prove I that? Do you, I know. Do you, I can't do you prove not that. know That's the a... Do you not know the three sections of Isaiah, the primary, Deutero, yes, yes, and third? I, yes, I do. Okay. Now. Okay. So when? So when were those? I'm trying written? to answer your damn question, dude. Right, go no, ahead, go I go cannot that. prove it come from Isaiah. I take that on faith. I don't actually oh. know who wrote Isaiah. Got it. That's. I'm glad you admitted that. I appreciate that. Well, that's the thing about you guys. You don't actually listen when people talk. Well, we'd appreciate that. Honestly, that's what we try to tell you guys, though. We, now, we know who wrote our now, stuff, though. Now, when is Isaiah dated? Okay, so you have your you have three sections of it. You have Isaiah one to forty, then you have Isaiah forty to fifty-five, and then you have fifty-five onwards. They're they're written in three different stages. Most say that the first are written by Isaiah, then you have the second, which are written by some of his disciples, and then the third written by other disciples. That's what scholarship says. Yes. Okay. So, you know, we can speculate times and all that, but I know your earliest manuscripts is Dead Sea Scrolls, which is over a thousand so years after Moses. Manuscripts is not dating, right? Those are two different things. So when's it dated? I wouldn't, I don't know about those exact numbers. So it says here, uh, around the earliest idea to it is around 740 BC. So this would be 740 years before Christ. And then 600 years after Christ is when Muhammad came. And then God knows how long after these hadiths came. So it's over a sure. thousand years. Sure. So, so how, why is this beneficial? So this proves that at the time of the prophet, the Torah that the Jews had in their hands spoke of Ahmed to come, which how is Muhammad. How does that prove that? And it, it, spoke proves, of, it proves that a thousand years later, some guy thought it did. No, no. This is a Jew who read it in his, in his book. So what? There's lots this of is Jews the book that read. disagreed with him. No, no, but he read it in his book. He, he's not, there, there's nothing to disagree about. He, this is what he saw in there his book. There is a Jew, and I'm just taking, I don't, I don't actually know if this is a Jew. I'm taking you on your word. He is a Jew. There is a yeah. Jew that came 1,000 yeah. years later that converted to Islam, right? Correct. And said that this was about the Prophet Muhammad. Upon seeing the Prophet and knowing that he fulfilled the prophecy that was in his book, yes. So one Jew, 1,000 years after Isaiah, why should I? Right, why should I? The, why should I convert to Islam off that? Perfect, because the prophet fulfilled. He's fulfilling what the what the Torah is telling him. He's fulfilling it what regardless fulfill? of how long it came after. What did he fulfill? Just like Jesus fulfilled. Just like you claim Jesus fulfilled fulfill? Isaiah fifty three. What did he fulfill? Perfect. Well, well, well let's go if through. If you say perfect again, I'm going to so, boot you because it's really condescending. Um, so we'll just. What I, did I don't he mean fulfill? it to be like that. I'm. Okay, no need to get mad. But anyway, he okay. Number bro, one, he said, "You, you are my bro, slave and my messenger." In all, in all fairness, so, you knew I was mad before you came in. So, I what is, what is the verse of Isaiah forty two? What again? Just the whole of Isaiah forty two. We can go line by line. The whole thing. Okay. Go ahead. So Isaiah forty two one. What does it say on your side? Uh, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, and whom I delight, my soul. I put my spirit upon him, justice to the Gentiles. He will bring forth. Perfect. So, um, my bad. I, I know you don't like that. So, but behold, my servant. That's in, in Hebrew, abd. It means servant or slave. So, here in the hadith, it says, you are my slave, my messenger. Okay? You are neither. Then you, Now you go to the second verse. What does it say? You are neither discourteous, harsh, nor a noisemaker in the markets. Mm -hmm. So, in yours, you ha should have something similar, right? Mm -hmm. What does it say in yours? It's not, not he will cry out, nor he raises his voice, nor uh, cause to yeah, be heard in the street his voice. Perfect. So now we have a match there. Now, this is talking about uh, the Prophet is this, Muhammad. Why is, how is this about Muhammad? Perfect. So, number one, there's many reasons why, but number number one, if you look at the Hebrew on on the word etmak, which is uh, whom I, on your, what's your translate? Whom I behold. Whom I uphold. Or whom I love. Whom I uphold. This word in Hebrew is etmak. 
in the original Dead Sea Scrolls, you see it's Ahmed. It's Ahmed. Correlation so versus causation actually, fallacy. Ahmed is not Muhammad. No, it is. Okay, we have authentic hadith and chapter 61, verse 6 of the Quran that says when Jesus came, so again, he it's spoke a, a messenger to come named Ahmed. Causation fallacy. Was it written in Aramaic? No. Or no, sorry, Ahmed was it written is, in Arabic? The, is Muhammad's name. Was it written no, but in Ahmed Arabic? is the prophet's name. <sighs> Ahmed is was the prophet's name. Was it written in Arabic? What's that? Was was Isaiah 42 written in Arabic? No, it would have probably been written in Hebrew. Right. So why the heck do you mm -hmm. think when you have something that sounds But names similar, don't need to be translated. But names don't need to be translated, my friend. So again, this is not a name <laughs> in the context. The, con Ahmed, the context, okay. there's no name here. I can I can prove that you're wrong. Show me another verse that says my servant who and my servant and then doesn't say after a name. I can show you in the Bible places where it says my servant why David, that, my servant Ezekiel. Perfect. It's relevant because this is an unusual thing in the so, in, so in the all Utah, throughout the Isaiah, Old Testament. All throughout Isaiah yeah. it talks about my servant and doesn't mention a name because the servant is often referred so, to as Israel. Okay, so when it says whom I behold, this statement, if you look at Mac up, that exact word, you're not going to find it anywhere else in the Old Testament. Yeah, actually, you, because this you is, find it in Genesis 48, 17, Exodus 17, 12, Job 36, 17, Psalm 16, 5, Psalm 17, 5, Psalm 17, 12. Yes. So, Psalm 63, okay. 8, let's, Proverbs 3, 18, see. Proverbs 4, 4, Proverbs 5, 5, Proverbs 5, 22, Proverbs 11, 16, Proverbs 11, 16, Proverbs 28, 17, Proverbs 29, 23, Proverbs no, 30, no, you don't. No, you 31, don't. I just 19, looked. Isaiah 33, 15, Isaiah 41, 10, brother, Isaiah 42, 1. Look, look at my screen. It's right I here, brother. At Mac. Though. Okay, at Mac. At may, Mac. Hopefully the viewers can see. It's only in one place in the New Testament. It's Isaiah 42, 1. There's no it's nothing not. else. It is. Can, it's not. can you can you show your screen? No, I can't. How am I supposed but, to but show it? Okay, but look, if you could put me on big screen for a sec, I can I can show you. What are you it's showing? Literally me? Isaiah. I'm showing you the word at Mac, which is I'm, whom I, I who, right who, here Genesis who, forty eight seventeen, and Joseph's, it's not the same word. Brother, you can't lie to the people. I'm you have not to tell lying the truth. to the people. Okay, I'm showing you proof right here. At Mac is only used one time. In the Bible, Isaiah 42, 1. That's it. I'm on the strongs. Brother, okay, I know okay, this is fine, a tough sure. one for you. Why not? Okay, perfect. So you can see to that. So again, so you, your initial question was, why is Isaiah 42? How is it about Muhammad? So we started with that. So Etmak, actually in the Dead Sea Scrolls, is Ahmed. Then we see that he was neither harsh in the markets, right, or raised his voice. We know Jesus, right, in several places in the Bible, would literally rate, like rise onto a rock and make loud announcements in front of people. Whereas the Prophet Muhammad was known for not be raising his voice in the markets or being harsh when he spoke to people. He, f he literally had literal fulfillment of this. Okay? So, Jesus doesn't fulfill it. Prophet Muhammad does. Jesus then it raised says his are... voice in the market and broke reeds and did all those things? Yeah, he raised his voice. When? Okay, so now you want me to go find that for you. No problem. Give me a sec. And remember, he had a temper tantrum in the market. Remember when he went and literally flipped everything upside down? There's I'll get no, you the exact verse. There's no but, temper tantrum. Uh, he didn't have a temper tantrum when he when they were buying and selling in the in the market. Oh, you brought this guy up. Yeah, go ahead. I'm kind of bored. <laughs> You get bored when you get cooked like this? I would yeah, be I'm cooked. It. You win. Congratulations. As long as true, I don't give a fuck. Go ahead, Abraham. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Like to, to challenge. The, what's up? I would just like to challenge the idea that the Dead Sea Scroll says Ahmed. Okay. Uh, you, you have want, like. Pictures you want me to, the yeah, you want me to bring you a picture? Or let me get him his verse real quick about Jesus in the market. That way I can show. Yeah, because what I seen, what I seen Muslims usually try to argue is that the Dead Sea Scrolls has a corruption that makes it say Etmak. No, it says it Ahmed. Said, oh. It's literally a flick of the wrist away from saying Ahmed perfectly, but we know scribal errors. So it doesn't that would say be it? common. I <laughs> mean, if you want, if if you want to be technical, if so you want it to doesn't be super say technical. It. No, it does. It's it's a scribal. It, there's a mini scribal error. But does that it would say? Be, it? Yes. Yes. So there's enough Ahmed? evidence for it. Ahmed. Yes. No it doesn't difference. say Mac. 
Nope, no difference. Uh, a mini scribal error. So it's a best. scribal error. So anyway. So does it we'll say it or does it not Matthew, say it? Matthew. Hold on. No, bro. no, it says hold it. It on, says it. Hold it's, on. It says it. It does it, it or it. does it not? Because you said there's a scribal error now. Which one is it? Is there a scribal error or no? Oh, it, it does with a mini scribal error. So there's a scribal error, so it doesn't say it. No, it does. So how do you know prove it? How do you okay, know it's a scribal it. error? I'll prove it. Let me just get you this verse. Yeah, you, you're out. Okay, we'll, we'll see if it says at Mac or Ahmed. Okay, anyway, before we do that, so Jesus at the marketplace, Matthew 21, 12 through 13, he entered the temple courts and drove out all the people that were buying. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches and those selling drugs mm -hmm. and, and those selling doves. So he literally went in there and had a temper tantrum in the market and literally went crazy That's on everybody. That's Jesus. You're imposing into right? the scripture. No, I'm not. I'm reading yes, it. You are. You're saying he had a temper. How do you know it was a temper tantrum? Okay, so he drove out all that were buying. He overturned the mm -hmm. tables of the money changers and the mm -hmm. benches. And whose temple is that? These are the Jews' temple. Whose temple is the Jews' temple? Who does that belong to? Uh, the Jews at that time. What, what would, why did they build the temple, you freaking genius? Bro, do you know there's more than one temple, right? Why did they build the temple? What temple was this? What was it for? This is a random Jewish temple. Just some this random not, temple. This Just is not random... the temple that he. Re this is not the temple he rebuilt after. Can I three can days, I kick brother. him without people saying I'm running because he's literally an idiot? No, you are running and you got cooked and that's why people are laughing at you. you that's why you turned the comments off and that's right. why you brought this guy up, who I've cooked Run. before as well. Okay, I'm running. I don't give a fuck anymore. Run. You got cooked. What's yeah. up, Abraham? Damn, bro. I have a. Apparently, there was. A man named Jordan who really wanted to talk to him. Huh? Apparently Jordan really wanted to talk to him. Did he? Yeah. Jordan's not even in the thing. Oh, well, maybe maybe he unrequested once he kicked him. Huh. But yeah, I mean, you guys can watch. IP has like 50 videos on this topic alone. So you see how he said it's a scribal error? There's like... It, it's like a small difference between Ahmed or Emak, and it's like a line. So what? And I mean, so what? Let, let's yeah. grant it. Let's grant it, Abraham. It, there's no yeah. scribal error. So yeah, what? That, that's the point. That's the point. But no, let's no, say that there is a scribal error, and it says Ahmed or whatever he said. So what? What does I mean, that prove, man? Just proves that he's lying, I guess. But no, no, I mean, no, no, I'm saying, let's grant his argument. So what? Let's give him everything that he claimed. The whole freaking thing from front to back. What does that change? I'm not sure. It doesn't change anything, man. It's, it's this ridiculous thing that Muslims love, which is the correlation causation. They find things that are similar. And they, ah, oh, ah, ah, the Quran is <laughs> true. Ah, it's it's ridiculous. It's nonsense. Yeah, I mean the the Isaiah forty two thing is even like probably one of the funniest examples of this. I recently spoke to uh, James, right? And he let me know that like you can read all the targums, every single one of the targums that talk about Isaiah forty two say it's about the Messiah, without exception. I mean, the Isaiah itself says it's the Messiah. I don't know why people keep doing this. They just butcher the Bible. You have to literally change letters in, like multiple letters in the Hebrew word to make it say Ahmed. And even then it still wouldn't make sense, but that's a different point. And like literally the chapter before Isaiah 41 verse eight literally says the servant's Israel. Not only that, the one whose the spirit is upon is the same one that's in Isaiah chapter 11 when you read verses one and two which everybody knows is the Messiah because that's the one that's going to come, etc. But I don't know. This is a bad argument. Bro, let's give it. Like, I'm dead, I'm dead ass right now. You guys tell me how I'm wrong here. Let's grant everything he said. Everything he said. Let's say he's right, he cooked me. On, on I mean, clearly they said. have no ability to actually prove Islam is right without Christianity, which is, seems like yeah. an issue. <laughs> That's he, cool. he, he cited a Jew from like... <laughs> a thousand years after Isaiah. And technically speaking, that wouldn't even be early attestation. The earliest attestation would be before that, which would be the Christians who were the first Jews. So and they, they do a really bad job arguing for their position because they'll try to cite Isaiah 42. And then he tells John right after that Isaiah 42 was not written by Isaiah. So then why are you trying to use it? And, and it's kind of weird to me that they believe that the, 
that Jesus is the Messiah, but they try and erase all the messianic prophecies in the Old Testament well, and try and make Jordan. You wanted to talk to him. I mean, he's just gonna make stuff up for sure. No man. Right. I think I think this was him. So guys, so notice they brought another friend up. So Jordan, about what you were saying. So why in John one twenty and twenty one were they expecting United, the Messiah, United Dawa, Elijah, United and the Dawa, prophet? United Dawa. Yeah. Who gives a rat's ass how many people are up here? Right. Here's the question: Are we mm -hmm. actually looking for truth? Or are we in a debate circle trying to see who's the smarter and better person? Which one we're are we doing? doing? Both. No, we're no. Doing both. Why, here, why are I'm we doing the second? I'm here to preach the Quran. You, and cook United you, Dawa. And embarrass you. United Dawa. Both. Why the hell mm -hmm. are you doing the second one? Do you care if I go to Jehenna? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually. You care if I, I care go to hell? You... Yeah, I want you guys all to go to heaven, inshallah. Can so I if you want, if you want us to go to heaven, bro, he then talk up. about truth and don't come up and like this is a debate circuit. Look how many people they got to bring up. Don't be an asshole. Just talk. Can, okay. can I cook well, but, him on that but, dumb but, behind but, argument? But, you just but, but you guys up. said stuff while I wasn't here. So, Jordan, yeah, so real quick. bring up that dumb behind argument you're bringing. Okay, I'll, I'll bring the dumb. Okay, let me bring the John dumb behind argument. What are you about John chapter one? Go to John one twenty and twenty one. So let's go. Let's let's see what the. The Pharisees came to John the Baptist, who they were looking for. They were looking for who? The Messiah, which we know is Christ. Mm -hmm. They were looking for Elijah, which we know is John the Baptist from Matthew mm -hmm. eleven four. Now they're looking for somebody else. It's called that prophet or the prophet. Who's oh. the prophet that they were looking for, Jordan? Well, if you, you had you actually me? hold on, if you had actually read John and you went to John chapter six verse fourteen, there's your answer. Mm. But oh, you've never but, but, read John. So no, but I went to John. No, John no, no 6, I, went, I went to John seven forty through forty four. Can someone and they were arguing. bring up John yeah, chapter six verse fourteen? We'll go there and then we'll go to John 7. So after. we can show how this potato doesn't even know the Bible and mm, he tries to we, debate people and gets we'll smashed. See, we'll every see, single we'll time. see the potato. Let's see. Go ahead. I'm listening to your verse. Then we'll go to John 7 40 through 43, where they argue about if he's the Messiah just, or the prophet. Just read it, please. Then go those ahead. men. Your verse. Go ahead. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, they said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Let's Elise see. What, what, were, the, what were they. Wait, wait. He just used the Old Testament to try to prove the New Testament. Circular That's John reasoning. chapter 6, verse 14, <laughs> potato. Yes, potato using, man. were they not quoting the Old Testament when they said that? When they said, truly, this is the prophet to come, you just brought up John chapter okay. 1 that says, oh, where is he the Messiah? Is he the prophet to come? And they literally okay. just said he is the prophet to come. Why? Okay, thank because you, Jordan, for your Jews, verse. Yeah, had a misconception as to what? whether there was going to be another prophet, another dude named Elijah, whether mm -hmm. the Messiah is going to be the one prophet that is to come or who. Mm. So continue, please. Thank, so thank you, Jordan. You thank, you, jo thank you, Jordan, for that verse. Again, you're going to get buried just like the fake religion you're in. So okay, John 7, 40 it. through 43. United Dawah. On, hear United on hearing Hold his on, words, no, no, some no, of the no, people no, said. No, 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 F it. Oh. Yo, here, here's what we're going to do. I grant you every argument that you give, every single one. You are right about every, in on, Isaiah 42? Hold on, hold on. Everything that you would say, I, I, I'm, Muhammad's in Isaiah 42. He's in the song. Okay, welcome song. to Islam. He's when do you want to take your shahada? All of it, all of it. He doesn't logically follow. Now, every bit of it is true. Thank Why you. should I be a Muslim? Why? Okay, so if we're granting everything true, why should you be a Muslim? Well, Islam is the most disciplined religion in the world. The religion that everything you do from waking up in the morning to go in bed at night is submitting your will to the Creator. Meaning, you're brushing your teeth from making your bed. I mean, from cool story, bro. That doesn't yourself. mean it's true. Okay, well, that hey, is John's true. John's an atheist now. How do you know there's a Creator? Hold on. Okay, but I, I don't do those arguments. I don't do atheist arguments. I do. But, but I do, here's the thing. If he's all a Christian, you've done he already me, has some understanding. All you've done Christ to me right now is disprove Christianity. That's it. No, I'm talking about Islam. I, okay, Bro, so why should this. I be a Muslim? Perfect. You should be a Muslim again because according to being a Muslim, you submit your will to the one creator and do exactly as that one creator. How do I even know, know that's the one creator, bro? <laughs> okay, so, so hold on. So now you want me to be an, now you want me to prove there's bro, a God? We want you to prove Islam is true. None, nobody okay. has ever, nobody has even done this. Even Jordan, attempted. Jordan, you ran from my argument right now. I, I'm going to his argument. You, bro. Jo okay, Jordan so didn't run. Jordan didn't run. I cut okay, so go to John 740 through No, no, no. We're not doing Why are you running from his question now? I gave you an answer and now you're running to something else. Now he's flipping. Now he's like, prove to me there's a God. I'm not going to, I'm not, bro, you I must don't run debate. track. This is crazy. So the no, only Jordan, way you, you can prove, hold on, hold on, track. United Dawa, okay. the only way you can mm -hmm. prove Islam is true is by disproving Christianity. Mm, that, am, no. that don't look good, bro. No, no, so I'm, can you prove I, I have Islam not even mentioned Islam. I've not even mentioned Christianity once. That's, that's I've literally said. You haven't okay, mentioned perfect. Christianity once? 
No, when in regards to his question, I've not mentioned it okay, once. So, so again, just explain, his question is clear. Okay, without you, okay, Islam I don't need, true. I don't need the ad libs. I don't need the ad libs. I just so need to know what he, makes again, Islam true, bro. The bro, again, okay, you're a Christian. You worship three gods. Relax. So anyway, oh my gosh, so, so you can't. So answer. John, uh, if you don't interrupt, you're like a shadow over me. Relax. So anyway, so John, again, why should you be a Muslim? Not talking about any other religion. You should be a Muslim because since the time of Adam. The first man on earth, the last and final messenger. They all well, preached the same religion. How do I even know Adam religion. existed? Well, what do you mean? How do you know he existed? You've all you've done is you've dis you all you've shown me right now is I can't trust the Bible because it's corrupted. So now I no longer okay. trust the Bible. So why should I be a Muslim? Okay. Do you believe? Okay. Now this is the atheist argument. So do you believe there's a necessary being? Uh, that sure. An sure. I, I am now. I am now a deist. Okay. Perfect. So. Let's let's go through that. So as a deist, you believe there is a creator. So do you believe a, the, if there was a creator that they would send guidance to their creation? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I need to see evidence. If it's a deist okay. God, then that God wouldn't send guidance to the creation. He just okay, let well, creation go. Okay, well, what, what my argument would be is as, as a deist that the, the God would send because God is loving and God How wants How do you know his, his God is loving? <laughs> Because because the God I worship is loving. How do you know that? I'm just begging the God. question, bro. How do I know your God that you worship is the actual God of the universe? Because I'm telling you right now. Because, oh, because the God, Malik's because, telling us that. Because that the God of this world, the God of this world, any logical person would know. If I created a machine, I would write an instruction manual for that machine. So why? the people if using it would work. Person, it. Why would you? Why would you? Make a machine? Why? Why would I make? No, a because. Because if God created this world and everything in it, including us, he would create a manual on what to stay away from, what's bad right. for us, and what to get okay, closer. So, so why not good? Hinduism? Bro, notice that these guys are Christians running atheist arguments on me. This Bro, is sad. The point this is, is you can't you have no justification for anything. I literally you say. am saying you just that you're, say, you're oh, everybody knows. stuff up. Okay, everybody knows. Bro, all you do is beg the question, bro. No, I'm not if begging. If God the existed, well then I can't get I can't get one direct answer. Okay. If uh, if let's there was a creator, would he send creation? Would they send guidance to his creation? How do you know that? Okay, because the, the, logically, if someone created the world, right, and we're thinking with our brains that they would send guidance to the creation in order for us okay. to stay away from what's bad and so, get so closer let, to what's let, good. Let me ask a question then. All right. So God mm -hmm. created the universe. You say logically he would have to send some instruction to his creation. If Correct. he didn't, which law of logic would that break? The logic, I don't know the laws of logic like that. Well, then how do you it know it's, break. how do you know it's illogical? <laughs> because it, because it makes sense. Because if, in that case, you would be following a, 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 a non, a God that hates people, a God that leaves Maybe people Maybe he does. Confusion. How do you know he doesn't? Maybe he's a universalist okay. and everybody's well, that, just going to get saved regardless. Like, okay. how do you know? Like, okay. <laughs> Jordan, just, just that, that wouldn't. Jordan, first off, this is sad from a Christian perspective. Bro, it's it got, sad it got because this bad. you it got have this bad. no proof of anything you say. Yes, I you do. have no proof. Okay. You're just saying stuff. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm literally running you guys through it, but you guys are what uh, argument have you as an you just said. The oh, only thing you've done is appeal to common sense. This. Okay, I'm, a, I'm, appeal, I'm appealing to the I'm appealing to logic in the fact that God. Bro, okay, right, you God just said you good, don't know what the laws of logic are. So what do you mean by you're appealing to logic? Okay, first off, when it, when you say laws of logic, just, that's, that's all made up too. That's them. that's made up too. So well, then logic is made up, bro. What is logic then? Okay, Who what's logic? Lo logic, logic means right. that if God, if God, if there was a creator, because you're granting me there's a creator, that uh -huh. he would send guidance to his creation, because if he created us, then we would have a purpose. If how he didn't have a you purpose, we would, would be wandering you... around like dogs. How do you know he gives a rat's ass about you at all? Yeah, okay, I mean, he, he could have created us you with know, guidance you know, built you in. You know why? Right? Because why I need to send a, a book. No, 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 we don't believe in that. So, you, oh, you would, we know what you don't believe. No, well, 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 it's not, it's not the holy, it's not the Holy Spirit. So, so stop bringing Christian beliefs. In what does that? Why so, you keep mentioning Christianity? Just because he stopped mentioning built our in? religion and just tell us why Islam is true. Please. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm literally telling you, I, I went to the Bible and you guys book? got cooked, and now you want Bro, me to do from Why do you have to bring up Christianity to prove Islam? This is crazy. I okay. give I give it to you. You cooked me. You you won against me when it comes to the Bible. You are the champion. You are the king at defeating Christians at there's the Bible. Only, there's only one king of kings. I, That's a I, I admit that. Mm -hmm. You've done That's a phenomenal job. Now I no longer yeah. trust the Bible and I'm no longer a Christian. Why should I be a Muslim? Okay, again, we're running it from the beginning. So if you believe there's a creator and don't know who that creator is, and you believe in your heart that that creator would send guidance to his creation. I don't. Right? Why should you believe that? <laughs> Why should you believe that he would send guidance? Because yes. if you, because I wouldn't worship a god that was that was. Nasty okay, maybe we like don't. That, that doesn't mean that that god isn't the true god, bro. No, it does. 
Your it arguments does. are trash. Because, because God, past this? Can, okay, because I don't I, can argue. I fix your, can, can I just fix your arguments? I don't, so need, I don't need to. I don't talk to atheists. I don't fix arguments. I came here to talk to you. Know you know you don't. The only thing bro, you're able you to do to is to anybody with any good arguments. Jordan, I talked to you and cooked you once. Now this is the second time. You literally People pulled told out you to me. stop debating after you when talked was this, to, bro, to bro, us, bro, what are you talking about? You've never even stepped in the ring. Debate me formally, and I'll embarrass you like Nobody I did logic, and I'll be in everybody else. So, so United Dawah, that is are, not a win. are you saying that the only way to prove Islam is to disprove Christianity? No. To a Christian, I'm going to show you your books are wrong, and then I'm going to guide okay, you Okay, my to book's the, wrong, the, but why should okay, I be can't guide us, though. Guide yeah, us to the truth. Okay, you know, Explain uh, why it's the truth. Okay, I'm gonna guide you. I'm gonna guide you on the. F Listen, if you don't believe that God is would send guidance to His creation, I can't help you. I can't. Bro, okay, 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 let's just, okay. Let's just let's just say He sent guidance. Okay, where, where okay. do we go after this? Okay, perfect. So so the God the God the Creator sent guidance to His creation. Fantastic. Now we need to find out where the guidance Bro. is. Now we got all these books. Now we need. And to what first type of God is this? Hold on. This is a this is a merciful God. This is a God that no, wants what, us to what's do this right. Like, like how this do is not. Mm -hmm. How does he account for like the things like laws of logic, you know, numbers, transcendental categories? How does this God account for that? Okay, this God accounts. For, listen, this God doesn't come for just smart people. He comes for the whole of humanity. Yeah, I'm, that's he loves not my everybody. question. I'm asking okay. what type of God is this that accounts for these transcendental categories? Okay, perfect. This is a, a merciful God. This is a God that, that's compassionate. This is a God that, that you know... He's the creator. Can you this explain is, like his, his actual qualities that could justify the laws of logic? Like, is he a singular being? Is he multiple beings? No, is he there's one person. Th th is there's two persons. No, no. There's only one God. Every okay, prophet and, preached one God. Okay. So, and what? And behind this? Okay. These new things called prophets that you just made up. Okay. We don't know about that yet. Bro, this now, is sag. You're arguing as an <laughs> atheist to me, as yeah, a Christian. So anyway, Why can't you face up as a Christian? Because I have answers for this as a Christian. Clearly, you no, don't. You don't. No, you don't. You have so my question waffle. to you is, what yeah. about this God justifies the laws of logic, different transcendental categories like mathematics? Okay. Perfect. Ethics. So so this God would be logical. He'd be one. If there was multiple gods, they would be fighting. And the God that lost well, How do you be know the they'd be God. fighting? Right. Because if there's two gods, there has to be, there, there will always be one that is superseding over another. Unless how do you, you know had that? two. How do you know there's not two gods equally powerful just chill with each other? No, because the reason why there wouldn't be two gods is because if there was two gods, that means there's two sets of decision making, right? But yeah, how do you okay, know? Okay, so let's just let's Perfect. just say let's just say omnipotence paradox can continue. There's one God. Okay, there's what one is, God. What what about this one God Perfect. justifies grounds? Perfect. Logic so this one and so ethics. this Perfect. So this one God, how does he how does he communicate with his creation? Remember you granted That's that not he a would transcendental be. category. So can, okay, can you explain? Stop, hold on. stop trying can, to talk hold smart, on. Jordan, because you get because you know when you get to the question, Bible, you just get Just the question. Now you're trying to geek talk. Like no. So you're <laughs> saying hold on, because you're saying this God loves his creation, correct? Yes, he loves his okay. creation. Is love a relationship? What? Is love a relationship? Um, it's a re it's a relationship in terms of the master to to a servant. Yes. Okay, so it's a relationship. So you sure. said this God is one. How is this one God grounding a relationship when it's supposedly one being? Perfect. So he's grounding a relationship. What do you mean one being? You s is he is your God more than one being? No, God is one. Strictly okay, so one. How is he, if yeah. he's strictly one, how is he grounding something that strictly isn't one? A relationship involves two parties. How is he grounding that? Perfect. So how he's grounding is he's sending prophets. He's sending no, no, no. people. He's sending, <laughs> he's sending, that's not what relax, grounding. relax, relax. That's relax. not what I'm, grounding I'm answering the question. So, so United I, Dawah, bro, speaking bro, bro. past you. <laughs> You're <laughs> talking like, Jordan, no, stop he, talking like a geek. United Dawah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to explain right. it to you because I think he talked past you a little bit. Before your God created humanity, people, angels, before he created the earth, all these types of mm -hmm. things, okay. who, who was it that he was loving? Perfect. So he had the attribute of love, but he didn't necessarily have to use it on anybody. He was sovereign in his dominion. Okay. He's the first and the last. Like Meaning I that said. He's before anything and, and he will be long after everything. You said it's singularly one. My question is. He's grounding ethics that are relational. How is something that is one grounding something that is relational? Okay, again, I I don't know your question. How is he? So when we say just geek grounding, it, just just go huh? slow and go geek. So not when we geek say talk. grounding something, it basically uh -huh. means how is he the foundation of that, or how is he the thing that upholds that? Right. For instance, 
If I have a table, it's holding two objects, right? How is God? A table is holding ground- two objects? Say, say a, a table is holding two objects. Why can't it hold ta- one object? Oh my gosh. The table is the foundation <laughs> of those two objects. If this God is the creator of these things, and you're saying that he's a loving God, mm-hmm. how is he grounding this relational aspect if he's singularly one? Perfect. How is this, there a relation This, this is my answer, God? which you interrupted, by the way. Okay. So, so, and hold yeah. on. Is he, and this God uh-huh. is perfect and needs nothing else, correct? This yes, this God is okay, perfect. He's continue. the sustainer of all. Everything okay, needs him. He needs absolutely nothing. Okay, right? Continue. He's independent. Okay, so perfect. So how does he how does he build a relationship with his creation? How does creation know? He sends prophets, right? That's people, the best the best of creations at that time, the best of people at that time, starting from the first prophet all the way until you know, as many prophets as you want just for the sake of this argument, right? And what he's doing is he's, he's explaining to the group of people that he's sending it to who God is. God is strictly one. Worship him alone. This life is a test. What's wrong? What's good? What's bad? In this test, what to stay away from? What, get, what to get closer to? That's, that's what this God would do. Yeah. Therefore, if we got, if we, it's a warning for those who disbelieve, and it's a glad tidings for those who want to believe. <sighs> that didn't answer my question. Okay. It did. So why should we value something like fairness? What? This is the same. This is this has to do with my last question. Why should something like fairness be something that's valued? Okay, perfect. Real quick, guys, notice how they threw their religion under the bus. But anyway, so why should we value fairness? We should value fairness because if life wasn't fair, we'd be in a c- catastrophe. So, so hold on, why before, before you say before you say we threw the religion under the bus, you know what I can yeah. do with my religion? I can talk. Well, talk can to an, I can talk to an atheist about my religion. And I can convince. Can you? I can talk to somebody who's Hindu about my religion and convince them. I could talk to somebody who's Islam about my religion. See, the thing is, my religion doesn't fully rely on trying to disprove another religion to be true. Not at all. You're a Christian. I came up under that understanding. I'm talking to you like that. I don't. I don't come up. Here. Listen, Christians right, use so, so emotional here's arguments. The only you thing this is not an emotional argument. Yeah, you do. You I'm say you're born in sin. Literally okay, told us answer, that we okay, need to Jordan, feel in our heart that hold God on, will Jordan, guide us. Hold on, Jordan. Hold on, Jordan. Prove to me that we were all born in sin. What are you talking about? Man? Prove to why me we were all born in sin. What logically. does this have to do with with how exactly. God, why why ethics? Exactly, is? you're cooked because your God because your belief is that you were born in sin. Bro, what are you even talking about? Explain you were born, what in, born sin, in sin. Yes or no? Means. Oh, okay. explain what it okay, means. Okay, so you, were you not means. were you not explain born? what it means? Okay, were you born in sin? Explain what that means. What do you mean? Explain what it means. Explain what it means. You it means since you're asking a question, what is the meaning of your question? What does it mean? Okay, perfect. Which means that Adam, Adam and Eve, well, actually Eve, First Timothy two fourteen, because <sighs> Eve ate the apple, right? And then bl- they blamed it on her instead of Adam. Okay, when they <laughs> ate the apple, their sin that they created by eating the apple now was was now spread across all of humanity until the second Adam had to come, which is Jesus to you. And, and an innocent man had to be put on the cross, become a curse, go to hell, save people in Hades, and come back. Yeah, that's not what, what it means. Explain that. <laughs> what does it mean? We don't believe that. What does it mean for sin to be You don't believe across? that? No. Guys, did you hear that? He doesn't believe that. So you don't believe your God became a curse and went to Hades right. for three no, days? No, we don't believe what your explication of original sin Explication? Was. Okay. okay. That so that on. means how you're explaining these sure. different things. Sure. So, so you know what? Your I'll first listen part, for a bit. You your... tell me what original sin is. Go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be here. Matter of fact, ahead. I'll explain all the questions I was just asking. So, no, no, please don't. I don't care. No, no, no. Because clearly you have no answers. So, so just, just, answers. just so you know, just, just you know, dawa explication is a word. Okay, but he didn't mean to say that. Oh, you yeah, yeah, I'm just. Because it actually. <laughs> explication. Doing, I dare you to spell it right now. Spell. spell explication, Abraham, right now. Oh my gosh. You did the exactly. same thing last time. Bro. Exactly. You use words you can't even spell. You, Jordan, oh and Nick. God. You guys are trying to your be smart. Prophet you just know that no, we but know no Bible words, scripture. Bro. No yeah, scripture. Because no. your prophet we can't Wait, Abraham, words Abraham, Abraham, you want to make a this? You spell any single word he used. Wait, Abraham, you want this? You sure you want to do that? Could your prophet spell a single word he used? No, he was like John and then that. He was unlearned. He was illiterate like John and Peter. Why are you trying to use that as an insult? I'm not using this exactly. insult. I'm just you. I'm yeah, saying so why that are you here. insulting people who are are clearly illiterate? Apparently, huh? no. I'm not. I'm, I'm not insulting are illiterate people. people I'm, I'm insulting. Less people, I'm insulting less Christians people. trying to run atheist arguments on me. This you're, is sad. You're, it's just sad. Preach that you to actually preach have the no positive but proof. Here, for here's the thing. The here's the thing, that, bro. I have answers to these atheist arguments. Do you have answers to the Muslim argument? Can you tell bro. me why your God became a curse? Why should I follow Jesus oh who God. became a curse? So now when we're Jesus talking about the, Christianity in the, again. In the Quran right? was a blessing. Bro, I swear y'all just want the gospel. Is this it's not a Christian life? 
Jordan, you is this a Christian live? This isn't anything to do these with guys the question are running, up These there. guys are running Paul tactics over here. I'm a Jew to the Jew. I'm an atheist <sighs> to the atheist. Like, bro, be a Christian. Be proud. Okay, okay so you have no answers. Do you want to hear about the gospel? I love okay. spreading the gospel. Okay, people. all right. Sure. Yes. Tell me about hold on, hold on. You just I'll admit that you had no answers. Hold on, Jordan. Jordan, let me, let, me get, let me grant him everything. Okay, I'm a Christian. Why should I be a Muslim? Perfect, because if you love Jesus like you say you do, right? The Jesus in Christianity became a curse. God became a curse. Mm. Okay, the Trinity makes no so sense. So he is God. Hold on. No, no. Your God became a curse. God cannot be a curse. He went to hell. According to God who? went to hell for three oh days. God. According uh, to your Bible. Hold Galatians 3.13. Hold on. United Dawah. United Dawah. According to your belief. Galatians 3.13. Hold on, hold on, guys. Let me, ask, let me ask him. According no, to he's who? not. According Wait, to hold on. your God isn't present in hell. Hold on, hold on, no, he's hold on. not. He's hold all on. hearing guys, guys, he's guys, 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 in the Christian narrative, right, because I'm, I'm showing you why you're wrong and why Islam is, is, is right, is that in your God, your God became mm -hmm. a curse. Jesus became a curse for your sins. Mm -hmm. God cannot become a curse because the very sins he's saving you from is the very sins he created, right, when he didn't forgive Adam and Eve. Because in 2 Chronicles 7.14, hold on, in 2 Chronicles yeah. 7.14, he was forgiving people long before this innocent man sacrifice stuff with oh just mercy gosh. alone. So, so why does God need to give a sacrifice Malik, to the world? Malik, you're not answering my question. How mm -hmm. do you know God cannot be cursed? Perfect. Because if, <laughs> wait, guys, did you hear the question? How do I know God can't be cursed? Because God is perfect and God is all, is most good. He's most merciful. He cannot be cursed because he created curse. He cannot be a he curse. Created he created curse. curse. Yeah. So, so yeah, he, what is your yes. definition of a Just curse? Just like Isaiah says. What, what is a curse? What is a curse? Okay. It's a, it's a kataras. It's a doomed one, according to the Greek. Okay. So mm -hmm. it, what, what is logically wrong with God taking on flesh and then mm -hmm. being doomed by being put on the cross and dying? Perfect. I'm so glad you asked Even that. though so, we don't believe he was doomed. But okay. yeah, yeah, you do. Galatians no, 3.13. Don't run from it. So anyway. Bro, so, I know every single verse you could possibly yeah. bring up, Malik. Okay, Deuteronomy 21.23. So go to Paul and, and now attack fear <sighs> Paul in front of 400 people. No, or 500 just, people. G G Everyone that dies on a tree is a Jesus curse. Jesus became sin. Yeah, no, it's under God's hold on, hold on. I, I love you guys. I'll sin. bring you back up in a minute. I want to I want to, I want to play this out. Okay. Okay. What's your question? So, why can't... God take on flesh, die on a cross. Okay. Perfect. So the reason why he can't take on flesh, number one, I'll answer it in two different ways. Number one, according to your scripture, he can't take on flesh. Numbers 23, 19, Hosea 11, 9, God is not a man. Now, according what's to the, logic, what's the, if rest you want, of, what's the rest of that verse? Perfect. God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind, both okay. of which Jesus did in John 7, 7 so through where, 10. So where does it say okay. that he can't take on flesh? Okay, perfect. Wait, wait, that he can't take on flesh? Yeah, where did it say that he can't take on flesh? Right there, Numbers twenty three nineteen. God is not a man. That he should lie, or a son of man, that he should change his mind. So you're saying he, God can be a man in that verse? It says that he cannot lie or change his mind. Okay, so go to Hosea 11, 9. Let's read it together, and let's see. Okay, Hosea 11, 9. I'll read it for you because I got my phone. Yeah, go ahead. So, I'm just going to grant you everything you say tonight. Why? Go ahead. Just go defend, ahead. defend your belief. Bring me to Christianity. Okay. Uh, I will sure not I carry out Christianity, bro. Anyways. Okay, that's, that's fine. I, I don't want to be with a Jesus that's cursed either. But anyway, I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Epiphany again. For I am God and not a man, mm -hmm. the Holy One among you. I will not come against their cities. So what do you say? For I am God and not a man. So where does Can it you say show that there? he can't take on flesh? Okay. For I am God and not a man. Is a man? Does a man have flesh? Was he, was he a man then? For I am God and not a man. Yeah, what is it, when does it say that he can never become well, I, a man? Okay, so according to, you, according to your belief, he was a man then because he was the angel of the Lord. And also Christians argue he was Melchizedek, right? I don't believe he's Melchizedek. Well, how, who, so hold on. So Hebrews 7, 3, he had no beginning of days or no end of life. He's the mm -hmm. first and the last. Melchizedek is the first and the last? No, Melchizedek is a call forward to Jesus. Okay, but he has no beginning of days and no end yeah, of that's life. Just, that's just talking about his genealogy. That doesn't mean that he didn't have a beginning. It just means there's no record of his genealogy. Where does it say that? That's just what's Go to Hebrews 7.3. Where? Widely, can you show me that? That's what's widely understood in church tradition. 
widely understood. Okay, uh -huh. okay, can you bring me one church father that says that? So, uh, okay, I'll grant it. Then. Like I guess I'm going to grant you everything that you say tonight. Bro, what is this, okay, man? Zedek, you Mikhail Zedek also lived forever. Okay, cool. According to your Bible, he did. So anyway, so, okay, God, so God is, a, so he's God and not a man, meaning he can't take on flesh. Where does it say now, he can't say, take on flesh? It just says he's because, not a man at that point. Okay, so hold on, but, but doesn't your Bible say God never changes yesterday, today, or tomorrow? So why does, fle why does flesh mean change? Flesh is just taking so hold on, on flesh. If so hold you, on. If you so, put on a jacket, mm -hmm. if you put on a jacket, did you, know you change? Go ahead. Yes, you change because you didn't have the jacket. So you're, you're before, now, now a you different have the jacket. person. If you take on a take on put on a jacket. Yes, that's what the Trinity is. It's a different person. No, no, that's that's not what I said. If you put on a jacket, are you now <laughs> yeah. a different person? Yes, because now I'm a person with a jacket instead of a person so without that, a jacket. Okay. You might you might need to call Jordan back for this. Because no, no, I'm, I'm granting you everything, man. I'm, st I'm still. You know what? You're being nice to me. My bad. I'm, I'm my still bad. I'm not being, convinced on why I should be a Muslim. Perfect. Or well, I'm just running you through your religion, and then I'll take you through because because as a Christian, you're actually close to Islam. So there's not much mm. difference right there. The only difference is in the three major differences: one, two, three. One, we don't believe Jesus became a curse. We believe Jesus was always a blessing. We don't believe I don't care what God you believe. For, forsake I, I give a rat's ass what you believe. I want to know why it's true. Okay, I'm telling you why it's true. I'm telling you it's true because we be, if you believe in all the prophets and if you love Jesus and you believe that God sent prophets, God would have sent prophets that were the best of people at their time. How do you know that? God sent Jesus. Because God is, in your book and in my book, God is good. God is your in your book. It says God is love. God would not send bad people. But is my book corrupt or not? Say, no, your book is corrupt. Okay, but then, so I, then why are we using to my the book? Okay, fine. Let's go to the Quran. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So right there, we have two attributes of God. We have we know He's the most gracious. We know He's the well, most. How do merciful. I know the Quran is true? Oh, so now you won't take me in a circle again. How do I'm we not, know the Quran is true? I'm not taking okay, you perfect. in a circle. That's the question I've been asking since okay, let, let Okay, perfect. Okay, let's go to scientific miracles. You want to go back to that? Can sure. you tell me how the Quran knew the earth ex was it going to expand? The earth was expanding? Show me the verse. By a Where 14... Does it say? Show four, me. Okay. No problem. Give me a sec. Okay, 51.47. Okay. Okay. 47. Forty we built the universe with great might and we are certainly expanding it. That doesn't say earth. No, we built the universe. Well, that's what you said earth at the start. Yeah, yeah. We built we built the universe. Okay. The the un the universe is expanding as as earth is too. Earth is part of the universe that's expanding. Okay. So what? So how how come a fourteen hundred year old illiterate man in the desert knew this hundreds of thousands of years before NASA and all these high tech people got to it? It doesn't say that he knows that the universe is expanding. Yeah, it does. We it built does. the universe with great might, and we are certainly expanding it. Yeah. Where'd you get that from? Look up, and what do they what do they call what do they call the skies in the Near East? In the what? What do they call the skies? What do they call it? What was the word for it? With with who? The Near East. And this is the know. time period we're talking about. It's the expanse. Wait, can you prove, can you show me that? I didn't know that. Uh, so it, look up, um, what is it called? Uh, Israelite cosmology. And this was during the 6th century? Well, that's when the Israelites were. No, so it was before that. What well, happens in Genesis? So that's one spot. So that'd be an ancient. The expanding. Text. Yeah. Change. What's the verse? Eight. Genesis what? Uh, one eight. Hold on, hold on. Let me just double check that. Yeah, Genesis one eight. So in the original Hebrew it says, "Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate the water from the water." So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above. 
Genesis 1, 8. 6 through 8. Okay, and God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Mm -hmm. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it yeah, was and so. That word God vault called... translates to expanse. Where? Uh, in the Hebrew. Okay, let's go. Genesis 1, 6, Hebrew. The word rachai. There are many ways that you can translate words, right? Vault, expanse, dome. Wait, what? what's the word? Rahe? Yeah. The ra what is that in one six or one five? Or sorry, one seven. Um, I'm not seeing expanse anywhere. I have and said God, let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters and let it divide between the waters and the waters. That's six. Seven said, so made God the ferment, and he divided the, between the, the waters. That the firmament is the hai, right? And that could also mean expand. So if you go to that, Genesis 1 and 6, so for example, the NASB translated says, let there be an expanse. The KJV translates it to let there be a firmament. The NINT translates it to an expanse, right? You can also Okay, see perfect. It, so I'm glad you brought that up. So it says an extended surface, right? So what is this talking about in Genesis 1-8? Is this talking about the earth or is this talking about, what is this talking about? Well, I'm exactly? just saying, I'm just saying we see in ancient Israelite cosmology that they refer to the skies as the expanse. So Muhammad looking up to the sky and say it's expanding is not really that far off. No, he said the universe was expanding. Well, even the universe, sure. Sky, universe, these are all synonymous with each other. But, but in Genesis, it's not talking about the universe expanding. It's talking about the waters expanding. It's talking about the skies. It's talking about what's above, right? And what do they mean when they look at the universe? It's talking about what's above. Do you disagree with that? It says, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault. And where's the water Wait, from what? water? So look, Google this right now. Ancient near, ancient Israelite cosmology. Right? And you'll see a picture. Ancient Israelite cosmology. Okay, yeah, I see it. Okay. This, is, is, the, this is not a flat earth theory, is it? Well, so. The, this the, is flat earth. So I, I don't, to mess I don't up believe, again. I don't believe in a flat Earth, but the ancient Israelites did. So you're already disqualified. Why? You're already showing me because you're showing me a flat Earth, bro. The Earth. Do you believe the Earth is flat? So do you think? Do you think people, uh, fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, or 1,600 years ago, thought the Earth was round? Bro, I don't care what they thought. The truth is, in chapter seventy-nine, verse thirty of the Quran, the, the Earth is shaped as an ostrich egg. It, it's it's circular, but at, at each pole, it, it, it it's wider. Right. Yeah, that's 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 right. cool. That's a cool story. It's not though, flat. So. so you just proved the Bible is you proved the Bible is wrong because it believes in a flat Earth. I, so it proves that ancient Israelites believed in a flat Earth. The Bible never mentions the shape of the Earth. So what's a ferment? The ferment. like the word we just translated. The it's literally right here. Ferment. The ferment. Water above the ferment. Sorry, go ahead. I'm trying to explain. It's what separates. It's the expanse that separates the waters mm -hmm. above from the waters below. Okay, perfect. But do you, do you understand in what you sent me, the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe? It says waters above the ferment. Now we go to the Bible. Water above water in the ferment. This is how biblical people got a flat earth. So you prove the Bible wrong. So again, Genesis, so you're, you're shuffling, right? You're shuffling the point. Now I, can, I can answer that question. That's no problem. I'm not go, running. Go I'm ahead. more than happy to answer that question. But I do want to I do want to point out that you're shuffling the point because the point was the original point that we were talking about is that the mm -hmm. ancient Near East believed that when they looked up to the skies that there was an expanse. That was so sorry. You can see that point. How how if they believe the flat Earth? So can you explain that? Th that's fine. We can earth? we can get into the flat Earth. But are you conceding the fact uh -huh. that the ancient Near East believed in an expanse in the sky? No, I I concede to the point that that Jew, that Hebrew word has a definition meaning expanse. So then, when meanings. they looked up to the sky, they saw a what? They saw they saw a ferment that well, they, they saw an expanse. Seen. So sure, this, this why was not? proper. Okay, I'll grant you. You you've been granting cool. me everything. I'll grant you that. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah. So okay. sorry. Then what was your question? So now the question is: If they believed in a ferment, water above water, mm -hmm. like the ancient Hebrew conception. Now we're at a flat earth. So now get get me out of the flat earth now into a circular earth. Yeah, so the ancient Israelites believed in a flat earth. Okay, and how did that end up in the Bible? It didn't. It did, bro. It literally is so, the same picture as the one you showed me. Water above water in the ferment. Right, so Genesis 1 is a poetic is poetic by nature. Right? It's telling Poetic? Us that, yes. Bro, no, it's not poetic. It is poetic. 
and it's this is God how God created the earth. It's poetic by nature, and you can tell by the way that the sentences end. Right when you look at when you look at Hebrew poetry, the way that Hebrew mm-hmm. poetry is written is lining exactly up with the way that Genesis one is being written. Perfect. So you're saying to me, Genesis one is a poem. It's not the reality of what God did. So the spirit. So it's not. The, it, it's mm-hmm. not. It's not a verbatim, step by step. Right. It's not. So hey, what was the spirit of God was hovering over the waters? Explain the poeticness of that. Yeah, absolutely. So the the waters in, in ancient Near East represented a chaos motif. The waters represented hell, represented death, represented the destruction. Right. The spirit of the water showing that it has authority over destruction over hell. What's happening? So that's not the Holy Spirit. I, I believe it is the Holy Spirit. But it's poetic. It is poetic. But the poem in here, it's talking about the chaos motif. Right. So show the waters, the sea all represents death and destruction. So what it's saying here is that the Holy Spirit has authority over those. And, and how do we get these interpretations? In you, this get the, you get these interpretations because you can read the Ugaritic texts, right? And you can read other mm-hmm. uh, ancient Near East texts where they all talk about the chaos motif, about Leton, about Leviathan, about the waters, about death, destruction and Shoal. And it all comes from the same direction. It's the waters. Perfect. So as a Christian, I would take. Genesis 1 through what the whole 1 through 31 as poetic or the whole of Genesis not the whole of Genesis no you take you take the first chapter pretty or like yeah so the creation account will be poetic that doesn't mean it's not true Adam and Eve are still real people they still you know uh, went against God they still were in the in the garden right those, those are all true things but we're talking about thousands of years of, pro, of things happening all being confined into a single chapter. The goal isn't trying to give us a scientific miracle. The goal is trying to give us a salvation story. A salvation story. So what salvation story do I get from Genesis 1? Right here we get the fall, right? And then we get the promise of redemption, right? Because we get Adam and Eve, they have their fall. They have their destruction. Mm-hmm. They have their they're separating from God. And then what happens is he says, from your line, I will raise up one that will step on the head of the serpent. And this is Jesus that we see in Revelation. Doesn't say, it doesn't say that. I'm sorry. Genesis 3.15 doesn't say that. It says that the woman, I'll, I'll even quote it to you because you're quoting Genesis 3.15. It says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and, he, and you will strike his heel. So who's the woman in this situation? It's Eve. Eve, perfect. So he'll put enmity between you, talking about Satan and the woman, and between your well, offspring, Satan's offspring, and then no, Eve's no. offspring. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say Satan. I'd say, again, the snake, the Leviathan, represents destruction and evil. No, the, the snake is Satan, brother. It well, has to a be. lot of people think it's Satan, and it's, it could be. Okay. Right? But again, when we're looking at this, we're talking about ancient Near East uh, cosmology and understanding the chaos motif. The serpent, the snake was always in the waters, and, and again, looking at other Near East understandings of this, was representing chaos, death, and destruction. Perfect. I'm, I'm, I can go with that, actually, because this is where this buries uh, original sin. So if he's putting enmity between bad chaos, chaos and all that in, in terms of the snake, and then the woman, Eve, then that shows that he's now created a difference between bad and good. So how could Eve still be an original sin, which is satanic or bad in nature, if he's now separated the two and caused enmity so, between so both? What do, you, what do you mean by original sin? Okay, original sin is the, is, the, is the concept in Christianity. Because of what Adam and Eve did, anybody in Christianity born is born in sin, meaning they have the capability but, but what is now. It, what does it mean, born in sin? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, it, when means you're saying it? it means you're born in a, with a sinful nature already. Well, yeah, Adam Where and Eve I, were born with a sinful nature because they went against God. We're all born with a okay. sinful nature. Okay, okay, but that's that doesn't make sense because if, if if they were born with a sinful nature, now you're already in debt. That's what Christianity is. It's a no, debt process no, so, so where you need a we're, savior. We're not born in debt. We're born with a sinful nature. Those are two different things. Okay, like you're, you're born what, what with is, a clean slate, but you sin and you fall short oh, of the glory of God. Okay, so perfect. So do you agree that people who are sinful don't go to heaven? Uh, Unless forgiven? Yeah, so unless you right. repent and turn to Jesus and trust in Him, you per- can make it, sure. Per- perfect. So then let's now talk about babies. So babies were born in sim- a sinful nature, right? Well, now, no, if they no, die as a baby, again, again, how— that's, that's not what I said. I said, you have to sin. If they haven't sinned— But you know that you're, that's what your church father says, right? That, that, that the babies go to hell? Which church father says that? All right, I'll get it for And is it honest. a consensus uh, amongst the church fathers? No, it was one of your biggest church fathers, though. Yeah, the church uh, fathers can say wrong things. So uh, I'd have, to, I'd have Greg, to look more into that. I don't know. Maybe a baby does go to hell. Babies go to hell, you think? 
I don't know. It's not my place to judge. It's God alone. It's Augustine, by the way, but it's not consensus. Yeah, there's, so there's, Saint a, there's, Augustine. there's a lot of Augustine that I don't necessarily agree with. There's a lot Wait, of but how, agree with. But, but John, think about this. How, how could you even think as a Christian that babies would go to hell? Babies are, do you have a baby? Or like no, a not, kid? not yet, but I, I plan to have one. Okay, God willing. Okay, so when you have that baby and it's in your hands and it's crying and, or looking at you, how can you honestly in your heart say, this baby might go to hell if it dies young? Well, see, I don't know, right? So here's the thing. Maybe God knows that baby's life, knows that he would never turn to God and never repent. And so he mm -hmm. suffers a consequence from that. Maybe he doesn't go to hell. Maybe he gets eternal sa uh, salvation because he never sinned. I don't ultimately but, know. It's but, not my but, place but what type of But what type of God would, would, would send a baby to hell? So, so again, what I'm, my claim here is I don't know. Right? I'm okay, allowed, but shouldn't, I'm your, to shouldn't, your bi but shouldn't your ba Bible have clarity on that? Why? Why is there not allowed to be some uh, mysteries? So the mystery is if a baby goes to hell or not? I mean, what? Why is, why is the world not allowed to have some mysteries? See, here's where my faith comes in. This is where my faith is. I faith that God is just and fair. And I don't think anybody who's going to go to hell is going to go there because of just bad luck, right? Everybody who's going to go to hell is going to go there because they chose it. Wait, okay, but did the baby choose to go to hell? If it's possible, they can? So if a baby ends up in hell, it'll be because ultimately that they would have chosen it at the end anyways. Like if they were given their full life, they would have chosen to go to hell. If they were to go to hell. That's what I believe. I don't ultimately know, though. For it's not my place to judge. Okay. It's God's alone. Right. So in your original question, why would I be a Muslim? Things like this are clarified in Islam. We're born in a natural but, but state of here, fitra. Here, here's the problem. It doesn't matter if it's clarified. Like you could give me all the answers I would love to hear. So do you, so do you believe in blind? Why would you choose blind faith over over I'm something not choosing blind concrete? Faith, right. So here's something. You are. That's, here is something that is concrete. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. died and resurrected. Can you give me one eyewitness testimony account that proves that? Sure, Matthew and John. Okay, Matthew and John. Can you prove that Matthew wrote Matthew? Because Matthew nine nine says different than what so you're saying. All of all of church history attributes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Perfect. Can you show me one church father that? Uh, who met John that said that John wrote it with Polycarp. original documents? Who? Polycarp. Okay, can you show me Polycarp's original document and how it's not a fraud, fraudery document? Well, see, that's the thing, though. If I'm going to show you something, then you just instantly claim everything's a fraud. So I'll just grant it to you then because I'm not interested in having this, oh, that's a fake if I bring something up to you or it's not true. You know, I'll grant it to you. Sure. No church father ever said it. Okay, and to be, and here's, to be fair, here's the thing. The, the, here's mm, the thing. Mm -hmm. All, mm -hmm. every single one of secular scholars, if you really want to go down that road, every single one of the secular scholars say that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Are you sure about that? Yes. So hold on. So if we look at Sanhedrin 43a, the Jews say that they stoned him to death. Secular, them, them, secular, secular. Okay, perfect. So secular scholars. So we have secular scholars saying that Jesus died on the cross. What do did, what did they base that on exactly? the historical documents matthew mark luke and like John. that's that's not historical documents that's that's scripture that is those are historical documents they they attributed okay. circle so bart ehrman wrote how an can entire you book hmm. bart ehrman one of your guys's favorite people to quote wrote an entire book i don't book care for bart Jesus. why yeah why don't you care for bart ehrman because i don't uh, just because he says something that agrees with islam i i don't agree with what he says but why don't you agree with bart ehrman because I, I, he's, I don't think he's a thorough scholar like some of these other people. Okay, can you show me any scholar in the secular world that doesn't believe Jesus Christ died on the cross? Okay, no problem. So I'm, I'm just going to go to a Jewish scholar who believes That's in not Sanhedrin. A scholar. Yeah, it is. They believe in Sanhedrin 43a as a historical Sec document. Secular scholar. That means they don't. Okay, so, so we're going. So we're running to atheists now to try to figure out if Jesus died or not. Yes. That's what we do. We're running to people who literally have no belief in God to try to prove one of our beliefs correct. So, so here's the thing. I have the entirety of church tradition that says that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I have the entirety of secular scholars that says Jesus Christ died on the cross. You have a Perfect. Jewish guy that says he was stoned to death. And then you have Muhammad 600 years later that says it wasn't him. Beautiful from God. So, so perfect. I'm glad you raised all them options. So now with those secular scholars who say Jesus uh, died on the cross, can you prove from any one of them that they hadn't, can you show me one eyewitness testimony, someone who saw it, saw Jesus dying on the cross? 
Yeah, so if you read the Gospel of Luke, it says the apostles were there and witnessed it. Gospel of Luke? Luke was not an eyewitness. Luke 1, 1 through 3 says he literally investigated right? to write his gospel. Math, then you have Matthew and John. I Matthew didn't write Matthew. I can okay, prove so that. Then, then let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 3, where it's clearly dated to within so, one... So now we're going to Paul, who never met no, Jesus? No, so I'm not, I'm not quoting Paul here. I'm quoting 1 Corinthians 15, 3, which was quoted pa Paul by... Wrote, Paul wrote Corinthians. Yes, and I'm, try I'm trying to land a plane here. Right? Go ahead, go ahead. Like, I thought we were finally starting to actually have a nice conversation. Go ahead, bro. My bad. Right? Go ahead. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 is widely understood to be an Apostles' Creed. Do you know what an Apostles' Creed is? Mm -hmm. What's an Apostles' Creed? Yeah, it's, it's what the church fathers, they they deemed as, as like a... Well, that's a Apostles' Creed. But the Apostles' Creeds, what were they? Okay, what is it? I don't know. So the Go Apostles' ahead. Creeds were things that were shared verbally around their communities, right? And they know this because the cadence they are written, right? So there's, mm -hmm. for example, if you read Mark, Mark is written in a cadence that's meant to be shared verbally, right? This is called textual mm -hmm. criticism. First, mm -hmm. First Corinthians 15.3 dates within one to five years after Jesus' death. And it shows that it was a wide teaching that Jesus Christ died and resurrected off the cross. This is this Perfect. is not even debated in First Corinthians fifteen three. No, there's nobody in mm -hmm. the Christian world or the secular world that debate that the early church did not believe Jesus Christ died and resurrected. All okay, I can prove that. I can prove you're wrong. Ebionites didn't believe they were early Christians. They didn't the believe only, Jesus died. The only mark of Ebionites comes from one source that's not an Ebion. Like you show me, you show me. Oh, I tell you what, you show me one Gnostics, writing. Gnostics. You show me Irenaeus. You, you okay, show me sure. one writing by an Ebionite from the first century. And I'll leave Christianity right now. It doesn't even have really? to be about Jesus. Just a writing by an Ebionite in the first century. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a sec. I'll find you. And you'll leave Christianity. This is live on camera, right? In, in all fairness, I probably won't leave Christianity uh, if that was true. Oh, uh, my gosh, bro. Come no, on. No, no, why are you doing, you're, you're why you're doing right, the Roman Street Forum? You're right. I shouldn't have said that. So what do you want me to do? If you find it, I'll do something. What is it? That's okay, bro. Just forget, <laughs> just forget it, bro. It's okay. Well, I do want bro, I do want you to see if you can find it. Go ahead and find it. Okay. Sure. I mean, okay. It's gonna take me. It's gonna take me a bit. If you were gonna leave Christianity, it would have been worth it. But for this, it's just I, I'll send it to you in the DM. Your DMs are open, right? No, I want you to find it. I will okay, wait. I'm patient. Out? You can find it. No problem. Okay, let me see what we got here. Okay. Uh, one sec. I'll get it for you right now. I'll get it for you right now. Give me one sec. It might take a bit. It's three in the morning. So when am I allowed to officially leave without you saying that I'm running? Uh, brother, you can do what you want. You're a grown-ass man. Well, I'm no, saying you wanted you, it right the, now. But the problem is, yeah, it's fine. You can find it right now. I'm just asking a question because it doesn't matter what I do with Muslims at any point. Bro, who, ca who cares if people point, say you're running or what? At any point when I leave, run, I leave a conversation, all I get is messages saying I'm a track star or runner. So I just want to know when I'm officially allowed to leave a conversation without being called a track star. Bro, look, you're free to leave whenever you like, bro. Even even with this, I'll send it to your DM if you, if it's late and you gotta go to sleep. I'll literally send it to your but DM. The, but it's this a genuine not... question: When can uh, somebody actually leave a conversation with a Muslim without being called a track star? Bro, you can leave right now, bro. People in the comments say everything. There's there's Christians telling me I'm stupid right now in the comments. Am I gonna go cry about it? No, I'm no, just but, gonna. Uh, but keep... it's an ongoing thing with Muslims. It's part of your culture. So like, I wanna know. I mean. I mean, bro, you're a, you, you know, you're a Christian. You, you have questions on Islam. That's just generally how it works. You, you oppose Muslims. You get Muslim hate. I oppose Christianity. Christians tell me I'm but, but, everything. But I've been I just, called every I name. I genuinely want to know, man, because it's I haven't met a single Muslim that doesn't use that kind of language. So when I when mean, brother, is it you, official? It, it, like when when is mm -hmm. it when is it considered in your guys's culture appropriate to leave a conversation? Sure. So as of now, if you would like to leave, I, I will drop and, and you can give your final speech. And I won't say I nothing. Know, I, I can't time. control every I can't control anybody else. I think it's just a debate community type thing, you know, and it's like on the basketball court. You know, they talk smack before the game and then after you just go home, you know, it's just part of the culture.
I, well, so, but when is the come on? <laughs> Anyways, find, like, find, like, like, bro, find if the you want, EB and Knight writing because the only thing I've ever found from EB and Knight writings was one uh, quotation from a church father talking about them. Sure. Okay. Give me a sec. I'm getting it for you right now. Bro, people be like John and his feelings. What's wrong with having feelings? Why is that a crime? You guys don't have feelings? Okay, perfect. So it's called the Gospel of the Ebionites. It's dated from 100 to 160 AD. Okay. The Gospel of the Ebionites. And I'm on earlychristianwritings.com. So like I said, remember what I originally said to you, the only thing that we could find is a church father quote. When you go to that website, the first thing it says, in the other gospels, Cameron makes the following observation. The gospel of the Ebionites is a gospel harmony preserved a few quotations in the writings of Athanasius, a church writer who lived in the end of the fourth century CE. So again, we don't have any of these documents. Yeah, but you, Eusebius spoke about it before. Uh, yeah, I, I already Africa's. conceded that at the start. Like before you even looked for it, I conceded there's a church father that talked about it. And then the in the infancy gospels it talks about it too. Well, the infancy gospels is, is not uh, uh, is not a uh, what do you call it? A it's second early second century. Yeah, so, and it's okay, also fine. not it's also not Ebionites. Those are Gnostics. No, no, but they they speak of the Ebionites and their belief. Yeah, they, they, again, we have no actual sources. Like, here's the thing: you claim there's no direct sources of eyewitnesses to Jesus's uh, death, so we can't trust anyone. Right. But you will hold to the fact that Ebionites existed and they didn't believe Jesus's. Uh, uh, death and resurrection at all, but we don't have any sources from the EB Knights at all. We only have quotations from them. Right, sure. Okay, fine. So in that case, uh, there's a letter. I, I got to get it. It's from Irenaeus. He talks about those who believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Actually, Galatians 3.1 even talks about it too. Gal Paul talks about it in Galatians 3.1. He says uh, that the cruci portrayed crucifixion. Sorry, where, where did it go? What did it say? Gal Galatians 3.1. I'll, re I'll read it to you real quick. So, I mean, if you're going to give Paul in the 50s, right, Galatians 3.1, he literally says, O foolish Galatians, who, have be who, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. What does portrayed mean? Uh, Galatians 3.1. You foolish uh, Galatians who bewitched you before the eyes of Jesus Christ, who is publicly portrayed as crucified. This is the only thing I want you to find out from you. Do you receive the Holy Spirit by works, the law by hearing with faith? Are you foolish, foolish, having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfect in the flesh? Uh, do you suffer from any things? It just seems like it was portrayed in front of them. It doesn't claim that it's falsified. Right, but but this is backed up with the belief of the Basilides too. That what? they Basilidians, they didn't believe that Jesus was crucified either. This doesn't say then that he wasn't to... crucified though. So what does portrayed as crucified mean? So what what does portray mean? Like portray. What does that mean? Right. To be presented so, in front of, right? 
So that doesn't mean Port- falsehood. Like you're assuming something. It doesn't mean a falsehood. It doesn't mean it was made up. It doesn't no, no, mean it no, no. Portrayed, portrayed doesn't mean that. It means to depict. It, de- yeah, it, it means to depict someone something. or something in a work of art or literature. Yeah. So that okay, doesn't so mean he G- wasn't crucified. Okay, it just John, means if to I tell the Galatians, you- it was portrayed to them. Okay, I hear you. So again, this belief comes from Mark, right? Which they believe that Simon carried the cross, right? Which comes from well, Mark comes from Peter, right? That Mar- that Simon Mark carried the cross alone. How do you get yeah, that? Mark, Mark, Mark comes from Peter. Because Mark never met Jesus. His all his testimony is from oh, Peter. Oh yeah, that's who, true. Okay, who I understand met. what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So the Gospel of Mark, in relation to Galatians three one, that they get their belief that Jesus didn't die on the cross. That Simon was the one who carried the cross up, and that he was the one that was crucified. So that's well, they get you, it from how do you Mark. Jump to, how do you jump to that conclusion? Perfect. So it's in, it's in the Bible verse where Simon carried the cross up alone and the basilic the where did, where did it say that early... Simon carried it up alone? Okay, perfect. Let me get it, Mark. Uh, Simon. I'll get it for you right now. Uh Mark fifteen twenty one, I believe. Let me make sure. Yeah, Mark fifteen twenty one. So it says, A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. So they forced him and, to carry the cross. And they the compelled cross. a passerby or coming from the country, Simon is Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. But you're adding in the mm-hmm. alone part, right? Jesus is carrying the cross. He's struggling with it. No, no, read the next verse. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha. So this is separate from that. He, how, they how forced you, him you, to carry. How do you figure it's separate, right? Like, well, that, I'm, like I'm you're, saying you're, this at, is what you're, the, you're, you're doing. Mm-hmm. What's ice, it's called ice of Jesus. Like, just, just read it, what it says. It says, and they compelled a pastor by coming from the country of Simon Serene to carry his cross. They brought him to a place of Golgotha. Go, 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 uh, I can't say it. Golgotha. Go thank you. Which, which is trying to the place of the skull. All that's saying is he's carrying the cross, and as they're carrying the cross, they're brought to the place of Golgotha. But it says Simon's carrying the cross. Where does it say Jesus is carrying? And then I can back it up with Matthew 27, 32 as well. So now Literally the soldiers the took him away to the place, and they called together the whole Roman court, and they dressed him up in purple, and after twisting together the crown of corns, they put it on him, began saluting and hailed the king of the Jews, and they repeatedly beat him with the reed and the spear of the heel and bowed before him. And then they mocked him and took the purple cloak off and put his garments on and led him out to crucify him. And then they compelled Yeah, fair enough. It doesn't say Jesus carried it there. Uh, Pilate pressed. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and it's but, in Luke but, 23, 26 too. But here's the thing. Here's uh-huh. the thing. Even if he didn't, I, again, like I'm, I'm willing to grant you a lot of things, man, because even granting you a lot of things doesn't bring me any closer to Islam. Even if he didn't, how does this say that Simon was the one that was crucified? Okay, perfect. But what I'm saying is if you look at Mark and Matthew in the verses I gave you, it's showing that Simon carried the cross up. I'm not saying that's what I believe. I'm saying the Basilides who are early Christians, they took their belief of the early Christians, the Basilideans, off of these verses. I'm not saying I believe that. This is what the Basilideans believed. Who are the Basilideans? And they based it off of this. And they were an early were sect writings? of Christianity. When were their writings? And what did they okay. write? Well, they wrote Jesus didn't die on the cross, that Simon was put on the cross well, when, instead of him. When did they write that? Sure, I'll get it for you. Because here's the, here's the thing. Why would I trust that when Galatians uh, 15, uh, 3 literally one year after Jesus's death. And again, I, I ask you to double check me on this. Go look up when scholars date Galatians 15. One year? One, one, so it depends on the scholar. It's one to 10 years. I want to be fair here and give you all the data. So it's one to 10 years, right? That Jesus Christ died and resurrected off the cross. So why would I go from a source that's 100, 200 years later says he didn't when the earliest sources says he did? Because you'd have to prove to me Galatians was one. To, I've never heard that even from Christian scholars that Galatians was one to ten years after. Not, Th- not Galatians. Make any not, sense. not the book of Galatians. Galatians was written probably about twenty years after. Galatians fifteen three that a creed comes between one to ten years after. And what's your evidence of that? Where do you get that from? The scholars get it based off the fact that they date it from the cadences and when it was written. This is textual criticism. So they have cadences. They understand the, the, how the scripture is written. And they compare that to other cadences from other time periods. And they can say, well, this is written about this what, time. What period. do you mean by cadences? What does that mean? So you know how that. like we say like twinkle, twinkle, little star or A, B, C, D. Uh-huh. So there's a cadence to it. 
right? There's a Hebrew, there's a, a early Jewish cadence to to these creeds when you're reading it, and it, the reason there's this cadence is so they can memorize this, so they know how to, to speak it properly. If you want to read more about this, you can read uh, the Jesus Legend by Paul Rhodes. It goes more into depth on this, and Paul Rhodes would be one of these scholars that that pulls from this. And so we know when Gla or we know when Galatians is written. We know when these cadence come forth. So we know it has to come between these certain time periods. So that's why different scholars will okay. say, "Well, it's about one year." Some will say it's about ten years. And what writing do you have that can back that up in the first ten years that that attests to this? So the, again, looking at the textual script. If you want more data, you can look at the book that I cited you. Which is what again? So it's the Jesus Legend by Paul Rhodes. Or you can look at uh, some um, Gary Habermas's writings on it as well. Do you have a quote or anything from there? Not Just the top, a quote? Not off the top of my head, no. I mean, bro, I've been looking for a bunch of stuff for you. You can't find me that? No, I'm not, I'm not going to. I don't care if you believe me. That's where I'm at right now. Like, like, you can think I'm lying, I'm making it up, or it's all out my ass. I'm fine with it. I don't care. So, you, so you're just speaking? Well, no, I've given. I mean, you I when I when I come here, I'm trying to give the fans. A, I'm trying to give the people listening an actual I, I stuff they can the go look up themselves. I pointed the direction. So, if you want to, just Google right now. Gary Habermas is dating to Galatians fifteen three, and why he dates it. If you want to. Okay, you you don't, and you're not gonna. You don't have one quote. It's your evidence. Why am I looking up your homework? I given you. I've given you the sources, where it comes from. Okay. It's not like I'm not okay, just so making it up. I've given you the sources and where where it comes from. These scholars. Well, my my claim would be there's no writing in that time that states that Jesus was crucified. Okay. So I'm just saying that too now, and and we can back that up further with the fact that except if except we look the at Bible the Bible, literally mm -hmm. says that he was crucified, and now those well, actually, again Paul's writings date within twenty twenty but, years to thirty. Years. But there's no eyewitnesses. We we you haven't proven the Gospels are even written by those people. So even if it wasn't, you're, you're, even if there was no eyewitnesses. The earliest okay, so, you, so you're literally following the Quran. You're but, literally following the Quran. Hold, all they have is on, conjecture. Hold on, hold on. That's hold all on. you have. I'm, I'm going to grant you your arguments. There's no eyewitnesses. Fine. Don't grant me. Just give me the evidence. I, I'm going to grant you your arguments. I'm going to still show you that your argument is weak. You say there's no eyewitness. Fine. No eyewitnesses. The mm -hmm. earliest attestation. But that's that's game over. If there's no eyewitnesses, game over. Okay, was Muhammad an eyewitness? No, but he game got over. the message That's from God. That's game over. There's no eyewitness. No, it's not. Over. He has the words of God. You you don't have the words of God. So how do you know that John didn't get the message from God when he wrote it down? Because but, it literally says in the Gospel of John that all things that were all things will be given to him. That it says, don't worry about what it says. What does it say? It says, don't worry about what you'll have to say because I will put it on your mind and so you remember it. John John doesn't claim that he's it's written by God. He's not. He's claiming everything that he wrote came from the Holy Spirit. That's in the claim of John. Okay, so is it is it the words of God or the inspired word of God? It's the inspired word of God. But now you're Muslim shuffling again. So again, no, how am I Muslim shuffling? Muhammad, you claim it's the word of God. Muhammad came how many years after? He's definitely not an eyewitness. So why would I trust Muhammad saying that he wasn't crucified? Why would I trust all these later datings saying he wasn't crucified when all the earliest datings say he was, even if they weren't eyewitnesses? They're, but they're not. The earliest you have the earliest attestation that says Jesus didn't die, and that's second century. That's the treaties of Seth. That says that Jesus wasn't crucified. The second century you, is not you, er, not the earliest attestation. When when were Paul's writings? Oh. Okay, Paul Paul's writings from a non eyewitness is fifty sixty eight. So, so AD. again, that's the earliest source. Second century is not an early right, source. But, it's a later but, source. But he but he's not an eyewitness. So he's even, not an eyewitness. The gospels, so in that even case, the gospels are first century. Matthew, Mark, Luke, what? and John are first century. Where where's John in the first century? So John is written, I think is like what is it, ninety AD, right? And then you have uh Mark being When's your earliest AD? manuscripts? Our When's earliest, your earliest manuscripts, bro? Come on. Our earliest manuscripts yeah. date within the second century. Yes. Wait, what? What is those manuscripts called? Uh, I don't remember. Don't say Sinaiticus, because that's fourth century. I don't remember. Your earliest so manuscripts the, the earliest are fourth one century. We, the earliest one we have, I forget what it's called. It's the Gospel of John. It's but a credit card sized thing, and it matches what we have now. That that's a point of origin where the scholars estimate it could have been written. And by the way, that's P fifty two. That's a credit card size that's of, a, of, that's a, of a fragment just, that they did, found. Did I did I not just say credit card size? Did those words not just come out of my mouth? 
Sure, I, I maybe misheard you, but even I literally let's go with that said then. a credit credit document from the Gospel of John that still matches Perfect. up, even in that credit card size document, to what we have today. Okay, so if I if we all know what a credit card looks like, that you can't even fit a hundred words on that. That's fine. Still, your document comes six hundred years later. So why should I trust yours? Because it claims to be from God. Yours doesn't claim to be from God. Now so you got to test the claim. So what? The claims to be from God. Who and, cares? Uh, and by the way, John, you're proving chapter four, verse one fifty seven of the Quran. Because what does what does it say at the end of the verse? I don't it know. says exactly what we're arguing right now, with no certain knowledge, but uh, uh, but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety they killed him not. So you, all Christians do is follow conjecture that Jesus died without any proof. That's that, what the Quran that, literally that says. That doesn't prove the Quran. That just means that it's six hundred years later. That 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 point when Muhammad was alive, they were having the same arguments that you and I are having right now. That's all that proves. Okay, but so that means that at that time they knew there was no eyewitness testimony too. Bro, you think? Do you think this conversation you and I are having right now is new? Do you it's think not people, new, but people have been having this exact same argument for thousands of years. Sure. And and but but again, if we both believe that God is the Creator and He guides us, we can then argue. Okay, which book comes from God? And then you'd have to go into textual criticism, which seems that you enjoy that type of stuff. So you would go into the Bible. You would see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not the authors. They were written in How Greek. How do you know they're they not the Aramaic. authors? Okay, because your Christian scholars say they're not the authors. No, no Christian scholar says it's not the authors. What they say is that... Uh, don't say that. No, what they say... That's not true. What mm -hmm. they say is that it's written anonymously. Which means they don't know who the original authors were. That's bro. That's, come that's on, bro. Claim. That's that's a Christian shuffle. What you just did right that's there. Not a Christian shuffle. That is the claim. Tell me I'm wrong. You just agreed with me that we don't know who the authors are. They're anonymous. Great, great. <laughs> so if they're a anonymous, then how do you know uh -huh. it wasn't Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? What, bro? They're anonymous. So had if it's an what anonymous is it, what means is anonymous you don't know. Mean? Great. It means you so don't know you, who they are. If you don't know who they are, then how can you confidently say it was not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Bro, that's a positive claim. You have. <laughs> I, I, agree, I agree with you. Bro, but that's you, a argue. you made okay. a positive claim here. You made a positive claim. You said the authors were not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Did you not say that? Okay, perfect. I can. Okay, let me use one verse of the Bible. Did, did to you prove, not say that? that claim? Did you not yeah, say yeah, that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Of course I did. Not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, so my proof that Matthew is not written by Matthew. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. So hold on. If Matthew 9.9 9 is written by Matthew, how, why is it saying uh, uh, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew? Because Matthew wrote in the third person. Matthew wrote in the third person? It's not uncommon in the Near East. Did, did John write in the third person? When he when he said I saw the angel and bowed down to it, Revelations twenty two nine. The revelation, not revelations, revelation was written in the first person. So hold on, so now so I thought it was common in that century to be written in the third person. Common doesn't mean that it was only done that way. Right? So for example, so, nowadays, like have you ever read a fiction novel? Uh huh. Okay. Are some fiction novels written in the first person? But you're not being consistent at all. Are, bro. I am I am being consistent. Are some fiction novels written in the first person? I don't, uh, probably, yeah. Are some written in the third person? Sure. So it was a common practice in the Near East that some people wrote sui biographies, which is what these are called, in the first person, and some wrote in the third person. Okay, so are you saying Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was all third person, or, or just Matthew? Uh, I'd have to go back and, and, and look. It's been a minute. So Matthew... I know it was Mark. Um, Mark was written in a way that is supposed to be spoken, right? So it's well, it was all of them. Read. They all written third person. Even John did. So Mark, what I was saying though is Mark and I was written is supposed to be in in the spoken, like it's supposed to be told to people. That's how it's written. It's easily, it's short, it's condensed. It's meant to be given to the people in spoken word. Right. Uh, Matthew is meant to give prophecy. Uh, John is your Christology. Uh, Luke is your history. Perfect. Real quick, because I know you have to go. You you said Matthew brings prophecy. Can I can I show you one prophecy where he he messes up? No. And call and call Jesus gonna, just about. Gonna, I'm just gonna grant it he, to you and say that he was wrong. I'm fine with that. But he calls Jesus about a bell worshiper in Matthew two fifteen when he quotes Hosea eleven one. That's okay. like why why would Matthew do that? I, fine, he did it. I don't I don't care anymore, man. He, the pro the point I've been trying to drive home to you all night 
is you can disprove all all the parts of the Bible as much as you want. It doesn't mm-hmm. get me any closer to Islam at all. I know. Okay, perfect. Well, it's a two-step process, right? Like when you have an addiction to drugs, you, you get somebody off the drugs, then you sober them, right? So when with you, I'm proving to you the Bible's wrong because that fake prophecy would go against Deuteronomy 18.18 18 about a, f- a false prophet making false prophecies, right? So that's one. And then now, then after you agree, like, hey, I got concern in the Bible, right? Now I can take you to the Quran and show you Here's scientific the thing, proofs. Right? Here's the thing. I though. can show you. I, I'm mm-hmm. not one of those Christians. Like, I don't believe in univocality of the Bible. I don't believe that the Bible is perfectly preserved. I will, I will tell you there's contradictions in the Bible. I will show you the contradictions in the Bible if you want. Like, I admit these things because I understand how history is done. It's you guys that come with the Quran and say that there's none of these things. But then I look at the same data when I'm looking at the Bible and I see it's in the Quran. Right. The, the thing is, if you guys just treated it honestly and said, yes, this is a historical document. Yes, there's copyright errors. Yes, but it's from Muhammad. And this is why we could trust it. The problem is you guys have. There's none. This, the problem is you guys have built this. I'm not interested in proving or disproving it. You guys have proven this litmus test that makes. But no you made a claim. That's uh, fine. And then I, I surrender the claim. You're missing my point. You guys okay. have cl- made this litmus test. That is mm-hmm. irrelevant to me. Your litmus test is we have something that is perfectly preserved. I don't care, mm-hmm. right? That doesn't mean Wait, so anything why, to me. So at why would all. why why so so what means? Tell me what something means to you. Because how how could God send you a book that you even by your own admission? So, that, has, that's the thing, though. Has I don't contradictions believe, in it. I don't believe God sent books. I don't believe that happened. So what did God send you? How he do you know God people. is real? Okay, okay. What's he your how do you determine the prophet? Us. He 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 had he interacted with us. People interacted with him, and they wrote down based off their interactions, and those people were flawed people. So what's your criteria of prophethood? How do you know Moses was a prophet and not, or Noah was a prophet? He wasn't just drunk. I actually don't know if Noah—I don't know Noah wasn't a prophet. I don't think Noah was a prophet. What? What What prophecy did Noah get? Bro, Noah was a prophet. What are you talking about? He came on the boat. He Noah's ark, he but put the animals pro- on what, the boat. What prophecy was he given? Bro, he knew that the earth was going to be sunk, bro, and he got everybody on the boat before it happened. Yeah, you know, fair. I'll, I'll give you that. With <laughs> Come on, bro. You're I'm, I'm just, me laugh, I, I, don't, I don't care about oh these the sem- semantic arguments. There are some things I take on faith, right? I don't, so, so I don't, answer me I this. What's your I, criteria of a prophet? I want to know so, I can, so we can get to a common understanding. How can we affirm that someone is a prophet if another person, like, like Joseph Smith, we both agree he's a, a false prophet, right? How do, I, how do I we know he's a false prophet? Joseph Smith. I don't know. Maybe he's the truth. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just say for sake of argument that Joseph Smith is a false prophet. Then how did we know he's a false prophet compared to, let's say, Jesus, we both agree, is a prophet? How do we know? So the reason I believe Jesus is a prophet is because he predicted that he'd be killed and resurrected, and he did. Like my entire my entire faith stems from Jesus Christ, right? But and you because, do understand that the old. Mm, I, I, go ahead, sorry. Because Jesus Christ affirmed these other prophets, then I take some things on faith, right? There are some things Perfect. that I but can't you do, prove mm. that I take on faith. Mm-hmm. But Jesus, he 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 can proved his death and resurrection. He proved the the the, the by predicting the destruction of the temple, right? He proved mm-hmm. who he was and what he did. So if so if any prophet if any prophet comes and predicts that tomorrow it's going to rain or in 2 weeks it's going to rain and then he says you know there's a building going to come here in 2 weeks and a chipotle is built there in 2 weeks are you going to now believe he's a prophet if he says it's a chipotle if he says in 3 weeks a chipotle is going to be built here and you come back in 3 weeks and the chipotle is there are you going to call him a prophet now not not just off that i'd be impressed I'd okay. Be, I mean, if he was claiming to be a prophet, I would take note. Like, okay, well, he, what else can he do? Let's let's look. Right, so let's th- see what happens. Okay, okay well, perfect. Let's he, say that can he perform miracles. Let's see that. Did he perform perfect. a miracle? Yeah, he performed miracles. Okay, so, so let's if he, say if that he started he, predicting mm-hmm. the future, started performing miracles, uh, mm-hmm. started going down that route, could raise people from the dead, do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to take note. Okay. So, so what about if, if I predict now that I'm going to die in three weeks at 4.52 p.m. and it happens? Are you going to believe that I was a prophet? If you, d- if you did that and then rose from the dead, yes. Okay. Can, can you prove that Jesus rose from the dead? All the historical data that says that he was crucified is the same that says that he rose from the dead. 
Wait, can you show me one scholar that says he rose from the dead? I challenge you. I will leave Islam if you show me one secular scholar who says Jesus ran from the dead, uh, raised from the so, dead. So I can show you secular scholars that will tell you that the early Christians believe Jesus resurrected from the dead. No, no, that he raised from the dead as it's a fact. But the thing is, you're asking from secular point of view. They have a predisposition to naturalism. Ah, perfect. So that's why Islam couldn't be proved through these secular scholars because Jesus was saved and risen alive. He had one half of your death and resurrection, the, the resurrection part. He was raised up alive. So what historical scholar I'm sorry, can you say that again? Because that? that didn't make any sense to me. Okay, so a lot of Christians try to use history to prove Jesus did die on the cross, right? But they always forget that history only affirms natural stuff, like you said, which is death, that everyone dies. So what historian could even affirm that Jesus was raised up alive? What historian could, what? Bro, what historian, like you just admitted that Jesus, uh -huh. no one says that Jesus was resurrected because they can't prove it. They only believe in natural, you said the word natural something, naturalism or something, naturalism, right? Naturalism, yeah. Naturalism, right? So if they only believe in naturalism, that means that the Islamic position that Jesus was saved by God, didn't become a curse, was a blessing and rose up and saved. Which his, which historical scholar could prove that if they only believe in yeah, naturalism? No, okay, you're absolutely right. I understand what you're saying now. And you're right. Yeah, you're 100% okay. right what you said. But the thing is, you okay. have to convince me that it came from God first. Perfect. So, so again, the way I would convince you, I would start with scientific miracles. I would start with preservation. I, I mean, there's but, so okay, many different preservation I start with prophecies. Is a, pre preservation is, irre is irrelevant to me. 100 percent irrelevant. It doesn't why? matter if it's why would why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want? Because the because the words of God can't be changed. So if if if, if the Quran is the words of God, but, and I can prove but the to thing, you. But the thing is, Harry Potter is perfectly preserved. No, it's not. They changed the movie. The movie's not the same as the, the book. books. The books are perfectly preserved. How, how for how long since it was written like we can how go back ago? to the first Harry Potter How long ago is that 20 40 years 30 years? I don't know oh, Shakespeare is perfectly preserved Is that 1400 years ago? It's Show pretty, me something pretty, that old that's preserved but, but see now you're changing The whole narrative. no, I'm, I'm proving I'm pro you're changing. No, no, you're changing as but again as, again as the criteria the is, gets changed bro Even if even if it was preserved for 6,000 years, it still wouldn't convince me is from God Okay, fine. No problem. Uh, that That's a claim that we make. Keep going. So what about prophet, uh, prophecies? It's 3 in the morning. I'm going to let you go. 3.30 in the morning. Can I go now without, without running? No, no. It was it was a great conversation, bro. I hope I hope we both learned something, and I hope God guides us both, you know? Mm -hmm. God bless. Have a good night. You too, bro. Have a good night.